just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to a season preview. That is right. One of our biggest shows of the year is here. Uh, I told the missus I won't be home for a whole week. That's how long they go for. But let's get into our work, shall we, boys? A season preview, proudly partnered with Sportsbet. Uh, massive thank you to Sportsbet, as always, a partner of the Bloke podcast. Guru, how are you feeling heading into this? Are you nervous? Have you got the nerves? We're heading into rugby league, but also this is our, this is our trial match. Yeah, this is a big one. I think uh, I was thinking about it this morning. We're, we're, like we've got Origin One, it's mm. a big one, Grand Final, but I think this is right up there. Oh yeah, it's could, a be anything. Finish. could be anything. Could be anything. Could be anything. Could be anything. And the season review as well. Season, season review, as well. yes. Yeah. Timmy, how you feeling, mate? I'm good, mate. A uh, few pre-show nerves in a in a podcast of this magnitude, mm. but. You know, this is what separates the boys from the men, the real stayers from the sprinters, and I'm pretty excited for it because it's where the real rugby league nerd comes out in the boys' yep. roster analysis. I love it. It's, it's a relief for me because every podcast we've done since the season ended, I've always had to say, save for the preview. Save for the preview. But now we can get deep. Hammy, how are you feeling before the big game, big dance? Uh, yeah, look, a bit nervous. I think the um, the social post that promoted we were doing this show uh, really yeah. set the bar very high. Yeah. Um, the Anchorman face swap. Um, mm. Kudos to you and the team for, for the face swap there. Um, but, uh, yeah, very excited for it. Very excited. Matty, how you feeling? Hey? The debutant. Oh, so yeah. We find out he's made of the right stuff. Yeah. yeah. Hammy, are, you, are you excited for this one, mate? Very excited. Very oh, excited. You weren't part of the season review. It wasn't here. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's, okay, let's take a screenshot of his face right now <laughs> when we're four or five hours deep. Take another <laughs> screenshot and let's see how he's looking. Matty, how are you feeling, mate? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, took us... 20 or 30 extra minutes to get here to set up this fifth mic, but we finally got there. We're here You're now. here. You're here. Well, I'll tell you what, boys. Don't do anything crazy. There's a reason why you got here, all right? Mm. You're about to run out to your, your uh, a big game. You don't need to change anything. You know, just get through your work. Don't go crazy. Let me take care of the big stuff, all right? Let's go. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, all right. Now, just quickly, the uh, Super Bowl is next week. It is. Well, it's actually – yes, it is next week. So – Time for a bit of face music. We'll give our predictions and then we'll get straight into the preview. Yep. All right, what do we got? So very quickly, boys, uh, I'll keep it short and sharp, like my bowling. Uh, basically, I just want to get a couple of picks for you for the Super Bowl, which obviously is happening next Monday. We've got the San Francisco 49ers, $1.77, up against the Kansas City Chiefs, $2.10. And uh, we've also got a Taylor Swift hub as well. One of the markets out of there. Uh, how many times will Tay-Tay be shown on the broadcast? The line is set at five and a half. Times you'll be shown. Uh, I want to get your over under there as well. I'm, I'm going right unders because yep. Niners, Niners win. Going yep. unders. Uh, I'm going to go Chiefs. I'm going to go overs. Yep. I think you're going to see her three times in the first 10 minutes when Kelsey crashes over. Yep. First TD. Yep. Yeah, so Guru copied my uh, pre show pick, but I've actually gone Chiefs and overs as well. Hammy, is the bet void if Taylor Swift doesn't make an appearance? Uh, if she's not there at all, yeah. That's yep. unders. All right, I'm going Chiefs unders. Chiefs unders. Yeah. You don't reckon she'll go, Matty? Well, she's she's got she a got concert, concert in Tokyo the day before. Two days, so. before. two days before. She'll be there, though. She'll be there. Because yeah. she can make it back. She, she, ma she makes it back the night before if she leaves straight away. Yeah, I'm sure she will. But because there's a slight chance she won't, I'm hitting that unders. <laughs> okay. Interesting. It's a two-day window between the Super Bowl and the concert? Yeah, I think so. Like, she like one and a half days. One and a half days. One and a half days. She'll get back by Saturday night. But anyway, yeah. um, look, did we think we were speaking about Taylor Swift this morning? No, we didn't. Uh, <laughs> yep. But here we are. Yeah. Here we are. That's supposed to music? That's basically, I'm going to go Chiefs, I'll go the overs. Uh, plenty more Taylor Swift markets in the Taylor Swift Super Bowl hub. So Ooh, head there. The Taylor um, Swift Super Bowl hub. Yep, it's all up there. <laughs> how good. Get how in there. good. Yeah. Um, so I was, am I the only one that went Niners? Yep. You. Like, you don't get guys, it. Though. You just don't get sport. You don't get sport. You went the favourite, mate. Yeah, but I know they're going to win. That's why I win them. I, don't, I didn't even know the odds. I just knew that the, the Niners are, you know, their, their defence is, it's too strong. Who's your favourite 49er? Purdy. <laughs> well done. Purdy, <laughs> well done. Purdy mate. <laughs> nice a lot of people call him sister quarterback, system quarterback. I think that he's, I think he's a bit more than that. Look, yeah, he's structured, but Nathan Cleary was structured when he first started. As he develops his career, he's going to move and get a bit more fluid, get a bit more shaking his hips. <laughs> I'm so disappointed. Well done. <laughs> I just read comments on Instagram, Great if I'm you. being honest. <laughs> That's all just from comments That's on Instagram. Good. That's good. <laughs> now let's get straight into it, shall we? That's brought, face the music brought to you by Sportsbet. But the whole thing's brought to you by Sportsbet. So let's get into that Sportsbet. Let's get into that. First team that we are going to preview. 
It's been a bit quiet in the off-season. They are the masters of being such a big club, but flying under the radar. They've had a lot of recruits. They had a very disappointing season last year. And I say very disappointing because the back end of their season kind of, let's just say, uh, made their season look a bit better than it really was, in my opinion, especially for the roster they had. We are going to be doing the Roosters, Sydney Roosters. So last year... They finish, so basically what we've done is, is we've looked at all the attacking stats, looked at all the defensive stats and averaged out where your team finished last year in attack and defense. So, you know, missed tackles, tries conceded, um, penalties, and then in attack, you know, tries, line breaks, blah, blah, blah. So last year, the Roosters finished 15th for attack and then they finished ninth for defense. So just on those two stats alone, that's an extremely disappointing uh, season for the Roosters. And I think that actually gives you a better indication of how disappointing their season was for, for the roster they had. Now, that's stats though. The intangible things the Roosters seem to have that is just some of the strongest in the competition, even when everything's not going their way, even when it just doesn't seem to be working, they find a way. And that's always um, this gritty underbelly that I don't think they get enough appreciation for. Uh, so heading into this season, let's have a look at their rosters. Well, actually, let's get your thoughts. Just a, a broad view of the Roosters last season heading into this season. Uh, yeah, obviously last season, a uh, pretty disappointing one for the Roosters. They started incredibly slow. They finished fast. Uh, the thing that stood out for me, Kempi, was the Roosters show what they could do at the back end of the year in that they pretty much played eight weeks straight at finals footy. It was must-win games every single week. Uh, they changed their halfbacks smack in the middle of that. They then rolled into finals, you know, what they do, they knocked over the Sharkies and then a cross-field speculator kick off Cam Munster that finished their season realistically. Mm. So I think when you got to the back end of the season, the Roosters were one of the sides you didn't want to play mm. um, and they're starting to work it all out. So I'm really excited for them this year. I think that they will finish high. So there's three years in a row though mm. and it hasn't played out. But I love this squad, mate. The Honestly, this might be the only team in the competition that, the bench middle forwards might actually be better than the starting middle forwards. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I think that if this was two years ago and they had this incredible run heading into finals, you'd go, oh, they're a finals footy side, how good. But it's a negative now for me because when you really look at it, the fact they didn't make the top four is why they didn't go at the very least into a prelim. Mm. And it's why they could have potentially been in a grand final. Like, for example, I don't, and I don't know what side they landed on, but imagine the Roosters went up to Suncorp and played that version of the Brisbane Broncos. Like they might have pipped them. Yep. Um, and so I personally believe that it's actually, even though they finished really strong, and I'm not saying that you're, you're saying this, but even though they finished really strong, it's actually warning signs for me that there's a certain uh, habits that are being formed at that club where they start extremely slow and then just ramp it all up when it matters, when in reality they don't have to start flying, but they need to give themselves top four position with that squad. Timmy, oh, Guru. Oh, no, like, there's just a few factors for me, though, that when I look back at the start of the Roosters' season last year, like you got to remember, pre-season, Angus Crichton. He wasn't playing at the start of the year. Connor Watson gets injured. Brendan Smith comes in at nine. I, I just... And I know, I know they've got a history of starting slow, but I believe the Roosters will have this worked out for the start of this year. I think mm. they're in a better spot than they have been probably since they won the back-to-back premierships. Oh, absolutely. Like, So I... I know they'll be approaching this year differently because Trent Robinson has identified and said openly that we need to sort that out. But it still doesn't change the fact that, you know, whatever things happened at the start of the year, it's been like five years now and they really haven't fired a shot with a really good squad. Timmy, what do you reckon? Yeah, I thought last season that that late run home papered over the cracks in what was a really poor season. <clears throat> they started last season as... You know, among the top... What, they were my favourites to win the yeah, comp. Yeah, they were pretty, well, pretty close to favourites to win the entirety of the NRL competition. They've snuck into seventh off a remarkable run home, as the Roosters tend to do, under Trent Robinson. They finished with a negative points differential, need 24. They were also a game off finishing in 11th place. <clears throat> this is a side that many are tipped to win the competition. I think there's a lot of issues that we saw last year that I think Trent Robinson and this establishment are good enough to overcome this year. One of them being, as you mentioned, can be that historically in recent seasons, they've been really slow starters. They need to address that and get quickly out of the blocks because they can't afford to leave themselves in a position needing to win eight on the trot to make finals. 
top four needs to be the minimum goal for this side. The squad they've got this year, which we'll get to shortly, is phenomenal, and there's no reason why they shouldn't be among premiership contenders again this year. Yeah. Um, have you got anything unique to add to that, Matty? Uh, no, I kind of pretty Same. much agree with what Timmy said, yeah. And me so? Yeah, good team. They came in with a wet sail last year, won eight of their last ten. Um, I can tell you they're best backed, actually, to make the top four. Oh, really? At $2.50. Wow. Nine fifty to win the comp. So they're the best backed over Panthers? Yeah. Yep. I think the punters like the value that they see there, $2.50. Yeah. Wow. That's um, What? Yeah. Wow. And, uh, yeah, nine fifty to win the comp, um, which uh, a few people were keen on them last year, not so much this year, but um, I think they're going to be a good team again right there and thereabouts. Okay, let's get into the predicted squad. This, is, this isn't my predicted squad. This is... Timmy's predicted SC squad. scplaybook.com.au SC Playbook, baby. Give her a follow <laughs> at SC Playbook 1. Give the guru a follow. Also, Guru's hats are dropping tonight, 8 p.m., correct? And shirts as well. Yeah, hats and shirts dropping tonight uh, for the Kangaroo Tour. Um, obviously, you all know who's been selected in the squad now. Hammy's coming to Vegas with us. Um, have we got a bone to pick or what? Well, I just I feel like me not being selected first <laughs> kind of doesn't add up. And haven't been contacted like just like when teams get people get dropped from Queensland, New South Wales, and then they interview the player and it's like, oh yeah, he didn't even call me. Guru didn't even call me. Didn't even say, oh, this is the reason why you haven't been selected yet. Yeah, I think it, part of being a kangaroo, which Hammy would understand, is commitment. Mm. <laughs> and commitment. yep, we're on a plane to Vegas in a few weeks, which is going to be awful, I'm yep. sure. Um, and I think and you I, make I'm your not, own bed sometimes. Well, how can I fly over there if I'm not a part of the squad? I've just got to pay the money and just land and go, hopefully Guru pits me, picks me. Hammy did. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I know. That's right. Whammy Goodman and, uh, and Guru Tamlin. Uh, <laughs> Whammy Goodman. <laughs> heading over. Whammy. And uh, I did think uh, Matty Corningstone, a little bit stiff to miss the squad as well. But what do you do? Yeah. What so that's the only purpose you can take. Look, hey, live by the sword, die by the sword. We'll yep. see how you go, mate. We'll see how you go. I won't be death riding you at all. Uh, 8 p.m. tonight, the shirts, the hats drop. Very limited a number, so make sure to be there. Candy, uh, with these uh, predicted squads that have gone up online, very keen for you boys. If you can change my mind on any of the 1 to 17s, we mm -hmm. can make some live changes throughout the show and update those sides. Okay. So if, you've got, if anything's out of place, hit us. Okay. Sounds good, sounds good. Also, how poetic that we uh, promote his shirts whilst listening to, while talking about his side, uh, the Roosters. <laughs> um, now, predicted side, James Tedesco at one. That's craziness. Matt, <laughs> Timmy, <laughs> that's insane. Uh, <laughs> Daniel Tupo on the wing, Manu, center, Suali'i, center, Dom Young, wing, Kiri, six, Walker, seven, Terrell May, starting, eight. Hargreaves suspended. Okay. Brandon Smith, 9. Lindsay Collins, 10. Butcher, 11. Wong, 12. 13. Radley, 14. Watson, 15. Spencer Lenu, 16. Crichton, 17. Butcher. Uh, as you just said, Hargreaves um, suspended. Uh, look, some key, situ some key um, players in this starting squad. For me, it really is Sam Walker. Uh, I feel like with everything that happened last season, out of first grade, gets dropped, come back in, come back in they look like a different team. Uh, their attack just goes to another level. I think it's it's got to get to the point now where, look, obviously if he's not playing well, then you can't just can keep selecting him. But I think that that even, it shouldn't even be in the Roosters' thinking at the moment. It should just basically be, he's our guy going forward. I think that also, uh, heading into last year, there was still some hesitation, like, is this Kiri's team or is this Walker's team? I think that, it, you've basically got to get to the point where Kiri is getting a bit older. There's been, he's talked a little bit, not necessarily about retiring, but be very surprised if he does go around again when this contract ends. I think they've got to give the keys to the castle to Sam Walker. Uh, and I think that this year is going to be a huge year for him because we have to remember when he came into first grade, it was this guy is the next big thing. Like superstar, origin, he, he's, you know, going to have DC's jersey in a couple of years. Heading into this year, there's really not much talk about him. He's only 21 years old, I think. Like, super, super young. I think he's in for a huge year. And the only way that the Roosters are going to, you know, fire a shot this year is if Sam Walker leads them to, you know, the deeper end of the finals. Without a doubt. I think he's one of the more interesting players in 2024, especially off what he did uh, in those finals games last year. I thought he was tremendous. And I was sitting in this seat six weeks before going, how can you possibly drop Hutcher? He's, yeah. he's played them back into same, form. Same. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think 
Great and call from Robbo. Oh, and I was just about to yeah. say, we've all got very used to mounting shit on Robbo and, mm. you know, telling him when he's got it wrong, but he absolutely nailed that, and yeah. I don't think he got enough credit for it. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Like, it's a such a gutsy call. You've got to win every game heading into the end of the season. You already dropped Sam Walker. He's been injured. Hacho was outstanding for him. They won two or three games, and you go, no, no, but we need to go to another level if we're going to make any kind of a dent in finals footy. I think it was a great call. Thoughts on Sam Walker and the, the, the Kiri combination do you kind of agree they need to give the keys to castle or do you think they need to still keep it's Kiri? 12 months ago we spoke about this boys and it was such a fascinating point of conversation i'm still a little bit torn on it and mm. the reason being is that i agree that sam walker should be given the keys to the castle however i also love sam walker playing almost as a 5-8 at least in attacking sets when mm. they're attacking the opposition line where he plays that second receiver, not first receiver, where he swe- sweeps and goes from left side to right side. He's such, he's like the definition of an eyes up footballer. He plays what's in front of him. He's a brilliant attacking player. And I don't want to see him be tied down too much and getting the team around the park and take away from his brilliance with the ball in hand. Mm. So that's where I'm a little bit. Um, well, when, when I say Keith to the castle, <coughs> I mean the style of footy that is played yeah, by the okay. Roosters suits Sam Walker yeah. rather than. Suits Luke Keery best assets. Kind yeah, of yeah. No, I really like that. Yeah, yeah. It's his team, play around his strengths. I, I like that take on it. But I do think, you know, Sammy Walker, Luke Keery, I don't like the whole idea of left side, right side. Sammy Walker needs this license to just go left side, right side, wherever he sees a vulnerability in the opposition defence because when he's on and in attack, he generally is. It's rarely a weak point for him, defensively maybe, but... He's so, so lethal. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see him. Another year, I guess the only concern with Sammy Walker heading into this year, had a couple head knocks, I think, last year defensively. Um, and that is also, uh, Kiri has never been a bad defender, but they're both really small bodies. Um, that's that's a concern defensively that they still haven't really managed to the, I guess, to yesteryear of, of who they had in those positions. The, when he did come back for that second stint in the back end of the year, Sammy Walker, following injury as well, Defence tightened up a yeah. lot from memory. I, th- I yeah. thought he improved out of sight. Okay, now let's go into the uh, forward pack. So there's been whispers Terrell May has potentially going to sign with the Bulldogs. I think watch this space because if he does sign with the Bulldogs, you know, Robbo may go, well, why would I start a guy like Terrell May or give him all these minutes when I know he's leaving? Maybe Spencer Linu begins to be the starter. Terrell May maybe goes to the bench. Maybe even, I mean, we've seen in histories when a player signs with another club, they get put in reserve grade, especially with a, a, um, a setup as strong as the Roosters have. It is just a small note to keep an eye on uh, because Terrell May, the back end of the season, was as good as Lindsay Collins. Now, Lindsay Collins was the best over the whole season for sure, but if they are to, w- to fully win a premiership this year, they need Terrell May at his best because I thought Terrell May was absolutely outstanding last year. Might put Robbo in a really tough spot where he has to pick one of his other international front rowers. <laughs> <laughs> um, the depth in the forward pack is unbelievable. As I said, you know, you have a look at their bench. When Jared's available, you're going to have Spencer Lenu and probably Terrell May coming off the pine. I mean, <laughs> it's incredible to think that like teams would be more looking forward to dealing with him the first 20 minutes than the next 20, which not many teams have a luxury like not many teams ever have a luxury like that mm. i've seen origin teams that don't have this luxury it's crazy to have these sort of front rowers mm. coming off the bench spencer lenny arrive at the club and as you said angus Crichton, like he's the biggest wild card out of all of them. like they've got two years ago the best back row in rugby league mm. got, i mean on the bench satilli was the next big thing satilli would shit into 15 of other clubs a starting spot yeah. like starting on the edge like think about how many clubs so could- would billy smith yeah, the, the four or five names I just mentioned who maybe play New South Cup start for most teams in the NRL. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the front row situation with Terrell May, if, if he continues on this trajectory and they've got a rotation of Hargreaves, Collins, May and Spencer Linu, like, it's, it's up there with... Like, put it this way, if it's going toe-to-toe with Moses and Fisher-Harris and that, obviously I'm going to back Moses and Fisher-Harris because they've dominated so much, but... It's almost a 50-50 battle of who's going to come out on top. Now, as I said, I'd have the Penrith Packers favourites because they've done it so many times. But on paper, it's just as good. Keep in mind, when Brandon Smith comes off for a spell and Connor Watson goes to nine, you've now got, I think, the best momentum guy in rugby league. You can use him as a middle as well. Yeah. 
It's, uh, it's off its head. Actually crazy. And if Victor Radley comes back to that form, especially back into the season, I thought he was quite good. Uh, this forward pack is absolutely scary. Another, you know, a key about it all is Brandon Smith. We saw towards the end of the year, he did start to find his feet. He did get his connections right. Looked a bit lost at the start of the year. A bit like, I wouldn't say missing the storm, but that comfortable nature of like knowing your role, exactly how to execute cute it. I mean, the storm still haven't recovered from Brandon Smith leaving, in my opinion. Whereas towards the end of the year, you could, you could see Brandon Smith become way more comfortable. Like if you go and watch early clips uh, of him at the Roosters, just coming out of dummy half, you could just feel him, you almost feel his anxiety of like, you know, do I go, do I not go? By the end of the year, it was, everything was very smooth, very co- like confident and calm. If he continues that, it just it just locks everything up perfectly for him. Like that, that could, that's the, the linchpin to their attack. Mate, that anxiety coming out of dummy half, I could see that when he was in Melbourne. Mm. It's just he had that season where he scored 12 tries. When you're 10 metres out, it was impossible to stop. Mm. But as I said all last season, the other 90 metres was a huge worry for me. The last six weeks, I thought he was tremendous. Mm. He was doing things out of hooker that I genuinely didn't think he was capable of doing. Yeah. And this is where I think it is sort of starting to gel for this side. And I think he's going to be a big one there, Brandon Smith. You get Connor Watson back, who I believe will play a bit of nine when he comes on the field. Um, <laughs> I know we've said it before, but it's just too stacked to miss. It's honestly unbelievable. On paper, it's just incredible. Yeah. What do you reckon about Smith, Timmy? I still like stand by what we spoke at 12 months ago. And I'd, I'd love, you know, a more traditional number nine in this because there are so many tackle weapons in the team like a Sam Verrills who makes his tackles, who gives good service. Not saying Cheese doesn't give good service, but his focus is defence, service, get the ball in the hands of Kiri, Walker, Tedesco, all these key players and not overcomplicating things. That being said, you work with the roster that you've got. And while I love Brandon Smith as sort of like a ball playing lock and a number 13, You've got Connor Watson, Victor Radley, Brandon Smith. Like mm. They've got too many players. So you have to work with Brandon Smith at number nine. And, and you're right, the back end of last year, you really saw his decision-making around the ruck, particularly on the line, improve. His ball playing, well, ball playing, passing game, I should say, from dummy half did improve. So, you know, we know he's a Dalliam hook at number nine, as you allude to often, Guru. A lot of that was playing 13, scoring a lot of tries and whatnot. Um, they can certainly make it work. If they do make it work, it just becomes a truly frightening squad and prospect. Personally, I wish he was 13 and they had another number nine, like a Verrills. Honestly, like a Parramatta situation, not saying that they'd want a Lussick or a Hands or someone, but just goes out there and plays that old school number nine role. Could you not go Sandon Smith and Watson off the bench? And where, where, where does Radley go? Maybe you just carry. Brandon Smith um, coming off the bench, just impact in the middle. middle forward. Yeah. Do you, does it just become maybe a bit of a small bench if they do that? Like, so then what you'd inject? Small bench. And Angus, what drops but, out? So, sorry, who, who would you have out? on your bench? So you would probably run with Spencer and your Angus Crichton and Cheese. With Sand on or Sand on at nine. Yeah, well then probably Watson at fourteen, Sand on at nine. If you wanted to go down that, yeah, you? yeah. Mm. Just once again, just ridiculous that they've got. So, this. Yeah, it's <laughs> crazy. Joke. Speaking of the forward pack. Su Wong. So you've got him starting. That, I, uh, just a prediction. Yeah, lottery. I, I think, I, look, he absolutely has the talent. I don't know if he'll start the season there, but I think there's a really good chance by about round 10, he has that spot. I also think Satili is just as much a chance of getting either Su Wong's spot or Angus Crichton's spot as... As all three, mm. like I actually think all three are kind of, even though Angus Crichton's got the most runs on the board, you know, he, his form hasn't been as good as we've seen in the past. So we don't know if, if he does bounce back, obviously he is the number one back rower. Uh, but I do think Satili Tupanua, it's like recency bias, a bit of out of sight, out of mind, but we have to remember when this guy is on, he is an absolute scary, scary prospect for defences. So if, he, if he comes out in the trials yeah. and impresses and looks like, because he's coming back from, it's an ACL, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Came yeah. back, back end of last year, is that right? Yeah, or like he came he, back briefly. Yeah, yeah came back briefly. Um, if he looks fit, good, explosive, as he did pre-ACL injury, sweet, he probably starts on the edge. But I can see him returning to New South Wales Cup for a few games. Probably yeah, I, I think Wong starts. I think still he'll come back through reserve grade. In saying that, I think they re-signed Satili a few weeks ago. Yeah, they're big on put this. I've spoken to some boys, not started 
this preseason, but maybe the one before, and like they're big on him. Like mm. they reckon in preseason he rips and tears, like yeah. kills it. Um, are we look? I know Nat Butcher got. Was, I don't know if it was a player of the year, but one of their awards. Yeah. Um, are we locked in for him on the edge? Uh, when you've got guys like Satili, Suwong, Angus Crichton that may be about to offer a bit more in attack? I'm not locked in. Mm. I think he is a very safe play there. Mm. I think he'll always do a job for you. But if you can get Angus and Wong at their absolute best, I'm picking both of them before Butcher. Yeah, because like Butcher's... What's funny is I am I have Butcher more locked into the 17 than nearly every player except for maybe Teddy... <laughs> Like he's right up there for me yep. because you need him in the 17. Like he, he gets through so much of the tough stuff. Uh, but I, I actually don't have him locked into the starting side just yet because of the ceiling of some of these other guys. But what I am sure of is we know Nat Butcher's going to... The chances of Nat Butcher playing poorly is like pretty much zero. Mm. Whereas the chances of some of these other boys having a bit of a down year, that, that could happen. That could happen. Um, so, yeah, the Nat Butcher on the edge, yeah, that's going to be interesting. I will say I think that... Out of all those boys, he's the most likely to be in the 17. Like, he absolutely has to be in the 17, wherever you put him. I think when you have a look at those guys, like, we know Angus can play through the middle at a high click. Mm. We know Nat Butcher can as well. And, you know, I'm sure Wong could, but this is what makes me confident that Wong will be there round one is that I think his absolute best position is on the edge. Like, he's a specialist yeah, edge Yeah, I think backer. he's a specialist yeah. edge. Yep. Um, so I'm expecting him to, I think, come finals last year, I think he lined up on the right-hand side uh, for the Chooks. Um, him I, with another year is just scary. I cannot mate, wait. Yeah, we, we got a little taste of it last year. I, I, I think he'll be one of the best forwards in rugby league. A, in a another, few years time. another factor that will play into that decision is because they do have two smaller bodied halves in Kieran and Walker defending. Because they have so many options, who are the best bodyguards yeah. for these two little fellas? Oh, and that might lean towards Nat. Yeah. He may not be as big as mm. Tilly, but defensively he is like one of the best in the comp, really. Yeah, and of course... Angus, yeah. If we get the best of Angus, yeah. And that's the whole thing with Angus. Like we're, you know, he's in the mix here, but we could quite as be sitting here at the end of the season going, okay, Angus is your first choice Kangaroos back row. Yeah, yeah. That's the sort of ability he's got. Yeah. Or Angus has been in, in New South Wales Cup all year. Like, yeah. That, yeah. That could potentially happen. Um, okay, let's get into the back, shall we? Dom Young, huge off-season signing. What a, it's almost a bizarre situation they find themselves in because like the Suwali'i test in centres didn't really seem to work now he's so young maybe he just needs a year there and he's going to come out and kill it but it's like okay I'll ask you all this and it's just quick answers quick answers who's a better winger Dom Young or Suwali'i sorry I know you said quick um, I think Suwali'i 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 I was going to say Dom Young Dom Young I'll say Suwali'i and yet, so you're taking a guy that's better at wing, putting him into a position that potentially, you know, if this happens, position that he didn't really go that well at to put a, another guy on the wing. It's Ask a, me who's a better centre, Suwali or Billy Smith. I'll tell you Billy Smith, yeah. but I'm picking Suwali. That's what I, I mean. I just need to have him in the side. I, I agree. I think Billy Smith's a better centre as well. At, at the moment. I think in a couple of years, Suwali will yes. be a better centre. Yeah. Uh, so it is a, a very bizarre situation where you've got one of the best young wingers in the competition, bar none, this close to origin only a couple of years ago, getting moved into centre to accommodate a guy that has had, you know, one really good year. Uh, it's, it's a tough spot. It's a tough spot. Do you think they're making the right... If this is what they do, is it the right call? I think so. I don't know. I, you know, I, I also... This will sound crazy, but I, I wouldn't rule Billy Smith out of making his way into that side. Because mm. Trent Robinson absolutely loves Billy Smith. Over Tupu? Oh. I don't, I don't know who, that's the thing. But I, if Billy Smith somehow ends up there, I mean, do, do you start to think, okay, so you're not going to be here next year? He's just so good, though. Yep. You know, he's just got that it factor. Premiership window. But, yeah. like, the position we want to play when we've seen you there, we weren't happy with you there. Billy Smith, we were happy with you there. You're going to be here for the future. I And I, I'm playing devil's advocate. To be yeah, honest, yeah, so I would sure. pick Suli at left centre because I think you just have to have him in the side somewhere. But it wouldn't surprise me if Robbo does go with Billy Smith there. Is it more likely that if Billy Smith is picked, Suli he goes wing, Daniel Tupu drops out? I would not do it, but is that more likely? I, a few people have said this to me. I cannot imagine a universe where they don't pick Daniel Tupu. I, I think that Robbo's too loyal. Yeah. And he's done a consistent job he's for 10 gun. years. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah and, and you're right. Like, you getting an 8 out of 10 every single week. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's going to be... Talk about competition for back spots. You have a couple of bad games, you are gone. 
This is one of those very rare situations where if Robbo has an injury in the trials, he'll probably, part of me will probably go, okay. Yeah. It's one less tough decision I have to make. Now, look, this is going to sound insane, insane, but I had heard whispers, and they were from decent sources, that Dom Young wanted to play, not, not that he wanted to play centre, that he, there was a potential of him playing centre for the Roosters. So that would mean Suli Sul- Sul- would wing. go to the wing. All right, so at the moment... Top try scorer for the Chooks, Dom Young, dollar sixty-seven. Mm. If any of these kind of machinations of getting Suli out on the wing works, um, you're getting six dollars fifty. Oh. Joseph Suli, top Roosters try scorer. So whether that's a two-poo reshuffle, where the Young comes in, he goes out there. Jump on all that. All of a sudden, that six fifty looks. Jump on that. I think that Dom Young is way too short standing outside Manu. I don't think he'll get as much ball as what he did last year, personally. What Suli? No, oh, sorry. Uh, no, Dom Young. If he's right wing. Yep. No, but we're talking Suli. If Suli gets moved to the wing, he's paying six bucks. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm saying, though, if I, I assume Dom Young will be on the right. I yep. reckon that is way too unders when you're standing outside Joey Manu compared to Dane Gagor. Yeah, fair, fair. Uh, okay, so gun to head, boys, is the back line Tedesco, Tupo, Manu, Suli, Young? For me, yes. Yeah. I think it will be, but I don't think it should be. Oh, okay, Matty, speak to I, me. I think... Loyalty aside, their best team is Teddy, wingers Suali'i, Young, centers Billy Smith, Joe Manu. That's their best team. <laughs> it's brutal, but that's their best team. I don't think so. I don't think so. Tupo's got the runs on the boards. I, I would pick Tupo over Young. So would I. Honestly, Young a year ago, how worried were we about him? Yeah. yeah. Like, we, like, defensively, we were super worried about him. He had a year outside. Dango guy, he was fantastic. But I, like... Like Tupo's been still. running bloody 180 metres for a 1,000 years, yeah. averaging a game. Hardly played a bad game in 10 years. Great defence. You know, he's got sorted his errors out that he had early in his career. Dom Young was outstanding last year, but you just don't know. Mm. But I like it. I like the chat there, Matty. Defied the laws of physics, scored the try of the year. That's Dreadlock's true. Going everywhere. Oh, you, you, are you a Dom Young I'm, man? I like where Matty's. Okay. Fun. So yeah. you'd go Tupo in Resi's start well, of the year? I mean, that's, this is just... Crazy how stacked they are, but I, I think that's a better balanced side that Matty okay. Um, wow. just rolled out. Okay. Now, in saying all that, let's get to predictions for the, the Roosters. So we all agree they need to start fast or at least start strong. Where do we predict them landing? I'll go first. I've got them in my top four. Yeah, I've got them top four as well. Oh, I've just got them sitting between four and five. Um, yeah, I, when I said top four, I was like, Oh, I could see fifth. I'm, I'm, after that conversation, I'm trying to squeeze them into the four. Uh, you know, I'll be a bit more specific. I know, I know we're planning on doing like brackets of four, but I think they're fourth or fifth. Okay. Yeah, I've got them fourth to six. Fourth to six? I've got them top four. Top four? Yeah. There you go. Now, let's get into the Eels. Eels. Last year, attacking ratings, they finished fifth. Defence ratings, they finished 15th. 15th. Uh Really disappointing year last year for the Eels. And I guess when you look at that and see they finish 15th in defence, you just got to think, like, how did they fall so far from the year before? I'd love to know what the stat was from the year before. Um, were there different defensive systems? You look at the players that they lost. You know, was Reed Marnie the glue in the middle that helped them a lot? Or was it Papali'i on the edges? You know, Niokore, when he come on, I just... What was it, you know? What 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 changed so much? Because I got the same front row, the same edge, really. Um, yeah, you know what it was? Opacek. Opacek. <laughs> it's Opacek. They let the Opacek go. That's what. Um, um, yeah. That defensive stat blows me away. I know. They are the only team in the NRL without half that can't tackle. It's amazing. Like they, they got two halves that are gun defensive. Dill Brown is the best defensive five eight. Mitch Moses would be top three for me. Is that fair? Mm-hmm. At the, so yeah, I, he like improved into it. Yeah, for sure. Incredible. Um, there's no holes in their forward park. Bizarre. It's unbelievable. It's um, and I, I don't have any numbers, but I would have to assume that points to their outside backs. Yeah, for, as I was going to get to, I was going to say, you know, we've been talking about their outside backs in defence, yeah. and they jam in, they miss tackle. Like it is which maybe the opposite joke isn't that funny anymore. Oh, Legitimate. Really yeah. isn't. Really isn't. But, I mean, they they were killed for Opacek last oh, year. Oh yeah. Anyway, kill for uh, this year. Okay. The Eels, obviously a disappointing season last year. Uh, if I'm if I'm being honest, heading into this year, I'm still quite nervous about them. 
I'm still quite nervous about them. Great roster. Yes, they missed Dylan Brown for a long period of time last year, and that was a massive spanner of the work. They struggled to get their best side on the field. Uh, and there were periods where you kind of felt, okay, they're back. But I don't know. There's just I just get this feeling that they may make the eight, but I just don't know whether they've made the same progress as the teams around them over the last 12 months. When you look at... You know, when you look at the Rooster squad, for example, on paper, it's crazy, or the back end of the year. When you look at the Rabbitoh squad on paper, um, when you look at the Broncos, the Panthers, like the progress that they've made, and I just think with the Eels, although that at the moment I, I probably still have them in my eight, I just don't know whether that they're just lacking a little bit in the forwards for me and obviously the outside backs, we know that. But that depth in the forwards, if one person goes down, one or two people go down, I'm just a bit concerned there. And obviously in the outside backs, like they, they really haven't filled that void yet. They really haven't filled that void. Um, Guru, thoughts on the Eels, mate? Yeah, honestly, same old story. The outside backs worry me wildly. Um, and you know what? I, I think that, you know, letting Wong and Blake go, I don't think that's a bad decision at all. Um, I think there was probably time for a change there, but then you look around the squad, you go, well, who's it gonna be? Um, I don't hate the Morgan Harper signing, but it doesn't answer. Mm. It's not your answer, realistically. It's a depth be a signing. Solid. It's a depth signing, yeah. Mm. And, you know, I, I actually wouldn't be shocked if he does sneak his way in there round one. Yeah. Um, I and I personally that. think people are a little bit harsh on Harper off the back of that Talakai game. Yeah, I think that for sure. formed a lot of opinions there. <laughs> um, I don't – you could have been Mal Meninga, you wouldn't have tackled <laughs> for that night. It was yeah. just on one. It is what it is. Um, but, yeah, the outside backs worry me. I think last year um, a big thing that, you know – we sort of just moved on past and forgot. Like, they spent the entire preseason getting ready to have Josh Hodgson at night. Mm. Lasted a few weeks and then he was gone. Like, he's such a ball dominant nine. It was evident it was taking them time to gel. Then he just disappeared, mm. which makes it, I did, like, for me, that's what sort of derailed their season last year. Even the Dill Brown stuff, mate, when he wasn't there, they actually didn't lose more games than what they did when he was there. Mm. Like, they actually. Like, it might not have looked as pretty, but they held it together. Um, I like what I heard from Mitch Moses the other day. He had an interview where he pretty much said, we should win a comp this year. Yeah. There's no excuses. We're not a make a top four team. Hopefully, mate, the eight, we want to win a comp. So, hopefully, there's a bit of an attitude adjustment there. But I, I'd i have no idea what I'm going to say when you say, where do you place Parramatta? Yeah, no idea at all. It's, it's, it's like, when I look at the case, so... You know, Bailey Simon, like, Pensini, great young, guy, young centre. So, I like that. Sivo can be a bit inconsistent and, and he's a good finisher. We saw glimpses of him getting through all the, you know, a lot of work, but just, I don't know. I feel like he's got more in him. I just feel like that he hasn't hit that ceiling yet that he really could. Um, and then I look to the forwards and obviously Paolo and Campbell Gillard. The concern I have is, is that they rely way too heavily on them playing big minutes. Like, and I just think that it gets to the points of the season where you go, where you look at Junior and you look at RCG and you go, they must be absolutely wrecked. They must be absolutely wrecked. Um, I, yeah, and then on the edge there, Sean Lane, hopefully he can stay injury-free. Uh, the, the tough thing when you judge the Eels is you don't know what Brad Arthur's going to do with his, like his rotation. So this is the predicted side uh, from the great Timothy. Uh, Clint Gutherson, Sivo, Bensini, Simonson, Russell, Sean Russell. Dylan Brown, Moses, Paolo, Joey Lussick, or Brendan Hands at nine, RCG 10, Sean Lay in 11, Bryce Cartwright 12, Jermaine Hopgood at 13, Kelma Tawilangi 14, Offoyne Gawe 15, Madison 16, 17, Widamu Greg. Um, I think when I look at the Eels, I think they did an incredible job in sticking to their processes to build a team to challenge for a grand in a grand final. I do think that they didn't probably handle the next step of staying up in that top four as well as other clubs. I think that they lost way too many people in one go that's kind of hit them a bit for them to – like it really affected the the core of their side, the guys that they lost. Now, I understand people sitting here going, like, well, what were they supposed to do? Like they, they got offered big contracts and they went somewhere else. But, you know, look at the Papaliti situation. You know, he signs with the Tigers or agrees to terms and then – you know, a couple months later it was, well, actually the Eels had money for him and he might be staying. And it's like, well, why, how, how can they potentially keep him now when before they couldn't keep him? There's an example of just poor management. 
communication needs to be clearer so that there's no like papa he signs with someone else and then goes oh actually the, the eels potentially have money now oh actually I, i'm going to stay now look maybe that's being unfair on the eels and it was more just papa Lee that just had a a change of heart but i yeah i don't know if they've handled being in that top tier as well as maybe some other clubs and you can see the tactics have gone go big on your spine brown moses gutherson and then obviously two big boppers up front um but i'm still i'm still just not convinced for some reason when i look at some of these other squads timmy what do you reckon yeah i mean you look at from that 2022 grand final Parramatta and pen with so many similarities both massive bases out in western sydney why have Penrith, Penrith development system has been so much more successful than Parramatta and that's getting into the nitty gritty of it and I don't know enough about it but Penrith have found ways to replace the people they've lost Parramatta not saying they haven't but obviously haven't done it as well they did have excuses last year between Sean Lane only playing a handful of games you know Dylan Brown missed a key section of the season from around 14 to around 22 massive part of the season and also brought with it off-field dramas which couldn't have helped the club at all Guru mentioned Josh Hodgson going down early in the season. So there were some big factors Sean Lane missed a lot of the season. Their 1-17 to on paper is good enough to win a premiership. And they've shown time and time again, okay, more so during the season rather than probably come finals time, but they're the only team that can consistently stick to and beat Penrith. No other team's been able to do that. Your boys mentioned it though. I don't know. It's, it's depth. I don't know. I don't know if that this 1-17 to can win a comp. Uh, right, I, I I think it can. Look, I think Gutho, you know, you can get with him every week. I think he's excellent. He might not have the star power of a few other fullbacks in the comp, but I, I still think he's continually underrated in the NRL. Brown and Moses, not only are they brilliant attackers, but you both alluded to it defensively. To have those defensive halves go so, so far to a team. Bolo and Campbell Gillard, two origin quality front rollers. Jermaine Hopgood, he's going to be a future origin player. Lane there, you've got Ryan Madison, one of the better back rollers in the game, who's coming off the bench. I think it is a premiership quality team, but they don't have the depth mm. to go the, the See, season. I, I can Obviously, they can win a comp. You know, Way crazy things have happened. But I, I look at this squad and I go, okay, could they go through a whole final series beating Roosters, Rabbits, Broncos, Panthers? I don't know if they, they could. Whereas it, if you add back in Reed Marnie at nine, yeah. Papali'i, all of a sudden, near Corey coming off the bench, that's a way stronger side, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, look, there's... I'm being optimistic for Parramatta. And I just... I really... I look at the the 1, the 6, the 7, the 8, the 10, the 13. They've got the foundations there to do it. But maybe I'm giving them a bit too much of a push because... Well, obviously they can. Like, yeah. they absolutely... I'm like, more just the chances... Uh, I'll probably have them at the moment... Maybe 6th or 7th down the line of of chances of winning a comp? I tell you what, it'd be, it's a very interesting one going into this season, but Deanna Arcee, who came in for that period when Brown was out last season, was outstanding in the halves. They hardly missed a beat. And, you know, we've seen them chat about it and sort of try him at centre a little bit. I think he might, has he played a bit of centre in New South Wales Yeah. Um, if he can come in and be the solution at centre, I don't know if he's good enough to make that transition, but I sure as hell know that he's good enough to be starting half in the NRL. He's a gun. Mm. He should be their centre. It mm. blows me away that he hasn't been put there more. I can't believe they've had him for this long and not utilised him. Mate, while you guys are talking, I just spent three minutes going through centres or wingers in the NRL who have changed clubs over the last years or who are lacking opportunities. And I cannot believe Parramatta haven't got any of these guys. Connor Tracy, Billy Smith, Harley Smith-Shields, Mars Hugh, Tommy Jenkins, Jojo Fafita, Bronson Zeri, Mariner, Hoyter, Arthurs, Olam. How have Parramatta mm. not landed? And that's me thinking off the dome for 15 seconds. <laughs> yeah. I think it, these are all guys begging for opportunity. Purely assumption, but I think they've got this like system that they just like don't. Feels like they overthink their salary. Too loyal or something. I, like, because what wasn't there a chat about Reed Marnie as well when he left that he there was. Well, I heard pretty good authority, extremely good authority, that he was massively lowballed, massively lowballed. Um, okay, so this is their side from the 2022 Grand Final. Gutho, Sivo, Bensini, Simonson, Blake, Brown, Moses, Gillard, Marnie, uh, Bowler, Lane, Papali'i, Nikore, Madison, Nathan Brown, Jake Arthur, Kofusi. That's I just think that's a much stronger squad than like Kofusi, 
Nathan Brown, Madison, Niakore, Papali'i, Reed Marnie, all gone. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I just that's that's where I get a bit concerned with the Eels is that a couple like if they keep this one to seventeen on the field pretty much all year, or yeah, let's say one or two go injured, they keep most of it on field. Yep, I can. And this is coming from a guy that when everyone was counting them out. 2022 i was the only one sitting here going nut they can win the comp or push for it uh but yeah i just don't know with that depth i'm just not sure um back to the center situation do you think they need to look at their recruitment and maybe make some tweaks i think so for sure and i mean without putting the foot in have a look at some other examples the dolphins had to sign an entire back line last year look at all the guns they managed to get out of guys that were unwanted mm. in the nrl mm. I would love to see their salary cap because, like, Gutho's not on a – like, he's on reportedly 700, 750K. Dylan Brown, it's, what, 800K or so? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then Mitch Moses, a million? Maybe Around 900? Mark, yeah. So it's, like, not like they've gone crazy, you know, 1.3, 1.4 in certain positions. I'd love to look at their cap and see where it's kind of, like, all line because you would assume they've got an extra few hundred grand to get a guy like Harley Smith Shields or – you know, like even have a crack at Herbie Farmworth or something. I was just about to say, Herbie Farmworth would be great. You know who else would have been unreal? Jake Avarillo. Oh, yeah. 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 But let's get to positives. Positives. Positive guys. And and I, I want to be really clear. This is me not going, nah, can't win a comp. Like, I'm not putting him in the same category as lower tier sides. This is me going, I probably at the moment have them sixth or seventh in favourites to win the comp. What, what do you reckon? Yeah, I've sort of got them as a six to ten sort of side. Yep. Timmy? I've got them in seventh, and I like, yeah, seven to ten. I like that as well. If it was gun to head, I would say I probably leave them out of my eight. I just, uh, yeah, I don't think they're the most well balanced team. I think they're lacking a bit of depth as well. Um, they definitely could, but if I had to make a top eight, they probably just miss out. I've I've actually got them as ninth favourites to win the comp, and so does the book. Twenty three bucks to win the comp. The so they're ninth. Wow, they're ninth. So that we're being even more generous. Yeah. yeah, and the market can't, really can't make up its mind whether they're going to make the eight or not. So they're a dollar ninety to make the eight, a dollar eighty five to miss the eight. So yeah, they're well, right in that little section. I've probably got them in that nine to twelve bracket of yeah. the ladder. I've got oh nine to twelve. Yeah, I think okay. It's just they good on six their, to ten on their day. They're good enough, but yeah, uh, as they beat the Panthers obviously the week before the finals last year. But and you're right, their strongest seventeen is has got the footy in them to to mix it. But can they bring it the whole time? I don't know. Mm. Not sure. Before we move off them, one guy I'm very keen to watch this year. You think back a couple of years ago, Sean Lane was a journeyman. Rice to Parramatta, Brad Arthur turns him into a gun. Um, Bryce Cartwright, no one wanted to touch him with a 10-foot pole. Coach turns him into a gun. This Kelman to Alonghi has had so mm. much ability, mm. but he just hasn't been able to put it together. See, that's the one thing where I think Brad Arthur doesn't get enough credit. 100%. I Isaiah think Papali'i, like... Is, there's an argument to be made. He's a top five player developer <laughs> in the competition. It's just sometimes his decision on in the game yep. that I'm, I just I struggle to understand. You have a look at all the back rowers in, in this team. Sean Lane, Bryce Carwright, Hopgood, Madison, they all arrived undervalued back mm. rowers. And then you, Isaiah Publi has also left. So this Kelmer, like everyone you talk to that's played with him says he's an absolute freak. Mm. But he just can't put it together on a Sunday afternoon. Mm. Uh, I can't wait to see what Brad Arthur does with him. Well, you even look at Mitchell Moses. He was nowhere near the player when he, was at, when he left the Tigers to the player he is now. Like he is the complete package now, the complete package. Dylan Brown, he was a rookie, brought through, hitting his straps now, one of the better sixes in the competition. Like, again, like Brad Arthur, Brad Arthur deserves raps. Like he's one of the better player developers in the, in the competition. It's just sometimes with selection and their recruitment. Because I, I think that, so recruitment is a little bit different to coaching. Like the coach obviously has a say in who gets recruited, but usually there's uh, people that take care of recruitment and basically, you know, follow a system or, Bring, like, you know, we think with this guy would suit the squad, this guy would suit the squad. So that's the blame for recruitment can't fall so, like, so, solely fall on Brad Arthur. Like, you have to look at people outside of Brad Arthur. But what you can look at is the player development of the players in his side. Mm. That's the head coach's role is yeah. to develop the players. Um, and so I really do hope the Eels go well, though, because – I um I, I they're such a great side, great bunch of blokes, good, really, really entertaining to watch. Mitch Moses at his best is unbelievable. Dylan Brown, um, another guy I'm excited to see go to another level. Um, even though I felt like he's improved every single year, is Will Bensini. Yeah. Like he is just keeps flying under the radar in regards to young gun outside backs. He's still only 21, I'm pretty sure. 
came through the same year as Suali'i. I think they played a lot of footy together through school. Uh, he's just going to get better and better, more confident. Um, I, I just and also the the Eels need him. If he the Eels need him to fulfil his potential, because if they if they he doesn't, they don't really um, have that strike centre that you kind of need. Uh, so I, I cannot wait to see him yeah, play this year. Back, back on, uh, agreed, hundred mm. percent. Uh, on back on Sevo just quickly. He averaged 122 running metres per game last season. Hasn't averaged over 130 running metres per game since 2019. If he could bump that up by 30, 35 metres just to take a bit of extra workload off, it is a smaller outside backs, take a bit of pressure off the middles, coming off his own line, it'd change a lot. And maybe, you know, maybe I'm being unfair because he's a big boy, maybe he doesn't have the motor to do it, but at the same time, you're an NRL winger, if he's fit and fine, I don't see why he can't get to that 150 mark. Surely. Does it got how many runs he was averaging a game? Or just have a quick giz and see? Uh, might just be running metres, what I've got up here, nrl.com. Okay. Uh, look, it, it's a tough one because is he, uh, I guess, is he damaging enough to get away with not running those metres? I think when he's playing his best footy, he is. But when he has quiet weeks, he's not. So it's you have to ask the question of, mate, if you're scoring three or four tries, you know, scoring these crazy individual tries, we will look, uh, we'll turn a blind eye to the fact that you're not mm. taking enough hit ups. But the unfortunate thing is, it's like he's not really having stringing enough games together, in my opinion, of having those huge moments that he had a few years ago to justify not getting through the work, in my opinion. Yeah, I. I Oh, I get what you're saying, but I, you know, I just feel like Penrith aren't saying to Brian Ty, if you're scoring pies, we'll let it slide, mm-hmm. sort of stuff. Like he, he's he should be an absolute premier winger in our game, and he has periods where he is. But I, I think Parramatta are well within their rights to challenge him to try and improve that yeah. part of his game. Yeah, I, I think that I agree, 100. Mm-hmm. Yeah. percent I agree with you. Like you expect them to be the best they can be, but I, I'm more looking in the eyes of like the reality of like, okay. Is he ever going to be Brian Toto? Like, not really. I'm not saying you're saying mm. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, who else do we have at our club? Because you don't want to piss him off either. You don't want to smash his confidence, change his game up. He becomes uncomfortable. So it's like sometimes you've got to take the good with the bad. Yeah, but I also think you also need to evolve with the game too. And the you know the role of a winger has changed over the last few. Like, can you imagine? Like, he, he would have been the best winger in the game 15 years ago. So then you, then you have to ask the question, okay, it's been a few years now where he hasn't done that. Yeah. So shouldn't have they got rid of him? Maybe. I mean. And that's why I say, like, the reality is, is, like, who's out there? Who's going to deliver what what he can deliver? And, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I do, but I think there also needs to be a bit of emphasis on the player to I'm do with that. You. Start, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. I, I just mean that, okay, if you're going down the route of, mate, you've got to be – doing 180, 170 metres a game, plus also the, the good stuff. If you're not doing that, then you're not, have, you're not fulfilling your potential or whatever. We shouldn't be spending much money on you. Therefore, we should be get someone else in. But then, then, the, then the next conversation is who can actually replace him to do that because it's yeah. hard to find guys that can yeah, do yeah, what yeah. he does. Yeah. And, and like Brian Toto, if you're looking at them as a light for light comparison, is unfair because they're not the same. Yeah, they're they're not. very different. But, you know, Toto... Average metres per game in the last three seasons, 200, 203, 245. Sivo's lucky to be half of what Tyo's doing. It's like you can bump that up to the 150 mark, yeah. mate, and we, surely. I like, and to be clear, like, I've been, you know, we've been saying we've this said, We've spoken yeah. about this many occasions. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. It's not, this is not like new. We, we've, yeah. we've said at the start of last year, Sivo should, you know, he needs to bump his numbers up. Because put it this way, if Sivo did do that and Pensini does what we know he can do, all of a sudden you can afford to have – good solid outside backs on the other edge that just get through their defence yep. because you've got the weapons on the other side. But at the moment, when when Sivo and Pensini both have a little bit of a quiet game, there's just no punch there. Yep. There's no sure. punch there. Um, but I know what you're saying. Like, If you're too harsh on like players, sometimes it can send them the other direction and it's this mm. like, real balancing act. Uh, but I agree with you, mate. Like, I think that heading into this year, if we get to another end of season and we're sitting here going, oh, he made another 120 metres in the year and he was okay, had some moments that were really good, that's when you need to start asking questions like, why are we spending this amount on a winger that... I'd assume his contract now is being paid for what we thought he was going to be year on year. Um, 
and and I'm I'm not the thing the thing is bizarre is like it sounds like I'm saying he's played really poorly the last few years. He actually he's been solid. Like he's been solid. He just hasn't been as good as I think that he can oh, be. I don't even think it sounds like you're saying that. To yeah. be honest with you, like it's just it's reality. You have a look at his career. You know the first year, and you know he's in, like the first year he ran for 146 meters per mm-hmm. game. Then he went 118, 130, 129, 122. Like his first year out here yeah. proving a point or not, he, he he was able to do it. Mm. Um, and, and you know. It, like we keep saying the name Brian Tyler, I don't want him to run for two twenty. No, no. Give me one fifty. Give me yeah. one sixty, and we're good as gold. Mm. Yeah. No. Nah, agreed. Agreed. And and as we said, like that's kind of a key to their season. If if they come out and Pensini um, kills it and Sivo kills it, and we know Gutho is going to kill it. Oh, he's so good, um, so consistent. We could be getting to round ten, going. Eels are the real deal. The Eels are the real deal. Uh, okay. Anything else to say on the Eels boys? So six to ten. I've got him at six, six to ten. To ten I've got six to ten. Yep. S- seven to ten. Just missing. Just missing. Yeah. Just missing. Nine, nine to twelve. Yep. Okay. That yeah, is six to ten is five teams, isn't it? I'll go seven to ten. Oh, is it? I'll yeah. go. I'll go six to nine. Yeah. Six to nine. Um, this is a paid advertisement from BetterHelp, our show partner this week. It's the start of a new year, and we all have our own resolutions. Some of us want to get fit. Some want to learn a new skill, and some of us want to watch more footy. But there's a lot of us that probably just want to improve our mental health. If you're thinking of getting a hand with your mental game, get in touch with BetterHelp. Their services are entirely online and designed to work around you and your schedule. We all need a little guidance from time to time. As the largest online therapy provider in the world, BetterHelp can provide access to mental health professionals with a wide variety of expertise in mental health. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash bloke. That's better. H E L P dot com slash bloke. So you get 10% off if you go to betterhelp.com slash bloke. This week's bounce back brought to you by Mosh. The bounce back this week is Mitch Marsh. That's right. He won the Allen Border Medal last week and gave one of the all time great speeches. Uh, basically admitted, look, might be a little bit chubby, might like a pie and a beer. Uh, but the great cum dog, Paddy Cummins, yep. thanks for backing me all the way. Yeah. What an emotional roller coaster that uh, speech was. Very similar to this podcast today. We laughed, we cried. Um, we shat ourselves. We did. A, just a little bit. A little bit. Uh, but yeah, uh, good on Mitch Marsh. I don't think many of us saw him really probably getting another crack at Test cricket. Came back in, turned up in the Ashes. A couple of man of the match performances over the Aussie summer and just nailed it for us in the World Cup as well. So couldn't go to a nicer bloke. Everyone loves the Bison. He looks like a rugby league player as well. He's got a rugby league about him. So you've got to love that. And a, and a deserved Timmy uh, winner of the Mosh Bounce Back this week. Okay, there we go. That's the Mosh Bounce Back. Uh, Mosh is a place to go for smarter head loss treatment. Most men think that the only option to try and combat head loss is to spend thousands at clinics. And many don't want to go all the way uh, to the doctors about it. Join over 30,000 other guys in the Mosh Hairy Growth family and get $50 off your first treatment plan with code BLOKE50 at checkout. Completely customized, totally online and cheap hair regrowth solutions from $45 a month. Smart hair loss treatment all starts with a quiz at getmosh.com.au. Okay, let's go to our next team. It is the New Zealand Warriors. Okay. Now, the Warriors last year, their attacking stats, they finished seventh. Their defensive stats, they finished sixth. Um, I love that. I love that because it shows you that you've got a very balanced side on either of um, – you're like both, both parts of their game are quite balanced. It's not like they're number one here and then, you know, number 13 or eight or nine on the other side. Uh, now the Warriors heading into – so we all know we've spoken about ad nauseum – Incredible year from the Warriors last year. I'm currently writing an article, The Bloke Chronicle, previewing the season of the Warriors. And my theme for them heading into this year is the battle is won but not the war. They won the battle last year. It's been amazing, but I'm still – I'm not convinced yet that this is the standard that they are going to set for the next two or three years. Um, There is a chance, in my opinion, they missed the eight this year. Uh – I would probably have them at the moment from six to ten. I know that's five, but I'm just going to six to ten. I think I don't think they'll finish top four this year, uh, but that doesn't mean that they haven't made progress. That doesn't mean they haven't made progress. Uh, I think what they're building there is absolutely incredible. But we've seen this before. 
Eels make a grand final, drop out. Rabbitohs, midway through the year, favourites, drop out. Uh, Cowboys, Sharky slipped a little bit last year. And so I just think that, I know it's the age-old saying, but I think Warriors fans should stay a bit patient. Stay a bit patient. If they end the year and finish six and maybe go to week two of the finals, I think that's a good year for the Warriors. I really do. I, I think that some Warriors that think that they're going to just keep improving and it's going to be a, a grand final next year, look, it might be. It might be. But right now, if I have gunned ahead, I think they're going to finish probably around the six, year, six, to, six to eighth mark, six to ten mark. Guru, thoughts? I think you summed it up really well, mate. Uh, a year ago, we were sitting here talking about the Cowboys and the Parramatta Eels, the teams that jumped up a lot, and history tells us that unless your name is the Melbourne Storm, Sydney Roosters, or recently Penrith Panthers, you tend to have a bit of a regression. And I know that'll upset Warriors fans, and that's fine, but we're now sitting here talking about the Parramatta Eels who missed the eight, the North Queensland Cowboys that missed the eight. It's just the reality of the situation. I'm not saying they will miss it, but history tells us uh, that it's going to be tough to back up what they did last year. I think the big advantage for the Wars is I look at their gains and their losses, and the gains so far outweigh the, the losses. The gains are unbelievable. So, and it might sound crazy because I know Warriors fans are sitting there right now. And yep. what it, well, I said anyway, I'm not going to speak for you boys, but I said last year my concern was it was a like for like. Mm. Whereas you look at these gains this year and you go, well, Denon, you sound like a moron. They've got a better squad this year, and you're telling me they're going to finish a little bit lower. Um, obviously, Roger Tuivasa-Shek, Chanel, uh, Chanel harris tavita and Kurt Cape will arrive. Uh, the reason why I say a little bit lower is heading into last year, they kind of ambushed everyone. Now this year, it's different. When you're going up against the Warriors, and it's a sign of respect, and it's a sign of how far they've come, but every team's going to be hunting the Warriors now rather than them being the hunted. Weight of expectation is very heavy. Mm. And the reality is, the history of the Warriors, they haven't dealt well with that expectation over the last 10, 15 years. Mm. And in, in their favour, what I love the most about their whole season, their whole season, that weight of expectation was arguably some of the biggest in the history of the club outside of a grand final, a home final at Mount Smart, and they came out and absolutely dominated the Knights. And that's where I see I see hope for a very a changed roster, a changed environment. Yeah, the other thing that gives me hope is that, and it's a very small sample size, but uh, I love this coach. Yeah, I just there's so much to like about him, um, and you know, to me he is still unproven so far. You have to do it for season on season, um, so I think we'll learn a lot about him this year. But I, I feel good about him. Uh, but yeah, it's very hard to back up those seasons where you make huge gains mm. like that. And the reality is, you know, we sort of said it throughout the season. But last year, the Warriors were a top four team, but there was a gap from two to three. Mm. A huge gap and I think that was very evident come finals time and also when you looked at when they played some of the top tier sides they didn't beat a top four team all year yeah they struggled like, a little bit like it is what it is mm. at the end of the day um yeah I, I Warriors are going to be very very interesting and I think that I know a lot of my talking points this year will be for the Warriors that like if you're a top four team you get treated like a top four team it's mm. not pat on the back well done you made it it's yeah. this is a squad that should be competing for a top four finish and I'm going to Treat them like that throughout the year. Timmy, what do you recommend? Yeah, talking a lot about history there. In 2010, 2011 was the last time the Warriors made the top eight, played finals footy in consecutive seasons. Mm. So can this season be any different to the last 12, 13 years? Possibly. Mm. And, you know, I think one of the big factors there in why they can is Andrew Webster and how brilliant he's been. But at the same time, two teams you've alluded to in the Sharks and the Cowboys last season who had these stunning runs to the top four as well and then fell off come the following season and dropped significantly down the ladder. Also, Craig Fitzgib Craig Fitzgibbon, first-time coach, Todd Payton had the one season at the Warriors, then went to the Cowboys. And I believe it was the interim. He went in there for like half a season or something, isn't it, as a head coach at the Warriors? Yeah, yeah, it was half a season. Yeah, yeah. Half a season. Uh, so Andrew Webster finds himself in almost an identical position to those two guys as the, the Warriors do as a club. Mm. Is he going to follow the same path? Time will tell. As you mentioned, the, it's a stronger squad than last season. Not only is it a stronger squad, but they've got combinations that have time together now. They know each other's game. You know, Sean Johnson has, after years of being sort of injury played, just little bits and pieces, has a full season behind him. So the signs are great. But they need, last year was an emo emotional roller coaster mm. for them. Like Mount Smart, the whole country just went nuts for the Wars last season. It takes a lot out of you. Yeah. I, glass half full looking at it though, you go back to those big games 
for example, against the Broncos, you throw Kurt Capel and an RTS in that side, they're big game players that have big moments. And so if the Warriors defy what we're saying right now and they come back and they're just as good as they were last year, plus they have these big game top tier elite players that can have these big moments, you know, all of a sudden, those big moments that need to happen to kind of do something great, guys like RTS and Kurt Catewell can do that. And that, that is what is so exciting with the Warriors that let's say they do defy that whole second year, bit of a lull kind of thing. Then you're heading into finals footy going, when that big moment arrives, you've got the players to kind of make it. Whereas you look at the squad this year that just, you know, was incredible. Obviously SJ can have in moments, but you look at the centers and the wingers played really, really well good quality NRL players, but they're not S tier, RTS, Curdy Catewell kind of players mm-hmm. yet. Uh, and so that's also what's exciting is that when you get to those big moments, for example, when the game was in the balance, I understand that forward pass happened, but when there's a game against the balance against the Broncos, that's where RTS could have done something and changed the momentum for them. And that's where you've now got guys in this squad like RTS who's played in one of those sides that stays at the top mm-hmm. at the Roosters. You've got Kirk Catewell. It was part of that Panthers side. Got the Broncos back up to the top. Most importantly, you got the coach that's come straight out of the Penrith system. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think Warriors fans sh- should be excited and very hopeful about this yeah. season. Be, definitely be excited. Yeah. I just think that if you're getting towards the end of the year and you're sitting fifth or sixth or even seventh, I, I wouldn't be disappointed. I would actually be excited because what it has done. If they finish fifth, sixth, or seventh, or even eighth. What it has done is cemented, okay, we're a finals footy team now. Like this, this new system, this new roster, this new coach, the standard has been set. It's two years in a row. It wasn't just a blip on the radar. You know, next year, we're going to be even better for it. Um, I can't wait to see Sean Johnson. If Sean Johnson stays injury free, imagine the confidence he's heading into this. Look at the year he had with zero confidence. Like, so 2022, like, basically, we're all sitting here going, maybe he will retire. Yep. Maybe he will retire. Or even a couple of bad games, he might not even be the seven for the Warriors and it may, might be Tomato Martin with Luke Met, uh, Metcalf or Vogman or whoever. Whereas SJ with that season behind him and now he knows exactly the game plan that works for him with this side, that's exciting. That's exciting. Mate, I'm, I'm almost more excited to see who lines up at 5-8. Is it the best depth in the 5 eight position in the competition or what? Oh, if, if all of them play into potential, 100%. Um, Tomato Martin, Luke Metcalf, and mate, I thought Chanel harris I, I was devastated when he went. Well, what I'm excited with harris Tavita is we've seen him under the Warriors. That's, it's an environment that struggles. Everyone's struggling. You know, Only a few players are kind of um, bucking the trend of playing good footy. harris Tavita under this coach, under this system, that's exciting for me. That's exciting. For sure. Yeah, I can't wait to see him back. Uh, Yeah, so many positives for the Warriors heading into this year. Matty, what are your thoughts on the Warriors, mate? Yeah, I'm obviously, I'm in agreement with you guys. I I don't know if they'll hit the top four again, but I certainly think they could. Um, I just think everything everything that could have gone right for the Warriors last year kind of did. Um, But I still expect them, I I think it'd be disappointing if they missed the eight, but I have them around seventh to ninth. Yeah. Look, I honestly go as far to say as, Definitely disappointing if they miss the eight. But if they finish like ninth and all the teams around them with these crazy squads just squeeze them out, like that's okay year. It's not a not a you know a disaster. It's a disaster if they're like, you know, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth. How many thoughts on the Warriors, mate? Well, I can tell you that the uh, sports opponents are pretty confident on them to make the top four again. They're actually the second best back side to make the top four. Really? Wow. At three dollars seventy five. The punters like the value there for them to, to sneak Maybe we in don't know what again. we're talking about, boys. If you like Kempi, though. Fair chance. There's a fair chance of that. Yeah, you mentioned they may miss the eight at the at the start of the segment there. Uh, two bucks to miss the eight, so $1.80 to sneak in. So, look, they had a great year last year. I don't know whether they can replicate that because, as Matty said, a lot went right. But, look, they've recruited very well. Some good experience heads. Um, I don't think they'll be a million miles away. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't... Th- I'd be surprised if they finished in the top four, but I still think they got finals footy in them this year, um, okay. uh, the Warriors. Uh, now let's go through some um, the, the team. Now the predicted team from uh, the brother, Timmy, um, <laughs> the cuz, <laughs> uh, is New Zealand Warriors predicted team. CNK at the back. DWZ on the wing. RTS at three. Rocco Berry at 
Paul, so RB. MM. <laughs> <laughs> MM at five. LM at six. SJ at seven. AFB at eight. WE at nine. MB, Mitch Barnett at ten. MN at 11. MB and MN, what a duo. <laughs> <laughs> KP, not the Kale and Ponga kind. Oh, sorry, KC, my bad, my bad. <laughs> uh, Kurt Catewell, Tohu Harris at 13, Dylan Walker at 14, Jackson Ford uh, at 15, 16, Bunty Afoa, 17, Jazz, Jazz Tavanga. What I love about this side is how balanced it is. Like, talk about a well-balanced side that got exactly what you need, when you need it. Um, you look at this bench, Dylan Walker, like, perfectly made 14. Was outstanding last year for them. Can play so many different positions. Then you've got a guy like Jackson Ford who obviously can come on the edge, but also, you know, quite durable. Can play kind of in the middle if he had to. Bunty Afoa, big bopper, getting better each year. And Tavanga, again, super, super, can play anywhere. Nine, 13, front row if he had to, on the edge if he had to. Um, it's just a really, really well-balanced roster. And it's almost like shocking when you go, well, Webster's only been, AW's only been there for um, <laughs> a year. He's only been there for a year. And so I, the, oh, I forgot his name now. Um, the roster manager that was at the Warriors, but then went to Dolphins. POS. POS? <laughs> POS. POS. Oh. POS. Piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Peter O'Sullivan, you've got to give him a lot of credit because like this balance of a squad, you know, he would have had his hands on that. Uh, and Gus Gould as well when he was there as well. Because these, this PG 13. Because <laughs> these, these, um, these balancing of a squad, they take years. They don't happen like a year before or two years before. Mm. It's, you know, three or four years before. So um, I love it. I love the roster. I think it's really well balanced. What do you reckon, Guru? Yeah, I, I have a look at that 17. I completely agree. Timmy, the one that I would maybe look to shift, um, which I'm here to hear your thoughts on, I would probably start Jackson Ford on the edge, near Corey through in the middle. Yeah, someone uh, um, hinted to it during the week, and it was just that Webster last season came out and said he wants Jackson Ford as an 80-minute edge player or nothing. Mm, he doesn't yep. seem as a bench player. Thinks he gets better as he goes. Yeah, yeah so... Whether they just do Kate Well and Ford as 80 minute edges and they move Nia Koye into that middle role, he, he struck up a really good combination with SJ on the edge last season, would be the only thing. Do they want to change that? I'm not sure, but. I know it shouldn't play a, a part in it. He's also on a pretty big wicket. Mm. So I guess Nia Koye that Nia is. Koray Nia Koye. Yeah. So I guess when, you know, yeah, you put your money where your mouth is kind of thing. And when someone's on a big wicket, you can say you value this player or not, not to say the Webster's you know, saying that, but at the end of the day, whatever is said is irrelevant. It's where's the money? The money is in the accord. It always plays a part. Yeah, exactly. And so you go, is, is, it, is it worth having a seven, 800 grand forward sitting on the bench and he's only playing 30 minutes or 40 minutes? It always plays a part, and especially when it's a rookie coach, because rookie coaches, no matter how good a year you've had, are always going to be under pressure. Mm. And we've seen so many times where, you know, a team and a rookie coach have a great season, but new season, things can turn, you have a few losses, a few players get upset, things change. Not that saying that's going to happen here, but... Like, if you're a senior coach and a Wayne Bennett, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, you have you so many runs on the board. You can drop whoever you want and mm. you'll get away with it. But rookie coaches, it's different. And also you go, having Neil Corday on the bench is much more pressure than having Jackson Ford on the bench. But Webster's shown he's such a good coach. Maybe he's like, you know what? I'm, I'll make that call. I'll make that call. I just think Neil Corday is more suited to playing through the middle mm. than what Ford is. So... Uh, I you make good points with um, um, salaries and whatnot, but that's definitely the direction I'd be going in. I will say with the Jackson Ford, and although he said he wants him to be an 80-minute player, and I, I understand that, he did kind of fall off towards the end of the year, and that's what 80 minutes does to you. Yeah. Yep. Playing 80 minutes on an edge when you're a young fella. And so maybe Webster has can rethink that potentially and go, okay, maybe that was a bit tough on his body as a rookie. I couldn't ease him into the season. And then by the end of the year, mm. when it's crunch time, that's when I put him in his 80 minutes and, and maybe Neil Cotte gets moved a bit into the middle. There's also a young uh, back rower there. He's on there. He signed to 2026 and I, I apologise. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but his first name is Zion. He's the last name on the list. Um, very, very talented. I wouldn't be surprised to see him pop up and impress this year. Mm. Also, the city in the Matrix that, that's hidden. <laughs> 
Duh. <laughs> something to think about there. There's something to think about. A hidden talent. Yep. Is, is he the chosen one? ZM. Here you go. Thank you. Um, oh, uh, okay. Now. This is after what? Three, four teams? Wait till we get to seven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Luke Metcalf at six in the predicted side, but you got Tomate Martin. Um, I personally, Timmy? Yep. Luke Metcalf isn't my starting six. Isn't? Uh, no, I, I just want to see him get some uh, runs on the board in New South Wales Cup, get some games under his belt. So it would be most likely Tomato Martin. Broncos bias. <laughs> he's, um, had a, uh, he's had a big off-season, they reckon, Metcalf. And you can even see it in his pitches. He's bulked. I, I wonder just by looking at him if they're preparing him to defend in the front line. What, what did I say? Did I... Hmm? As in Metcalf at six? You yes. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, were you because you were you thinking that he's going to play full You've back? rattled the fuck out of me now. Um, I, I think Metcalf is, oh, I agree with him. I reckon he will be the six. Oh, okay. The only reason why I would have Tomate Martin or even Harris Tavita is that if you go with Metcalf at six initially and he does his hammy again, you've just wasted six weeks of a pairing. Interesting. And so that's what is a bit concerning. And I, and I hate to say it, you know, I want him to be playing as much footy as possible. But we always talk about combinations matter, like it matters. And the last thing you want is to get a guy, let's say he kills it for six weeks, does his hammy, he's out for three or four weeks. Do you bring him back in? Do you not bring him back in? And then you're fighting yourself constantly going, oh shit, like we don't know what to do. It's, it's creating, you know, get a bit of friction. Whereas if you start with Tomato Martin and he goes back to New South Wales Cup and he is killing it and he's played five to six games or seven games, looks good, no hammy dramas, everything's good to go. You've got the best of both worlds. Tomato Martin's either killing it and keeps him out of the, the jersey or Luke Metcalf comes in and he stays there. That's probably where I'd be leaning at the moment um, with the Metcalf. Yeah, it's a genuine shootout between them and it could go either way. Like, I'm a massive, massive fan of Tomato Martin. It is... I just thought Metcalf was outstanding. He, he was... The combination... Him and SJ just complement each other really well. Like, you know, we know SJ has a terrific running game, but he's just become such a brilliant organising number seven as he's aged. And Metcalf is not that. He's a ball running 5'8". His support play is outstanding. So, could go either way. Yeah. I suspect they will go with Metcalf. Very glass half empty. This is very negative. I already feel bad at saying it. But a lot of people with some pretty heavy injury histories. We saw Chance with some concussions in the back end of last season. We know SJ's history. Luke Metcalf, if they do start with him, great obviously depth in the halves. Torhu Harris looks like he's been playing on half a leg for about four years now. So all key spine players. Yeah. That being said, they do have, you know, two of us. Shekhar can go to fullback. They do have Metcalf who can go to fullback tomorrow. Martin to come in. They do have options. Wade Egan, you throw into that injury history. Um, but the depth is hopefully good enough to overcome any hurdles that do come at them. Um, now, the only other thing, uh, it'll be interesting, I think that Wade Egan doesn't get enough love from the wider audience of how important he is to their structure. And so let's say, touch wood, we don't want him to, but if he does get an injury, I do think that could have not as much impact as SJ could have, but honestly, close to how much SJ have. If you go back and watch all of their good work, it all starts with Egan. And not just like a normal pass off the deck, the timing, the pass selection, uh, getting out of hooky, take, hooker, taking two steps, taking one step, taking three steps, whatever it is, getting his forwards where they need to be. Uh, I think that Wade Egan, if they are going to push for top four again, he needs to stay pretty much injury-free most of the season at least. Not quite to the same level, but I think Wade Egan is similar to Jeremy Marshall King to the Dolphins. Mm. I think yep. that when he's not there, you'll probably realise how important he is to them. Because you've got Freddie Lussick um, there that can play nine. Got Lussick. Bit of a different player. Jazz if you have to. Yeah. I also think um, Chanel harris Savita could fill in at nine if need be. So they've got options there, but Wade Egan is by far and away. Well, you look at it, t- talk about injury history of Wade Egan. Like the last five seasons, he's played four of them at the Warriors. 22 games, 20, 20, 18 and 18. That, that last 18 was at Penrith. So they're never big injuries. They're just all these little soft tissue, just light ones yeah. that seem to keep me out for the, it just little different stints, but yeah. never anything major. I... I I wouldn't say I definitely not coming from a perspective of like he's injury prone, more just his importance to the yeah. squad. Like I just if he goes down for a long period, I just don't see unless Lussick comes in and kills it, mm. I just don't know where they get that same he was so good. He was so good last year that, you know, put it I think that he should have at least his name should have been 
in the running for Dally M Hooker of the Year. That's how good I thought he was last season. Um, so, yeah, he, his importance to the squad is... I'd probably go... Okay, so you got SJ. Maybe AFB. And then maybe Egan. So he averaged 66 minutes per game last season. And going through it, the preference was to play him for 80 minutes. Uh, without starting the entirety of the, uh, the split hit hooker debate... Do you like him as an 80 at the Warriors or do you like him sharing and maybe giving Jazz to Vung a 15? Or I don't like any 80. Full like, stop. Full okay. stop in this, this modern game. Um, you know, I think the only ones towards the end that could sort that, like, could handle that was that Mitch Kenny, I think, was at playing 80, like in the last few games of the year for the Panthers. But I, honestly, I think I prefer in the speed of today's game, every single uh, team having the option of giving them 10 minutes rest, you know, somewhere in the game. Usually, maybe before half time, five minutes or, or whatever. I tell you what, uh, parents out there listening in on this, they've got young little, young little lock forwards coming through the grades. Get them past the balls oh, off the deck absolutely. because if that's where the game's going, well, it's already going there now. We know that. But in five to ten years' time, any middle forward that can spend a bit of time at number nine, that could be invaluable because so there's valuable. a, it's lacking in the NRL at the moment because that position has changed so quickly. Mm. Missing a lot of context without watching the games, uh, which I'm happy to wear. But, like, you have a look through his season last year, Wade Egan. Uh, what did he play? 22 games. Um, eight of them he didn't play 80 minutes for. Um, and you even have a look at the first few weeks. And maybe they used Dylan Walker at hooker. I don't really recall that. But, like, Lusick wasn't on the bench for them. Um, so I think that whilst he does play a lot of games, as you said, he, like, he comes off in a lot of games. He cops a lot of hits and whatnot. I think we described the other day, he's too tough for his own good. Yeah, Ken Copper, right HIA. Yeah. Uh, just trying to think of some other key positions. Tohu Harris. I mean, I just want to say what an incredible season he had. Another guy that flew under the radar. Um, when you actually look at the impact that he had, and it's not even... The, you can look at the stats of running metres, tackles, all that kind of stuff, but when you actually watch the Warriors, he's almost... He's like he's a third half, but he doesn't get enough credit for his ball playing. You have to remember, he played six for the Kiwis. So yeah, like, I was on this podcast. Yeah, it was great. That was you. Does that say that correct? Oh, probably. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he played six for the Kiwis, and so I don't, like we always talk about, you know, Cam Murray, Isaiah Yo, um, Paddy Carrigan. Toe Harris is equally on their level, in my opinion. As, well, at the very least, last year he was, um, and I, I just think that. If they're going to have a deep run, he obviously has to continue that kind of form, which is going to be tough. But if anyone's going to do it, it's him. He's like he's a zombie. His pass selection as a lock forward last year, the short ones to AFB at the line, knowing where to play at the back, was arguably second to none as mm. a 13 last year. Yep. Uh, another CBA uh, that I want to throw your way, uh, Tui Picky. Tui uh, Picky. Yeah, Tui uh, came from the Billy Bears last year, I believe, from Q Cup. I think he got player of the tournament 2022 up there. Uh, so fullback, played a couple of games last year. Um, I mean, DW, uh, RTS can't get a gig at fullback for the Warriors, so it's pretty tough to get into that side, uh, but a lot of ability. There's another one on that list too, Ben Farr. I think he's a development player, also came down from the Queensland Cup. Mm. Another very talented guy, unfortunately, sort of a 5'8 fullback, so probably the hardest spot to get into. Yeah, I mean, Chance, Chance has had injuries in the past so it's mm. not like you know if he, I personally think if he gets injured he'll, they'll put Tui Picky and they'll keep RTS mm. at centre yeah. I will be so upset if that happens really because you I want to see, him see Roger play yeah, for okay. yeah, I just see Roger what do you reckon you reckon they'll keep uh, it's a great question because they I mean they've got Adam Pompey there as well who can slot in at centre I don't know I reckon they do because know. it's again it's that argument of combinations systems you know what is your starting side when you play the grand final that, that's the way i look at things anyway and the starting side would most likely be chance rts at center mm. for for what they've said anyway and so let's say Tua picky comes in to a and he's you know killing it so well that chance doesn't get his spot back well then that's a good thing you've got a better version of chance at mm. fullback um and rts at center whereas if RTS goes back to fullback, mm. now all of a sudden, okay, where does Chance go? Where does Tua Picky go? And, and, you know, it's a tougher kind of question. I think Tua Picky's New South Wales cut form will dictate it. If he's killing it, he comes in at fullback. If yep. he's going okay, they'll probably just put Roger there. He had a great debut. Great debut. Yeah. He was, he was it's a good awesome. player. Yeah. yeah. Um, what about Gold Coast and their fullbacks? Do you know Drew Buller was um, on the Gold Coast as well? Oh, great. Good. Yeah. Crazy, eh? That wants to play for New South Wales. <laughs> what? 
Isn't it wild? Like, if you would have said a few years ago that, you know, like, I oh, can be the Warriors, best fullback at the club, based on history as Italian winner there, he's playing centre. Yeah. The Titans, best fullback, he's playing centre. You know, there was an argument a few years ago. Obviously, Scotty Drinkwater's taken that over, but, like, it was crazy when Val Holmes was moved to centre as well. Yeah. How common it's just becoming. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, and, and I'm just excited for the Warriors because it's been a while since they've had this kind of depth. Like one thing that I'm excited outside of, I mean, even, even in the halves, like SJ, obviously, he is the main guy. But like Tomato Martin, Harris Tavita, or Tomato Martin and um, Luke Metcalf or something like, yes, that's not SJ, but that's not terrible. It's not terrible. Like that can, that can grind you through a few games whilst you're waiting for SJ to come back. You know, get a, get a scrappy win against a few teams around mid-table. Um, so and that, that's where they're at as a club. Very very exciting. Okay, I've got them um, um, six to ten. Yeah, seven to ten. Yeah, got them eight on my ladder. So seven to ten. Seven to ten. I've got them in that uh, Elton Flatley kind of category. Five to eight there. <laughs> five to eight. So they're, they're making the finals. They're making the finals. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, very comprehensive. The uh, the AFB to DWZ there. The Warriors. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Thank you. Okay. What are they? Have you already done the odds? You already done the odds. Yeah, we did the odds yeah. for them. So uh, two bucks to miss the eight, dollar eighty to scrape. Okay. In. Alrighty, Melbourne Storm now. Also, don't forget to grab a case of blog beer if you enjoy the content. Grab a case of blog beer from your local celebrations. IGA Plus Liquor, Liquor Legends, Porter's Liquor, Bottolo, all that good stuff. Melbourne Storm gains. Sean Bloor, losses. Tarek Sims, Nicodema, George Jennings, Jordan Grant, Eisenhuth, and Justin Olam. Uh, last year they were. Uh, in uh, attack, they were 11th. In defence, they were 11th. It's just like, <laughs> if that isn't the most storm, like, the fact that they came third, essentially, as in, oh, well, they, they came third, um, but they had 11th for, <laughs> like, both stats. Shows you that even when they're not playing as well, even when their roster is probably nowhere near as strong as it has been in the past, they still manage to find a way. To find a way. They just defy all odds. They're, like, they're literally defying statistics right now. 11th on both, and yet they came third. It is actually unbelievable. Uh, with the Melbourne Storm heading into this year, before they signed Sean Bloor, and this may sound silly because you go, it's just one signing, he's not even proven in first grade yet, but personally, the signing of Sean Bloor has actually changed a lot for me when it comes to this season for the Storm. I'm extremely excited for the Storm heading into this year. I think it rounds out their forward pack, puts pressure on guys like Haworth, who was a young rookie coming through. Those two guys are going to be battling out for that edge position. Then you look at, um, you know, or, or maybe Bloor plays 13, depending on what his ball playing is like or what Craig Bellamy wants. But Guru, you've heard whispers that Lioro is training at 13 or potentially going to train there. Yeah, there's been a bit of word around that. Uh, as we know, guys, it's January, so February now. So God knows how it all plays out. But yeah, I've, I think that Bloor will line up on an edge and there's I think there's a chance that Trent could line up at 13, uh, which, yeah, not something I saw coming. Might not play out by all means, but interesting one. I, I Look, I actually like it because I just think that Josh King's a front rower. Played really well last year. But I think he's just an out and out front rower. And when you do that, when you move Lioro into the 13, now I don't know what his ball playing's like, so hopefully that it's okay. But he's definitely a bit better laterally than King. Um, but it rounds out their forward pack now. Now all of a sudden, their forward pack is like super locked in, super strong. Kamakamitha, Welsh, Nelson of Solomona, uh, King, that's a really good, strong rotation. Welsh has a whole year under his belt after his Achilles injury. Kamakamitha, he's going to be more confident for, for as he hits. I think he's probably around the 100, 100 game mark, I'd assume. Um, can you just check that for us, Matty? I, then I also hearing Craig Bellamy talk about the key players didn't play to their potential last year. I'm really, really excited for the Storm. If there was one, I guess, concern, you could say maybe in the centres, but I actually think Nick, Be Nick Meany is going to be outstanding. Uh, I really like Meany as a player. It looks like he's locked in on one edge. Remus Smith, I thought they really missed him uh, last year. I know he was in and out of first grade um, at times due to form rather than injury, but I think that uh, the year before, I thought he was outstanding. When you look at their wingers, Warbrick, he has another year under his belt. Coates, he got so, so much better towards the end of last year. Um, I am really, really excited for the Storm this year. Come on, can make 92 games. There you go, boom. No, 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 no. Rugby, rugby league, baby. <laughs> 
I thought it was really interesting, and, and you're right, that when I looked at it and said 11th in attack, 11th in, in defence, wild that they finished top four, unbelievable. Reasons. The next thing that I thought, though, is that if that isn't the greatest example of all time of how important a forward pack is when you've got a spine of Harry Grant, yeah. Cam Munster, yeah. Jerome Hughes, to be 11th in attack, um, and you have a look at some of the teams that were above them, let's take Dolphins, for example. Like you would take any of the Melbourne Storm boys in a heartbeat in that spine. Mm. Um, they really need someone to stand up in that forward pack. Hopefully it's Sean Bloor. I think your point on Christian Walsh is really good, returning a year back from uh, injury. We know that when he, you know, the first year tends to be a little bit slower, the second year tends to pick up again. Uh, it wasn't that long ago Christian Walsh was, in my opinion, one of the best front rowers in rugby league. Uh, but they, they do really need someone to stand up in that forward pack. As I said, hopefully it's Bloor. I'd love for it to be Howarth. Mm. Love for him just to explode out of nowhere. I'd love for an Aaron Penne, a Kamakamitha, a Tepai Morale, one of these guys to just jump out of the ground in typical Craig Bellamy fashion. And then it's a game changer all of a sudden. What I like about this for the Storm is Bloor has quite a lot of punch on the edge here. How earth we know he does as well, uh, if he, you know, ends up fulfilling his potential. But it just simplifies Nelson's game. Yep. Mate, you go on the field for, let's just say, 40 minutes all up. Your only job is to get as quick play of the balls. That's it. Whereas before, I felt like last year they were way too reliant on Nelson by going, okay, we need to put you on an edge because we're desperate for some momentum. But then all of a sudden we had no punch through the middle. Okay, we're going to bring you back into the middle. Uh, whereas now it just simplifies it. He knows exactly what he's going to be playing all year long. Um, and I still think they haven't managed to replace Brandon Smith's impact through the middle. Yep. But this might be a step in the right direction. What do you reckon, Timmy? Occasionally, and I think all footy fans occasionally get these feelings of like butterflies in the stomach where you're just thinking about rugby league in the preseason you go we're so close to footy action of course we're excited but sometimes it just hits you weirdly out of nowhere and you're holy <laughs> crap and it's this melbourne storm spine that gives me those butterflies mm. because i look back on last year and i think they finished third made a prelim and i'm like I felt like they're overachieved mm. because we had question marks around the middles and a few other things last season. But the main reason being two games in finals. They got to win there, three games. So the other two games, a cumulative score of 64 to four. <coughs> towed up by the Broncos week one, towed up by the Panthers week three. And I don't think anyone was overly surprised by either of those results. Mm. I think they come in stronger this year. And I think that they will look back on last year and go, okay, we did okay, we got by, we finished third. But Craig Bellamy doesn't sit there and, and he's not content with third. Mm. Craig Bellamy deals in premierships. And this spine of Pappenhausen back, hopefully he returns and looks the goods, Hughes, Munster, Harry Grant are way too good to not be pushing for a premiership this year. And I just think they'll be burning from the last couple of seasons of underwhelming performances by their lofty standards. They said they've added a little bit to their forward pack, Christian Welch, a season back from an ACL injury, I think they're in for a really big season. And we, you know, what was the other part of the Brandon Smith um, impact? It was obviously Harry Grant, but the other part also, it was Ryan Pappenhausen. Yep. And although Nick Meaney had a really strong year at fullback, and um, I said this in the finals, and you know, I understand why you know, Storm fans can push back on it, but I said that Nick Meaney's a really good player, but I just don't know if he has that dynamic mm aspect of his game that say a Pappenhausen and I was saying that they should start for Alonga at fullback because although he can make errors because he's a rookie and he's just learning his game he can break a game open us also like also and then we look at the fact that they had they were 11th in attack I think that that the fact that Pappenhausen wasn't there has a lot to do with that as well um, because you know Nelson would have got a quick, quick play the ball and if Harry Grant's tired or he's not there then Pappy would have jumped in and so what's exciting this year is let's say Pappy doesn't get back to his best, but I, I hope he does. Cause like, I think people are so quick to forget how good this guy was. Like people are already saying that he shouldn't have that number one Jersey already. Uh, it's craziness to me. Well, there are people saying that the season prior before the injury, that he should have been a blues fullback or a blues 14 or mm. in there somewhere. It obviously didn't eventuate. And then to state, we already know he didn't play the first 25 rounds last year. But 18 minutes in round 26, then played against the baby Broncos in a baby storm outfit in round 27 and set it alight. You've got, you know, on his day, potentially the best fullback, maybe not the best, but... Well, top tier. Top, top tier fullback yeah. coming back into this team. Clive Churchill. Into a team that 
finished third last season, made a prelim final. Mm, I know. And so, and, and some people saying, oh, fight along or should just get that sport media. Like, hang on a sec. Like, there's no one more excited than me with Fa'a Longo. <coughs> but he's... <laughs> well, okay. Here second in line. To say. <laughs> You're it? Second Speak in line, me. mate. Okay, Come second on. in line. Jeez, I thought you nearly died there. <laughs> First bloke to die on a podcast ever. And it was over a rugby league player. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> we literally lost our co-host over Fa'a Longo. <laughs> um, there's no one... I am one of the biggest fans of Fa'a Longo. That's the one. Uh, but look, he's a rookie still. We saw the incredible game that he had, was it against Australia or Samoa? Anyway, and then the next game he made like, against, yeah, so against Australia, played against really Australia, well. Yeah. Then against New Zealand, he made like, you know, six or seven missed tackles or whatever. And that's not knocking the bloke at all. That, that is a natural process of a rookie. Like that, is, that is what is expected. And so to just expect that he would get that jersey over Pappy straight away, it, I just, it's, it's craziness to me. Now, if Pappy comes back in the first four or five games, he's nowhere near you know, where we know he can be and Fa'a Longo is killing it in, in New South Wales Cup, then, or, or Q Cup, sorry, then obviously what an incredible uh, depth to have. Uh, but Pappenhausen coming back into the side, it really does change. Like, look back, remember back to the season, they got to the finals and they, they just, I don't know, they just seemed to get to the big games and struggle. But remember when they had that massive record of point scoring in that year? Like, that was really all off the back of Pappenhausen. Like, he was the key to all of that play through the middle with his speed around the ruck. What was it four tries in 11 minutes against the Bronx? <laughs> yeah, like, well, you didn't have to say that, did you? <laughs> you didn't have to say that. But you did. You said it. Uh, don't worry. We're going to talk about the Raiders, mate. You go, oh, oh, I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, and so that's what excites me. Now, uh, Munster has recently come out and said, I know it's going to sound funny, you know, I'm normally a very confident guy, but I lacked confidence last year, overthinking things and stuff outside of rugby league. That is so scary to me that he has mm. said that and admitted that heading into this year and saying that it's sorted. It's like, oh God, this guy is going to go to another level. Adding to that, Jerome Hughes came out and said, I think he said something along the lines of the gap between his best and worst games is too big at the moment and he needs to work on that and talking about how he needs to be better. And Harry Grant's role seems to be more cemented of we're not going to make you do all the shit work. We're going to let you do what you do best and that's break teams apart. I saw uh, there was a couple of photos getting around the other a few weeks ago of um, Hughes and Munster back at training early. And uh, I was talking to a Melbourne Storm fan and do your own research whether it's true or not. But I was looking at it going, they were just in like normal T-shirts. I said, oh... Not weird that they're not in Melbourne Storm kit, and I was told that they came back so early that the Storm didn't have their kits ready. <laughs> no way. Don't know if it's true. That's or not. gospel. Might be one of the Lock great it in. Porkies of all time. Lock it in. That's gospel. First time ever, blokes come back so early. It's not made. I love that yarn. We're going to run with it. <laughs> Tell your mates when you go to the pub. Heard that they came back so early, didn't have kit for them. I, I had a very similar issue in my playing days, except I used to get back at the start of March and they had no kits left to give out. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me with all the new sponsors and everything. That needs to get. And it's, it just, I just think that they're set up for a massive year. I also think that this is probably going to be Bellamy's last year. I know he said it before every single season, but I feel like it's getting closer. I really do. Yeah, but we could be sitting here in four years' time. And he's still doing it. I don't know. That yeah, he, I just <laughs> I, I feel like it's getting closer. Put it this way. If they did win a comp this year, I think he would retire. I think if they win a comp, he retires in a half. Because yeah. I've said it so many times and I've got no evidence to back it up. I do think he loves the challenge of winning a comp without the big three that have come before. And Surely. It's, yeah, it's something in his career that, you know, when you look back and Craig Bellamy's going to be talked about as, you know, one of the greatest of all time, but... You know, if you're looking for arguments against why he shouldn't be up there, that'd be it, really. Mm. And it's something that it is going to be part of his legacy. Which is silly because he, he, outside of Cameron Smith, those boys, he created it. Like, not created, 100%, but, yep. you know, guided them. But it, it'll be the argument from people. Yeah, for sure. We, we for know sure. what people will run with. So, uh, and I think Bellamy is well and truly aware of his legacy. Okay, now looking at this, um, this roster, uh, another guy that I am interested to see is Chan. I didn't mind, I didn't mind what I saw from him last year. What do you reckon about Chan? Um, I thought he was a little bit underwhelming last year. Maybe I had my expectations too high for him. Uh, but I, I thought he would have more impact last season uh, than what he did. But As in when he actually played or as in 
his season when, when, when was he played, be yeah, okay. I, I, I thought he was going to do a little bit more last year. But, you know, young guy, better for the run. Are we seeing a, a rare failed CBA, mate? Oh, there's plenty of failed CBAs, don't worry. <laughs> See, I, I didn't – look, I might be misremembering. I, I liked what I saw from him. Once again, I might have had my expectations too high, and I'm more than happy to wear that. Um, Us being I, hyperbolic? I don't think so, sir. <laughs> can't imagine that, no. Uh, but, yeah, he, he's one. There's another kid um, who is – he played in, uh, Queensland Cup last year, Lazarus uh, Valipu, I believe it is, um, a front row forward who – Oh, isn't that beautiful? Well, Glenn Lazarus, yeah. like, it's oh, just God. all – It's all – it yeah, lines up. It's all there. Yeah, it checks out. Um, I was having a look at his stats from last year. How wild is this? I assume there, must, there was probably an injury or something involved. In his first eight games last year, he had 24 tackle breaks. In his next 13, he had 13. So he started the season on fire when they were starting him as a front row. He then came off the bench. So I wonder if maybe there was an injury or something there involved. But uh, to be going into Q Cup – uh, and he's also he's not 18, 19 He's t- 24 years old Which mm. I really like as well In my forward So I think he's one to keep an eye on And uh, doesn't the uh, the bloke chronicle headline Write itself when Lazarus comes in in the front oh, <laughs> oh, Absolutely yeah. it does Absolutely Yeah so Chin Now I remember he debuted against the Broncos I, th- I thought he was okay I thought he, he um, I th- I like, There's a lot to like there 21 years old 21 years old Still very young um, I mean we've spoken about it quite a bit But we've got to speak how, how worth? I hope I'm saying how worth. Or how worth? So, when you look at these contracts, what's funny, mate? <laughs> how do you stuff that up? Is that what you're saying? Is that what we're thinking? How do you stuff that? That up? was definitely what he was thinking. <laughs> it wasn't how you stuff it up. It's just you had like six different goes of it, and it just said, "Yep, thank you." Well, six you win, again. You win some, you lose more. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, JH. JH. <laughs> uh, Off to the Warriors. <laughs> the only other players signed till 2027 are Nelson, Cameron Munster, and Katoa. He's a rookie that hasn't debuted yet. Uh, unprecedented. Storm have never done this. I don't even think Cameron Smith signed a five-year deal. He, play, he played that uh, that round 27. Sorry, game. yeah, the, he's one game of NRL. Baby Bron. What's, you know what's weird about that game is I almost don't like. It is an NRL game, but I almost don't see. Like yeah, I don't they remember it. In like, the yeah. Top 17. Um, anyway. So Howarth is he's on a decent wicket. He signed this contract before he played NRL, way before he played NRL. And I haven't really heard much buzz about him. Whereas a guy like Fa Longo, I was hearing buzz about him, you know, as far back as not 23, but even 22, I was hearing buzz about him. Uh, where, so I'm just, and what's surprising is Howarth coming out of school, there was crazy buzz about him. And I just wonder what is going on there. Are we seeing a Bellamy masterclass about being patient? Or we're seeing a young rookie that's just struggling to find his foot, feet a little bit in the first grade system. Impossible to say. Without which is, which is okay, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Not everyone has to debut at 19, 20 yeah. years old. Like, yeah. that's totally fine. But, like, it's like this guy was the guy yeah. coming out of From school. watching him coming through, you would have said, I did say on numerous occasions, he will debut at 19. Yeah, it's wild. Like, he's signed to 2027. I feel like he's been signed to 2027 for three years. Mm. Like, it's 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 incredible how long this feels like it's all dragged out. And you also have a look at last year. Like, he's a guy that can play back row. He can play centre as well. How many injuries have the Storm had in those two positions over the last two years? And lost two key players and not had people cemented in those spots other side of Katoa. And I could be completely wrong, but I, I believe that even that game against Brisbane, we got there and I think he came off the bench, didn't he? I think they started. Yeah, I think he came off the bench. I reckon, from memory only, because it was very super coach relevant at the time, I reckon he was named on the bench and he started come game day. I've got it right here. Give us a second. Regardless, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's wild how it has all played out with him and I can't believe he hasn't played more first grade. Yeah, so he was named at 17, came in and started, and I also reckon he got injured in that game. Yeah, he didn't play the full 80 in that game? No, nah, he played um, 65 minutes, went off late with her, something rather. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really keen to see how he progresses because he's kind of one of those players that we're going to wake up, well, we're not sure, but there's a chance we wake up one day and he is absolutely exploded. Mm. But that's the kind of talent he has. I don't, whereas a lot of players. Not a lot of players, but like most young guys coming through, they either explode onto the scene or it takes them kind of a while, like in NRL, to then slowly build into players. But how is the kind of guy that it might just one day click for him and then boom, he Can just goes? Can you imagine what, like, we look at the Storm roster and they're light on still 
probably a, a qual- high quality middle forward. He's not necessarily going to help that, but he solidifies the edge spot and provides another high quality potential centre option if he hits anything near the expectation of the last couple of years. It changes the team completely. Yeah, I, oh, I think 100%. with this kid too, there's a bit of a misconception. He's, he's listed on their website and everything as a centre. Played 17 games in the back row in reserve grade last year. Don't have to remind me. <laughs> <laughs> One of the great calls all the time, but whatever. Yeah, it was a good call by you. And playing 80, like the last 10 games, he played 80 minutes. Um, is it interesting they went after Sean Bloor? That, that's, that's what's like. It just bit, doesn't. It, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, will, I agree with you, Timmy, is that if he hits his straps and then you've got Sean Bloor floating around to be, fill some other gap, whether it's 13, whether it's in the middle, whether it's coming off the bench, that forward pack goes like just to a whole other level yeah, when you're, also, yeah. you're squeezing players out of it. And even just your bench makeup, like you've got your outside backs covered, but mm. certainly centre. Howarth played 17 games last year. He had 62 tackle breaks. So it's not like he's playing bad footy. Yeah. This is only going off stats too. Yeah. Maybe there's more to it, sure. But maybe we're just witnessing a Craig Bellamy masterclass of patient, patient, mm. patience, patience. The longest tackled at a 96, at a 90% efficiency. Like... He's not playing bad. It doesn't seem like he's playing bad. Yeah. Maybe, as I said, maybe. Look, Craig Bellamy is the greatest of all time player developer developer in rugby league. Do we all agree there? Yep. Yeah. Like, I think, I think it's you know you could make arguments about the best coach all time. Like, is it Bennett? Is it Gibson? Like, you could make those arguments. I don't think there's anyone that could argue that he's not the greatest all time player developer. So maybe this is just a masterclass of making sure a guy that they believe so strongly in, they sign him on a five-year deal, he's the future of the club, he's going to be there for a long time, they're going to try to win premierships with him, make sure that when he is ready to go, he's really ready to go. Maybe that's what we're witnessing at the moment. I had another question for you, but it'll derail us for (laughs) 15 minutes, so I might save it. But it'll be interesting to see how close Ivan Cleary gets to. Best development coach. You Ooh. can't say you're going to say it and then you ask it. And you say well, it now. It just better. doesn't work, mate. Uh, here we are. I tried oh. it with Kempi before, like Let's an hour ago, and, and he answered it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, can't believe you had Darren Lockyer over Slater's. <laughs> oh, stop it. But that's a fair chat, though. <laughs> <laughs> I th- I, that's a fair chat. Lockie, I, I feel like, I, look, it's 1A, 1B. What did I say? <laughs> what did I say? You can't you can't. Do you want Slater? Is your Slater? No, I'm just luring you into a trap. Slater? I'm trying to piss him off. Um, it's absolutely Slater. Yeah, I think Slater. But it is Clark. Slater. Hodgson. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Save for Buy Round uh, podcast. <laughs> okay. Um, shout out to Buy Round podcast. Uh, True. Nick Meany. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> I, uh, I I really hope Nick Meany gets an extension. 2024 is his last season contracted. I think he does. Surely. Surely. Yeah. How can he not? I, I think he'll kill it at centre. Last year. I think he'll be that centre that, okay, he may not have like the highlight reel of, you know, a, a, a Cooper or a Gaznier or a Hodjo, but he'll be that player that is like deceptively, you know, making line breaks here and there with, with smart footy, you know, like running good lines, really safe, Getting through a bunch of work. I'm excited to see how he goes at centre. Not that it's his best position by any means, but he can also cover 5-8. He can literally cover 1-6 to six for them in the back line at a... You know, and in today's game, game, it's so important. Yeah. So important. Um, outside of that, can't wait to see Harry Grant this year. I like, because Harry Grant won Dalian Hooker A. Yeah. And what's ironic is I kind of feel like he didn't have his best season last year. Yeah, it shows great. you how, much, how far he is ahead of... Did he win Dalian Hooker? I think yeah. he did. Okay. Yeah. And it shows you how far ahead Harry Green is than the rest of the, the pack in regards to hooking. If he stays fit, like he could win that for the next 10 years. Mate, when he is on, and you can, like you can literally watch the game and see the opposing forward pack begin to stress out, mm. like begin to make bad decisions and go, fuck, this is like frustrating. This, this hooker constantly putting us in bad spots. We've seen him in recent years and I know I've alluded to it a thousand times already, but Melbourne's middles, their lack of middles, their lack of middles. Imagine if they get back to being one of the most dominant middles in the game or him behind that pack. Imagine him in like Panthers pack. Imagine. Good luck. <laughs> it would be a joke. Um, uh, anyway, else? Katoa, really excited. Second year under Bellamy. Cannot wait. Uh, and I was just going to say one more. Another year with Jerome Hughes too. Yep. Alec McDonald. I'm interested to see how he goes. I, I thought he was a real goer last year. Played way above his weight, 
real kind of a project player that Bellamy loves. He's a Bellamy dude. Yeah. Um, okay. Storm. Also, we've already spoken about it a little bit, but far longer. I cannot wait to see this guy play an extended period of NRL. When we talk about highlight reels, oh, my God. Um, I've got him in my top four. Yeah, I think they'll be uh, two to five. I've got them in third and, yeah, top four. I've got them in third as well. Uh, I've got them in top three. Top three? Ooh, okay. Yeah, I've got them third. I've got them in the top four. Uh, they're $2.65 to make the top four, yep. which I think is great value for the Storm there. Nine bucks to win the comp, if you think they can go the whole way. One other market that has just caught my eye, I was talking to Timmy in the green room about this one earlier. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Pappenhausen, top point scorer for the comp this year. Uh, we've heard Ooh. he's going to play a trial. Let's have a look and see if he goal kicks there. That'll be obviously a big deciding factor. 36 bucks to be the top point scorer really? in the comp this year. I got him at 40 runs. Oh, Often loaded. That's value. So let's just have a wait and see if he's going to goal kick. I know he's Stay patient. Injuries, but, Stay uh, patient. Hey? Stay patient. Stay patient. I also took a little flyer on him. At 151 to 1 for top try score as well. Okay. Never know, never know. Ooh, cheeky, very cheeky, sir. I, I didn't wait and see either. I got on straight, <laughs> as, soon as, you as soon as you said it to me. <laughs> Who's um, the favourite in that market? Uh, the Osaka. top point scorer market. Uh, just give me a second, I'll pull it up. Theory? I, I dare say it no, would be. Sarko. Sarko. Sarko, yeah. Sarko or Garrick yep. or someone. Yep. Garrick, yeah. Well, Garrick's in the centres, according to Timmy. Did you have him predicted centres? Yeah. Yeah. He'll play centres. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Wow. Um, all right. Next team. Next team. Gold Coast Titans. Last year, the Titans were sixth in attack. And they were 13th in defence. Their gains. Palacia, Harley Smith Shields. I think he might have gotten hotter. Seriously. Um, <laughs> that tan and the Gold Coast, it's working. It's working all right. Um, and also, way better jersey. Oh, my God. Uh, Close. Now, the Titans. I am super excited about the Titans this year. I think that under Desi Hasler, with the squad they've got, heaps, they've got depth, they've got a great young forward pack, they've got good solid outside backs, they've got so many fullbacks, I don't know what to do with them. I'm really, really excited for the um, Titans, and I think they can make the eight. I think they can make the eight this year. I really think they might be the biggest movers and shakers this year. Uh, I wouldn't say the biggest swing side, because I don't think that they're... I'd be surprised if they finished low on the ladder. But I will say, where did they finish last year? Like 12th or something, 13th? 14th. 14th. So I think they're going to probably be the biggest movers on the um, the ladder. Have you got those um, odds of who's, who is going to be the biggest mover? As yeah, we do. We've got, a, we've got a most improved market. So if you go there uh, to the most improved market, you're going to see a minus and then a number next to them. That number represents how many competition points they accrued last year. Mm. So that's effectively their handicap. Uh, so they've got to make that up and then improve on that to become yep. the winner. So Who's your fa biggest? Well, the, the favourites are the West Tigers, minus 14, $4.75. Great bet, I think. Uh, the Gold Coast Titans are minus 24. You're getting $11.50 for okay. them. So. I think they'll be the biggest movers. I'm super excited um, with the Titans. Uh, I cannot wait to see them run out. How are, you, how are you feeling about the Titans? Mate, every time I look at this Titans team, I go, they're going to make the eight. Mm. And then I look at all the other teams. <laughs> And I've got 14 top eight teams. Mm. Uh, you just can't fit them all in. Um, you know, you even have a look at, without having it in front of me, you know, the ladder. The teams between the Titans and the top eight include South Sydney, Parramatta, North Queensland. Now, three teams alone there that probably manly, if everyone's fit, the Dolphins are very impressive too. Like, it's just, it's just such a tough top eight to make. Mm. I think that they improved the Dolphins for sure. I love the signing of Titans. Desi Hasler. I, what did I say? Dolphins. Sorry, I love the Titans heading into this year. Getting Desi Hasler is huge. As I said, I think Holbrook was a little bit hard done by, but I get why the Titans made that decision. Um, as I said last year, it'll be very exciting. You said they got too many fullbacks. Desi, the fullback whisperer. Dally M's with Benny Barber. Dally M's with Tommy Turbo. I love they made a decision, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, Early out. Look, yeah. whether I agree with it or not, I still think Brimo's the best fullback of the club. At least a decision was made. At least we know what's happening. Yeah, rather yeah. than like, oh, we're going to carry Campbell on the bench, or we might try him at six. We might, like, they know what they're going in with. Yeah, and it'll be, yeah. I, I honestly, I hope that Campbell doesn't miss any footy this year because if we get a glimpse of this Keanu Keeney, it gets even more difficult. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then you look at their roster, like, Verrills has had a little bit of injuries, but if he can stay on the field, Palacia was outstanding in the grand final. Foto Waker had one of his better years. Didn't he win their player of the year last year? A feeder, outstanding. Um, 
statistically, if you go to Random Stats Guy, shout out Random Stats Guy, for Fida, um, according to Rando's um, formula, uh, <laughs> is the I think the 11th most impactful player in the competition, or I don't know, Latrell's the 11th, but he's up there. He's in the top 20. And keep in mind, you know, 18 months ago, Fafita wasn't the best second row at the club. It was both thermal. Who they get back? Well, yeah, it's it, what's crazy though is like everyone. You know, there was a year where Fafita was getting absolutely hammered in the media, but Rando stats guys, that's from the last three years. He averages them out with the <laughs> most recent years being you know more important. So it just shows you that although yes, the pay packet, blah blah blah, he's still been impactful for quite a long time now. Fafita at the Titans. Imagine him under Desi, Tino under Desi. Like that's exciting to me. How are you feeling about the the Titans, uh, Timmy? Much like Rue, I was like sort of over the sort of December, Jan, you think about your top eight or not, and I thought, yep, Titans, so much hype here, I like where they're going, I've got them in the top eight, and then I sat down and did it, and I'm like, jeez, I can't squeeze them in. And I love the hell roster, there's so much attacking upside to them, I just, if we're comparing him to the sides I do have in my eight, I looked at their spine and I went, Jaden Campbell, potentially a freak, there's no limits on him, but he's a small body, how will he hold up defensively? You know, he's, he's ousted AJ Brimson, who I'm like you, Kempi. I think Brimson should have been the fullback, but I love that the fact they've they've put Jaden there and said, it's you, mate. Um, Foz, brilliant last year. Pretty treacherous injury history, getting older. Tanner Boyd, very solid, solid at, at the moment. Uh, Sammy Verrills, another solid hooker. I'm just comparing that spine to some of the others. And someone like Parramatta, who I've got in the eight, their spine, and I go, I know who I prefer. That being said, mate, it's a great roster. There's a lot of potential in it. They're probably the one side I've got where I could have had them in fifth and I could have had them in 13th. I, I really wasn't sure where to put them. So you reckon they're, I mean, similar to what I was saying earlier, bigger swing side? Is, yes, yeah. yeah. I, I really struggled to line them up, positioning on the ladder. And then you throw in a new coach like Desi Hasler, who's been out of the NRL for a few years. What sort of brand of football is he going to place on them? So a lot of uncertainties, but a lot of excitement. Well, I look at, for example, I look at Manly. Look how much better of a side Manly was when Desi was a coach. I know they went through their dramas, but, like, I just think he's going to work his magic. The, this Titan side has always kind of... Holbrook, it was a good, solid coach, but they haven't really had a coach of Desi Hasler's calibre at the club before. Like, it's, it's a new territory for him at the moment. And defensively resolute, like, well, I think Desi can bring that to them. The Titans last season conceded, conceded yeah, the, the most points in the top 14. Mm. We know they can attack, never going to be a problem. So, yeah. if they, you know, it's the same story every, isn't it? If they can get their defence in order, mm. how far can this team go? Absolutely. How are you feeling on the Titans, Matty? I really, it's probably the most excited I've ever been for the Titans. Um, but at the same time, as Timmy just said, it, it's, it's so hard to, to place them because, yes, if they improve dramatically, they could still come 10th. But... This side, I look at it and I think this can definitely be a top eight side. So, yeah, I found it really, really hard to place them. Um, but, it, like, I know that they've been exci- like kind of exciting the last few years. I've never been more pumped to watch the Titans this year. I'm really keen for them. I, I agree. This is the most excited I've ever been for the Titans. I'd, for what they like, when you look at their spine, you compare it to some of the five, six, seventh, and eighth spines. For what they may lack, I just think Desi makes a difference. Huh? Mm. He, just, he just manages to pull the best out of players all the time. How, many, how are you feeling about the Titans? I'm the same as Matty. I think I'm very excited. Same as you guys. I think I'd love to see him in the eight, but how do you squeeze him in there with all those other great teams? The sports bet punters are very keen on them. They are the best backside to make the top eight at $4. The, wow. the punters really drawn to the value there uh, for them to squeeze in. And I think they're excited to see him play as well. I just worry a little bit about, we spoke about it a few weeks ago, Couple of guys who are fullbacks in different positions, out of position. How's that going to go for them? But look, they're going to be fun to watch, and uh, with that, with a bit of value on the table there, you know, fingers crossed they can scrape in. Um, now let's look at this roster. Let's look at this roster. Uh, let's start with. You know what? I'll leave that for you because I know you're a big fan, the Bo Formo. I'll leave that for you, Guru. Uh, a lot of people forget this guy was on the fringes of Origin, gets injured. Uh, actually, you know what? You take you take the charge. Sure. Um, <laughs> you sort of summed it up there, though. Like, he was unbelievable season. Was it 2022? Uh, as I said, and sound bizarre, but you go back to that season, he was the best second rower at the Gold Coast Titans. He was incredible. He was on the verge of origin, I think. He, did he get called into a yep. squad? Um, and it was a very well-deserved spot as well. Yeah, I think you have a look at that year, off the dome. I think like 11 tries for a back mm. rower, uh, which is an incredible knock. 
Runs like a robot too, which is cool. Proper runs like a robot. I robot. Really stiff. Loosen up, Russ. <laughs> what uh, <laughs> What edge do we see him playing? Because I'm so intrigued for not just super catch purposes, but just the makeup of this Titan side because lots changed. He did the majority of his damage in 2022 on the left edge. Dave Fafida, by his standards, didn't have the best season. Kieran Foran brought the best out in Dave Fafida last year and he was the best second rower in the game. Does Furmore return on the right and you keep Foz and Fafida together or do they put Furmore back outside? Well, oh, near, I like. think you definitely got to keep uh, Foz and Fafida together because I guess the question is, Furmore's best year compared to Fafida's best year like last year, yeah. I think Fafida's is much better. Yeah. Um, and I think that also... When I just just from vibe, a firm was the kind of guy that if he's not going to get much ball, he's still going to work his ass off. Like yeah. he's going to get through the shit stuff. He's going to be okay with all right. I've got no good ball, but I took fifteen hit ups and I did did all my. Whereas like, Fafita can do that for sure. He can do that, but that's not what he's for. Like that'd be crazy to sit him out on an edge and not get the ball. Uh, and so yeah, I think you keep Fafita and Foz together. Isn't it funny with Fafita how twelve months ago sat here and chatted about him and like we. We don't necessarily want him to be doing all the flashy plays and all the attacking brilliance and all that. We just want to see him roll the sleeves up and get through his 16 to 20 runs a game. And he did that, mm. like emphatically ticked that box. Now it's almost like, as you said, don't need to overwork him. Yeah. Get him fresh. Get him that 15 runs yeah. a game, Mark. It's, yep. it's almost circling back a little bit. Yeah. Um, because he was so brilliant last year. I'm with you, mate. I'd keep him left outside falls. Don't fix what ain't broken. Uh, yeah, another key, Sam Berrells. I, I in and out of first grade, few injuries here or there. If he can just, you know, we talked about Wade Egan at the Warriors. That's one thing that you need the combinations, especially a combination that hasn't really played that much footy together. Uh, you need them on the field together all the time. And so a key for the Titans, if they can get Sam Verrills on the field for most of the year, it's just going to be better service for Foran, better service for Tanner Boyd, um, and obviously Campbell as well. Whereas if he's in and out of first grade, Sometimes you almost need to, it's, it's similar to the Metcalf situation. Obviously, Verrills is further along in his career, but you almost need to make that tough call of, I just need to see you on the field for a bit before we lock you in as the nine and maybe you put someone else there. I know they probably won't do that because Verrills, it's a little bit of a different situation, but it is a key that they keep that combination together as much as possible. 100%. Hmm. Yep. Uh, now, Philip Sammy. Honestly, on a, nearly unlucky to not make Queensland last year. I thought he was so good last year on the edge there. One of those, like, almost a pest of a player where if you're the opposition, somehow, some way, he's breaking tackles every time he runs the ball, but he doesn't get enough raps for it. So it's not like, you know, when you're going up against Toto, you know that he is, um, like, going to be a nightmare. Whereas Sammy, I feel like he flies on the radar. Could you get his stats up for the last season? He was outstanding last year. So you lock him on an edge, you've got, um, you got Brimo. Then you look at the other centres, Harley Smith Shields come to the club, who probably, I don't know if he'll start. But I mean, you've even got Ken Mamalo in reserve grade sitting there. Like, they've got depth with their outside backs. If Philip Sammy was on the left edge of Khan Pereira, he would score about 30 tries because he is so elite. But the left edge of the Titans gets so much ball that Sammy sort of has to go and do a lot of the dirty work and go looking for his ball. Whereas on the left edge with Foz and Fafita and that, it just goes. Yeah. Uh, 11 tries, 13 line breaks, average around 170 metres a game. And how many tackle breaks? Uh, tackle breaks and all dot com have wiped it. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> How good. <laughs> Shit. There was a lot. Last year's stats are heaps outdated anyway. Yeah, so stuff it. Like, it's not like we're trying to fucking promote the game or anything. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> On uh, their outside backs, obviously, Carl Pierre, as a guy I spoke about a lot last preseason, um, ended up scoring 20 tries in 23 games. Had his downfalls, but had a very good season. There's another kid in this squad, Tony Francis, who hasn't debuted yet. Um, and it's obviously a hard back line to get into. You've got Jojo Fafita. You've got Harley's very hard back yeah. to get into. He and recently got, uh, Aaron Shop as well. Got Aaron still, Shop. Yep, yeah. still there. Uh, Tony Francis recently re-signed the other day. He's uh, playing for the Bears in reserve grade last year. Uh, twenty-two games, twenty-one tries, seventy-six tackle breaks, nineteen line breaks. A winger as well. Average one hundred and fifty run meters. So another one to keep an eye on there. Tony Francis. Very very exciting. This is this is exciting. Tino, Bottlewaker. Like that's who you're starting with in the front row. 
That, that is, that's top tier. Now, have they got the same runs on the boards? Like Tino, to a degree, has because of origin. Have they got the same runs on the board as guys that have been to grand finals or not? Maybe not, but I don't think that's their ability that stopped them. It's more just they're at the Titans at the moment that are kind of in a build phase. But both these guys are like 23, 24. Like they're super young. They're going to be together for at least another few years. I'm, I'm excited. The only part of their forward pack that I'm a bit iffy on is the 13. I just don't know if Isaac Liu is a good 13. I think that he's better as a bench man coming on and filling in um, uh, some holes. I don't know why. I don't know why they haven't done it. I hope Desi does do it. But I would have Aaron Clark at 13. I don't know why Hobbrook didn't do it. Yeah, I think Aaron Clark is the obvious choice at 13 there. Uh, he played a couple of games there, end of 21, Timmy, or 22? 22, I reckon. 22, yeah, and he Killed looked it. really good there. Yeah, looked really good. Imagine him with a whole preseason there. Yeah, and I agree with you. I, I don't think Isaac Liu is a 13. I think he's a middle forward. Mm. Um, and I mean, you know, you go back and have a look to the – I've said a number of times, the Roosters – Everything turned when they won those two premiers. They moved him into the middle, Radley to 13. I think that uh, Aaron Clark could play a very similar role. Mate, the other guy I want to give a rap to who, you know, you mentioned that sometimes Tino and uh, Mo don't get the attention they should, mate. Jermaine Joliffe. I really like him. Yeah, he was bloody good. Because he was injured for a little bit, came back and started injured. playing some good footy, didn't just, he? He's not a... Not a superstar, but he just almost Jensen, does his Jensen job. Ish. Very Jensen esque. Yeah. Yes. And, and Titans fans obviously watch him closer than anyone naturally. They all love him. Mm. Yeah. Anyone you speak to, Titans fans love Jolif. Um, think about this a Gold Coast Titans side. Now, I know they had Luke Bailey in a really good forward pack when they started coming to the comp, and they obviously didn't sign Young Beak, but it's all right. Don't worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> um, so. Moe or Tina gets tied. Tina doesn't get tied, but Moe or Tina gets tied. It gets replaced by Palacia. When was the last time you saw a Titan side with a forward rotation like that? Because Palacia, he's, he's gone to a grand final against a Penrith Panthers pack and played extremely well. Because you get his stats up and for his minutes, because it was unbelievable what he did. Like, that's not nothing. That's not nothing. He was a key ingredient in that Broncos forward pack that led them into a grand final. That is super, super exciting. And also, what it does is it relieves a bit of pressure on Tino because for too long now, Tino's eyeballs nearly fallen out of his head. He's that fatigued from take, making a 1,000 tackles and doing a 1,000 runs. Now Keenan can take that pressure load off him because I actually think Tino has a lot of attacking upside, but you don't see it as much because he's forced to do all the bullshit. Keenan can take that load off his shoulders. Yep, completely agree. And it's it'll be really, really interesting with uh, Desi Hasler. Like, when you look back at... The way that he had that manly side a couple of years ago. Jack Trevojevic at one point was the best ball playing 13 in rugby league. Mm. And then Desi just took the rug from under him, didn't he? Completely changed his role. So I, I reckon he will make a move away from Isaac Liu. Change that around a little bit. Um, mate, I'm just so excited to see this Titan side. With new rules coming in and all that. And Des already going a little bit rogue with his position selections. I can't wait to Could see you? what he pulls out of the hat. I feel like you've left Des Hasler in a dark room for too long. And he's just <laughs> ready to come out and wow us all. What about... Tino at 13 and a starting of Fodawaka and Palacia. That's a pretty hectic starting pack. Why not? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty scary. What was his stats in the grand final? So, he played 38 minutes. He made 150 metres, which is the exact same as Payne Haas, and only second to Carrigan out of the Broncos pack, and made 20 tackles. In th how many metres? Mi minutes? Minutes, 38. Oh, so that's in a grand final. That's what he did. That's, mm. that's his ceiling. Like, and look, obviously Tino and... You know, Maui at the moment are more progressing in their career. Haven't done that in a grand final. Now, you know, the Tino's done it in, in Q Cup, but they, but they haven't. Like, it's just the truth. Now, again, I, I'm put Tino and Maui ahead of him, but I'm just saying that that's, that's not a small thing. It's not a small thing to do that in a grand final and be a part of the Broncos four pack like that. Um, really interesting Carl Pereira's development as a player. Uh, if I'm being honest, I thought last year he wasn't ready for first grade at the start of the year. I know we spoke about it. I, I have to admit, I was probably wrong by the end of the year. I think that he really, you know, he had his downfalls. He was, uh, he was risk averse or the opposite. He didn't care about risk. He was, he would kick when he passed. It didn't matter. But that was part of his magic as well. That's yeah. why he scored so many tries. So I, I'm really keen and excited to see him under Desi Hasler uh, with a bit more. Apparently, he's put on like 10 kilos. I don't actually like hearing that. I wish it was more like five kilos. But apparently, he's put on a bit of weight. He says he's kept his speed. Um, so let's hope he has, because the last thing you want is a guy like Khan Pereira 
losing his agility and his speed off the mark just because he put on an extra 10 kilos. I've said this a thousand times on the podcast. When I was coming through, the amount of coaches that were like, we need you 10 kilos heavier, and I would do it because the coach told me to do it. But I was never going to be breaking a thousand tackles with my strength. I would. The only way I'm going to break tackles is with footwork and speed. And I don't. And I think coaches are starting to see that now. And I just hope with Carl Pereira, they realise that as well. If you put 10 kilos on him, all you're going to make him is a solidly strong-ish winger that finds his front in contacts a little bit more. You know what you might lose? One of the fastest, most explosive outside backs in the competition. So I hope that that's what they do this year for yeah, him. Can be your speed got you to the NRL and Carl Pereira's speed got him to the NRL. And as you said, if they take even an ounce of that away from him, still bloody quick, but they take away what makes him such, such a special player. Mm. You know, he's still young. He'll grow his body a bit. He'll naturally put on a bit of weight. And yeah, sure, p- put a few kilos on him. But they, they can't rip it away from him. Because I said before, Sammy, if he played on the left edge, he could score 30 tries this year. Khan Pereira with a full season and a bit more experience, he could score 40 if yeah, the Titans mate. click. So exciting. I think the way that they used that left edge last year, and it might change under, under Desi too, but the way that you saw Fafita start to ball play a little bit, mm. and I want Khan Pereira to be as quick as he can be and holding that paint all day. Because yeah. you, you can't give him any room. You have to. Everyone right. has to slide out. And, it just, and if I'm Fafita and falls, I'm going, how good's this? It's, it's like... Mate, you're an old school winger. You're fast as anything, and you're good. You're a good finisher. Meters out of our own end. Yes, okay. Take your excuse when you have to. We got other players that can get through that shit work, or, or at the very least, we should be recruiting or getting players that can do that. And that's why Brian Kelly, great scooter out of his own end. Philip Sammy, great mm. scooter out of his own end. We know Brimo can scoot as well. So like they can take those tougher carries if they have to. We spoke about this the other day, Super Coach Wise. Which side would you play Brimo on? Do you just stack that left edge or? Um, you got Brian Kelly it there. It just depends defensively. Okay. I, th- I think that I would l- I'll be looking at Brian Kelly's defense and Brimo's defense, and if Brian Kelly is a notable good defender, which actually I think he does have some poor reads sometimes, I wouldn't be putting a guy that has poor reads with Carm Pereira. So mm. I'd be looking at Brimo and going, okay, Brimo and him is that experience with such a rookie is probably more valuable having him there. So that does sound like I'm stacking the left side, but in reality, what I'm doing is I'm putting an experienced player next to a rookie. Yep. Um, and also, I think Brian Kelly, I love his scoots out of his own end. So almost left side is our attacking side, right side is our coming out of our own end side. Also, if you're looking at, looking at it through a defensive lens, uh, on that left edge with Kieran Forum, again, one of the best defensive halves in the game. Mm will be massive for Kelly because he does have occasionally defensive lapses, his poor reads, so being with Foz is huge. Also, I cannot wait to see how AJ Brimson is unleashed because he's not going to be your typical centre. Yeah. Not a chance. It's not his game. It's a waste to have him there. He will roam. He'll go across the park. So I'm, in, I'm envisioning a little bit like even what Turbo did in Origin last year and what we've seen sort of Joey Manu do at times for the Roosters where, you know, Stationed on the right side and just going over that left just as another sweeping ball player. Imagine that already that left edge there plus Brimson chiming in on that as well. Scary. A little bit off topic. What weight were you when you came into first grade? When I had 82 kilos. 82, 82 to 84. Like I'd start the year about 84. And then so Wayne was really good. Like he was just like, if you're good enough, yep. you're in there. And then Ivan Henjak was pretty good too. Uh, Hook was very... Uh, um, aggressive at putting on weight yeah um you'd even get fined if you didn't hit your weight targets um so and it just was too much like i started getting hamstring like my body is not made for mm, to yeah. be you know 88 90 kilos i was just having a look there Carl Pierre is listed at the moment at 86. so he's listed so he may have put more than that on mm. since he's been listed Quite see possibly. i, I want to keep him around 85 max mm. maximum 85. um so, but I, I think a lot of coaches it's actually come full circle now Whereas it used to be the trend of put weight on, put weight on, put weight on, like just making big. Your, your brother would have been through it, Timmy, with coaches just put weight on. Oh put yeah, weight yeah, on. yeah, yeah. It's incredible. I've I've used this example in the past, but I've I've used Anthony Milford Raiders back when he burst onto the scene. Go to YouTube, look at his highlights package. It is something to behold. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. Milf at fullback, and he was really small, and they just put weight on him, put weight on him, turned him into a five eight. You know, he was terrific at 5'8", went to a grand final. But Milf at fullback, 
his career could have been twice as good if they kept him there and it that way because it, it was freakish. Yeah. I remember watching Milford the first time I saw him live. I remember walking away from camera stadium going, he could be the greatest player ever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mate, I thought he was going to be an immortal. But I didn't feel stupid about it at all. Like there was a period there where I was like, if this guy keeps playing like this, he'll be an immortal. Like, he yeah. was that good. And you alluded to Kempi tackle busting and how tackle busting wasn't about size. Mm. It was about your speed and you did off the back of that. Milford and another Raiders example in Josh Dugan, who early in his days when he played fullback, and he was, he was never small. He was always rangy and lean. But mm. there, there wasn't a lot of weight on him as such. He put sort of weight on as he got bigger throughout his career. But so much... Tackle busting just off being an athlete and a mover mm. and no one being able to touch him. It wasn't just because he was twice the size of everyone. Yeah. You don't, especially at fullback, where you might make three tackles a game. Sure, your online defense comes into it a little bit, but what you bring in attack by being that little bit smaller and quicker, I just, I hate when they do it to fullbacks in particular. Yeah, I agreed. Totally agreed. Um, okay, Titans, I've got them seventh to 11th. Yeah, I've got them 8th to 12th. I've got them in 12th, and I'm going to go 9th to 12th, though. Okay. I'd love to see them make the 8. I think they can, but realistically, if I had to pick, I got them 10th to 12th. I've got them in the 9 to 12 window. Okay. Well. Okay. Yeah. Um, all righty. Now we're on to South Sydney. <gasps> glory, glory, or a tragic ballad. Oh, shut up, man. <laughs> Uh, okay, attacking stats. The Rabbitohs finished 10th. Defensive stats. The Rabbitohs finished... I'm trying to find them here. Jesus, what's going on here? Can you boys see it? They finished 5th. That's my bad. I wrote South in one and Rabbitohs oh, in the okay. other. That's completely my bad. Yeah, <laughs> okay. 5th um, in defence. <laughs> you know what's bizarre is like you would have thought that would have been flipped. You would have thought 5th in def- attack. You sure would have. Um, maybe their starter season... Like scary, s- scary for 2024. Okay. Attack can only get better and their defence is good. Yep. Okay, South Sydney. Last year, we've all been through it. We've spoken about it. Off-field, clearly dramas, clearly two different kind of factions in the club believing that the, the road to a victory of, of winning the season, um, a different way of getting there. That's all sorted now. They're fully backed, Demetrio. Uh, heading into this year, you know, signings of Whiten, Kepi, uh, they've lost Cartwright, Knight, uh, Sele, Taff, and Carlo Carlo. I'm extremely excited for the Rabbitohs, but they truly are one of those sides where you go, you have. To, there's always going to be a caveat of, as long as the off-field stuff is sorted, they can win the comp. So let's just assume that the off-field stuff is sorted because we're never going to know until we get halfway through the year. When you look at this squad... When you look at the recruits I've got, when I mean, I love the Kepi recruitment. When you look at, you know, Lachlan Ilias, I know he had a quiet year last year, but he's got another year under his belt. you got Munro coming through. you got Talis Duncan. Uh, Cam Murray's in his third year as a captain. Like, this squad is primed to win a premiership. And anything less than a top four with this squad, if, as long as they stay injury-free, in my opinion, is a disappointing season. The closer we get to season 2024, the more I think that 2023 might be one of South Sydney's great strengths. Mm. Because if they don't shit the bed and they don't get their pants pulled down and get the microscope on them, they go to a prelim, they lose, more of the same. They finish in the top four. You can't can't really go too heavy on them. They've done well. They failed massively in 2023. And I'm starting to wonder if it could just be a huge wake-up call. The Broncos. Mate, exactly right. Mm. How embarrassed were the Broncos a couple of years ago? And South Sydney aren't at that point, but... I know that like, South Sydney fans out there are absolutely fuming with what played out last year. I know that Cam Murray was beside himself at the end of last year. I think it just lights a new fire coming into this season. And, you know, if you look back to this time last year, South Sydney were moving from Heffron over to Redfern. They had all the videos. It was all shiny and fantastic and nice. Led to absolutely nothing. Mm. Led to disappointment for them. Uh, I think it's a really good opportunity for JD to reset his team's goals and... I'd come out with a point to prove, not just make another prelim final. Really go for a bounce back this season. Well, as I said in the, the Bloke Chronicles season preview, what I love about the Jackie Whiten signing, we all know what he's going to deliver on the field most likely. We all know that, the physical stuff he's going to bring. 
he signed for unders to win a comp now. Not in three years, not in five years, not hopefully. He is saying, I could have got way more money at another club. I could have been comfortable, stayed in Canberra. I could have squeezed him for every dime. No, no, I'm here to win a comp. And that sends a message to the rest of the playing group, especially because you know Latrell. I mean, they're so close, they had a little baby wrestle together, baby. <laughs> I mean, that's premiership written all over it. Blokes wrestling each other at a pub, stop it. Um, so you know how close they are. Cody Walker is close with him too. So with two key players like Cody Walker and Latrell Mitchell in the squad, they wouldn't want to let him down either. Like, I'm sure the conversations they had with Jackie before he came to the club was, mate, if you come, we can win a comp. And so you don't want to let your mate down. And then, then that filters down to the rest of the squad. Because although Cam Murray is the captain, and absolutely rightly so, you know, Latrell and Cody are locker room leaders. You know, these are guys are larger than life players and superstars. And so with, with, that, with that being said, those two guys filter that message down to the rest of the playing group of it's premiership or bust this year. Yeah, and you have a look at, you know, the two experienced guys in this side, Cody Walker, Damien Cook, both signed to 2025. I'm not sure if either play beyond that season. Mm. So Jack arriving now to win a premiership, there's a window there that's closing, I think, because they're going to have, like, it's mm. going to change a lot after. And I mean, they signed Pete Mamazellis the other day for three years. That's that's putting the bat, bat signal in the air that Damien Cook's career is coming to an yeah. end. Um, the next two years are very important for the South Sydney Rabbitohs. So this is a predicted 17. I'm going to add Jackie yep. Whiten in, assuming, like just pretending that yep. he would be playing. Um, okay. Timmy's predicted uh, 17 is Latrelli Mitt, so that's LM. Uh, Tyrone <laughs> Munro. Uh, Jack Whiten, I assume you have it. Jackie at three. Jackie yeah. at three. Gamp Campbell, Graham at uh, four. Alex Johnston at five. Walker, Ilias, Kepi starting. Interesting. Damien Cook at nine. To Tola at 10, Keon Kolomatangi 11, 12 Jai Arrow, Kier Murray at 13, uh, Havili 14, Talis Duncan, Moali, Tommy Burgess at 17. Um, really, really interesting that you had Kepi starting. I am super excited to see their front row rotation because the great Shaq Mitchell, I thought he was quite good for them last year. I thought he improved out of sight. He was actually one of their better forwards for a period there when they were struggling. And... I wonder whether Tom Burgess starts the game because of his experience and you give him that first 20 because because they have that extra person he kept becoming in, maybe they can afford to go, all right, Burgess, we'll give you the first 20, we'll bring you off and then we'll see how the game goes. Whereas without Kepi, it's like, oh, we kind of need Burgess to play longer minutes and we, don't, we can't let react to the game. Um, their front row rotation, before they signed Kepi, I was a little bit iffy on. Now the fact they've signed Kepi, You've got Moali as well, who's only 22 or so years old. I'm really excited to see this front row. What do you reckon, Timmy? Yeah, the, the team largely picks itself in the two spots that you alluded to there. One of the front row spots and Jai Arrow on the edge. I obviously picked this team heavily in conjunction with Matty the Waterboy. And I think I initially had Burgess starting too, but he, he sort of said that Burgess... Had, back in a lot of last season was coming off the bench and they'll probably go with that again. And then the other one was... Is Talis Duncan ready to start on the edge? And it's interesting because Jai Arrow, who played so much middle last year, Talis Duncan in short snippets looked terrific and is more of an edge back rower. With their issues in the middle in the past 12 to 24 months, potentially got Jai Arrow playing on an edge now. So you can probably throw to Maddie for more on it because I know he's a massive Talis fan and wants him on the edge. But how do you see it, Maddie? Yeah, if it's up to me, uh, I'd have Jai Arrow starting prop in the middle with um, Totola and then. Uh, Tommy Burgess coming off the bench and then the rest of the boys can fight it out. But, yeah, maybe it is. Is it too early to start Talis Duncan on I the edge? I reckon it's a little bit too early yeah, to start Yeah, it, it possibly is. And also, Talis Duncan, like, he's he's like a... He could be a Cam Murray clone type situation. So mm. if he's coming off the bench, giving Cam Murray a bit of a reprieve in the middle, maybe that's where he does his best work in the middle. So I think that's the way they're going to go, Jairo um, on the edge. But, yeah, if it was up to me, if it was like... I think he's a stronger middle, personally. Um, but maybe that's what's best for the team, him to play edge. I don't mind Jai Arrow on the edge because what it can do is is you can give Cam Murray a rest on the edge at times, bring Jai Arrow in at 13 and play like a third front rower and get through the... Because like, that's uh, like the one reason I'd assume Arrow doesn't like playing on the edge because he loves that shit. He loves being in there, taking the tough carries, doing the tough stuff. And we spoke about it last year, but... And, you know, some people were a bit like, oh, come on, Kempe, he struggled on the edge under Wayne. But then we saw how well he played on the edge for Australia. I just want Kim Murray on the edge because 
it's it's similarish to the hooker argument of I don't want him working himself to a standstill every single game. I just don't know how you can keep that up for the next ten years of your career. It, similar to the um, Jake Trevojevic situation, Cam Murray has so much to offer in attack. Mm. You don't want to dull the blade by making him doing the shit stuff. We know he does the shit stuff. That's what makes him so great. But there are other players in this team that don't offer as much in attack that can do the shit stuff so that he can be at his most, at his best version of himself when the attacking stuff needs to happen. Um, I agree with you guys about Talos Duncan that maybe it is a little bit too soon. I want to see him in the back row, uh, but he might, might be a little bit too raw. I'm okay with starting Jair on the edge, but I would have a plan that by come finals time, I get another 15, 20 games under the belt of Talos Duncan, and by that point, he'd be ready to start Because then your the forward pack becomes stacked. Then um, you get Jaya yeah. into the middle. Yeah. If Talos Duncan can hit the heights that we're hoping of and expecting of him, it was last year, didn't he make like line breaks off t- twice off the kickoff or something? It was I, ridiculous. I, I think he can start on an edge round one. Wait, yeah. I genuinely think he can. So you, you would start him on the edge? I, I would, but I... I understand where you guys are coming from that maybe is too raw and maybe it is too much too early. Um, take Jackson Ford, for example. We spoke about him, you know, the first 10 weeks. We're going, oh, my God, he's braining it in the second row. We got to round 20. Because, like, the way I would see it, and I know you're already alluding to this, if you're here to win a comp, you want Talos Duncan peaking yes. when the grand final. Which is why I'd be more than happy to start with Jaya on the edge. Yep. But they plan to Talos Duncan, hey, get f- another 15 games under your belt, preparing yourself, because... When Origin's done, we want you starting on that edge. Guru, it's a rare occasion where I agree with you, and I, I, I do agree. <laughs> I want to see Talis Duncan on the edge for sure. Oh, I prefer Jai Arrow as a middle. You know, we've said that they've had you know a bit weak through the middle in recent years. I love Arrow to solidify that. Obviously, it's pressure on Talis Duncan to deliver, but from what we've seen so far, he can definitely do that. So, but for all those reasons you boys listed in the longevity of the season, a young bloke, you know, you don't have to rush him into it. In the Sydney Roosters junior, I believe, Talis Duncan, so yep. the Bunnies poached him. Did he did he shred through juniors and kill it? Or? Yeah, he was like very young, Harold Matson and all that. He was, I'm not sure if you remember, but there was a big highlights package that came out of him putting on monster hits a couple oh. of years ago. That was from Roosters. Uh, is he, is he named after Talis, Gordon Talis? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Al Dente. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's rugby league, baby. It is. That's rugby, rugby league. Um, How good would it be when we have Talos and Lazarus running around? Oh, stop it. Stop it. Uh, another, what's exciting as well, for we've already got the big names in the Rabbitoh side, but if Mowali and Talos Duncan hit their straps this year, then all of a sudden it turns into like genuine 1 to 17 premiership, ready to go. Like then you've got Mamazolas coming through that he could win that 14 jersey by the end of the year. I would actually even see how he goes in the trials and maybe he does pip Havili to get that 14 jersey. Now, right now, if I was going to select a side, at a, probably just a safe, a safe bet, you'd put Havili there just from his defensive, because you know defensively he's going to be strong. Um, whereas if he goes well in the trials and that rotation with Cook really works, it's like imagine a world where uh, Mama Zealous opens up a new dimension to Cookie. You know what I mean? Like, imagine that happens. Yep. Then all of a sudden, Cookie goes back to... You know, I wouldn't say back to, because he's still been good. Like, But a few years ago, where his running game was unbelievable. Um, if he could go back to that, because he has someone that could come on and help him, that's huge. Now, he really could do that, maybe. I, but, I, I, yeah. don't, I don't think... And it's, it's a shame for poor old Sneaky Pete, but I don't think he's the right move for 14 when you've got Havili. Mm. I just think, like... He covers like, how many minutes is Mamazelos going to play at 14 and, and like play off the bench anyway when you've got the origin number nine in Damien Cook there? Like he might come on and play 20 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. It could be super effective, don't get me wrong, but you've got Havili who can already do that and be another very handy middle forward for them. Mm. I just don't think you need Mamazelos. And I think it's, it's not harsh on him. It's just the way I, I think he's the best makeup for that bench. Yeah, fair. I honestly think Havili is one of the most underrated players in this comp, mm. what he does. Like, when he comes on, um, they can't put him on his back. Mm. They can't tackle him. He's got offloads left, right and centre. He can jump in at nine. I agree with you. I think them signing Mamazelos on a three-year deal might signal that he could get that 14 mm, jersey. He might. But if I was picking this team, I would have Havili just because he offers so much. Yeah, you, I, think it, I think it's my 
bias towards two hookers. Like, I froth it so hard. Like, just yeah. seeing what Benny Hunt and Grant did and the craftiness around hooker for 80 minutes. Like, for 80 minutes, you've got to deal with a top-tier hooker. But I, as I said, I get where he's coming from. Havili, he's, he's uh, versatile. He can play anywhere in the forwards, essentially. Offers a very different type of game than Pete Wood uh, and also Cookie. Um, I think it's a decision you can't go wrong with. You're, you're really Either good. Because yeah. yeah. you're building towards a future Great in Great problem to have. Yeah. Um, and it, what it does is it puts pressure on Havili that before it was kind of like who else can have that 14 jersey? Like it's, it's basically he's got a mortgage on it. Now it's like you have a few bad games and we're going to try the youngster. youngster. We've got every reason to try mm. him, so, which is going to bring the best out in Havili. The best out in him. Look at more of depth. To at the back line and Jack White and coming in, Isaiah Tass isn't going to get a run. He will win Jack's, while Jack's suspended, but Isaac Thompson has shown plenty of promise. It is it is an incredible roster. Are we are we fully... I mean, I know that the pretty, Rabbitohs have pretty much already come out and said that he's going to play centre, but are we fully sold that you wouldn't put Jackie Boy on an edge? Oh, I've been sold since day one. Yeah? Yeah. As in, you don't like it? Yeah, I'm, he's a centre for me. Centre? Centre? Oh, I still see the upside in him playing back row, but they've basically said he's centre, so I've kind of... Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I, I just... I'd love to see it. Just give oh, him four I'd love or five to games. See it. Yeah. Because... Uh, yeah. Do you think Munro is a, is a guarantee over Tass on no. that sting? No. Okay. I'd go Tass. you go when, Tass? When Jack's back available. Oh, well... To, uh, Jack's back round three? Yeah. Yeah, well, I think I would still go Tass once he returns on that wing. Really? I'd give Tyson... Yeah. Uh I love Ty, as you guys all know. He's got a lot of upside, but I think they need to be patient with him. Yeah. There was a lot of things in his game last year that he's still got to improve on. The one thing I will... Yeah, like, you, you do then have... You've got pretty small wingers in Alex Johnston and if they go with Munro, and the trail's not known for necessarily tons and tons of yardies coming out of your own end, so I, I do get it there. Um, I'm not locked into Munro. I would go Munro. I would be saying uh, <laughs> Munro and Talis Duncan, our plan is for finals... You're both on the starting side. Okay. We need to work you towards okay, that. Okay, so though. work you towards that, that kind of season. And I'd be saying thing. to Isaiah Tass, we've got him in mind. Let's see what you can do. Um, speaking of that, Timmy, if there is one weakness in this side, and they make up for it a bit with Campbell Graham and if Jackie's on the field, just coming out of their own end, don't have the same punch as some of the top, top tier clubs, you know, like obviously Panthers, Broncos to a degree. Um, but Campbell Graham and Jackie White at their best can probably make up for that. On paper, I completely agree with you, but it seemingly has never been an issue for them. Because yeah, they're just so silky when they yeah, get the, like, like they can create space without the physicality. Like, like AJ's <laughs> gonna, you know, probably finish this season the greatest try scorer we've ever seen. He's not great coming out of his own end, and it seemingly has never mattered. We all, yeah. you know, everyone wants to give shit to Latrell because he doesn't come out of his own end. Who's doing it? Yeah, they're managing to get out of there. Well, I swear, Campbell Graham. I feel like he takes bloody twenty yeah, hit up. The Campbell Graham's an absolute maniac. Jack's going to be sensational, and I, I like Tass out of his own end too. Tass is great out of yeah. his own end. Great. So that might actually pip him over time. I think it'll initially. be a big. Yeah. Um, what do you reckon, Hammy, about the the uh, the Rabbitohs? Well, the the partner's actually pretty keen on the Rabbitohs okay. uh, this year. Last year, obviously, they were they're in what first spot after about ten rounds, and then mm. just fell off a cliff. Um, they're the second best back team to win the minor premiership at, at twelve bucks. Panthers number one. No, no, nah. really. In fact, we've we've already oh, covered Roosters. the other team. Nah, it is early. There's obviously a few weeks to go. The Warriors at eighteen dollars actually the best back. That's going to be a country because they got a country. Oh, that's back what on. I think. That's, yeah. that's my thinking there. But um, there's a little bit of interest around uh, around the bunnies. Nine the Warriors bucks, to win the minor prem. That's crazy. Nine bucks to win the the comp. The bunnies as well. Uh, that would be arguably, if they win the minor premiership. That's the greatest thing ever in rugby league. That would be fucking right so good. The Warriors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Warriors. Yeah. Bunnies are nine bucks to win the comp. They are. That's yep. a lot of value. Hey, Hammy, um, Timmy just asked me what's AJ for top try score for South Sydney. Uh, <laughs> for South Sydney, dollar mm. twenty-five. One of uh, so there you go. that's right in your sort of you. hitting zone there, Timmy. <laughs> Actually, Timmy asked me as well, what's Raiders to win the spoon? <laughs> well, we're getting there. Getting there for Raiders. <laughs> Hammy, what's our guru to get a black eye? <laughs> <laughs> Market suspended. <laughs> 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 uh, but top top. Try score for the comp. Um, he's seven dollars there, AJ, and we know he's you know he's got a very good strike rate there as well. So okay. look, I, I think me personally, I think they get back into the eight. Um, don't think they can win the comp. Don't think they win the minor premiership. But uh, yeah, there's a few. Be interesting to see how much Jack White impacts his try scoring this year. As far mm. as Jack being just, if I've got Jack, I want him just to run the fucking yeah. ball. Um, but you might find that because Jack's so dangerous, there he draws in more players. Does Campbell go to the other up. side, maybe? 
Could, no, could you see I, him swapping? I reckon they'll want him on Cody's edge. Yeah. I think they'll stat that left edge. And there's also going to be, at the end of this season, there could be one of the all-time... Like, Jackie Wine's defensive highlights, there's going to be... The highlight reel could be enormous. Oh, because yeah. when he's flying in from centre to shut down a backline yeah. movement, he oh. is going to wail on some poor oh. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's um, what's uh, Jackie White getting... What's he paying to get suspended for six weeks? <laughs> Depends how... I mean, I'm sure he'll be hungry for this season <laughs> once again. Um, <laughs> but you laughed at that last year, Matty. Why are you laughing at that? <laughs> hey, uh, what, what can I get for Campbell Graham? Top try scorer for South Sydney. 13 bucks. Okay, okay. Um, uh, another person we've got to speak about just quickly. Lockie Elias. Mm. In for a huge... Well, he's got to have a huge year. I think that they're... Would be a little bit of pressure with Hawking. Um, is it Haw- it's Hawking or Hawkins? Hawkins. Hawkins. Footy Dane. Um, <laughs> um, I think that uh, you know winning the Interstate Cup and the New South Wales Cup, uh, leading his team to doing that, I think that would put a bit of pressure on Ilias after having um, a quiet year. Now, yep. to be fair, Ilias has led a team to a prelim, so in the NRL. Uh, but with both players being so young, it's the argument of well, Lockie Ilias is. So young, we've got the next 10 years with him, so maybe we'll take some quiet performances because we're looking towards the future. Well, Hawkins is also young, so that argument kind of goes out the window. So the first 10 rounds are going to be really telling us to where they may end up, Ilias and Hawkins, by the end of the year. And I also think there's another guy in the squad that's going to become really relevant over the next few years, Jai Gray, mm. who I reckon will, could be the best out of all three of them. So Half we're in back. a good little spot. Halfback 5'8". Yeah, a bit of a and smaller body. And they've also body. got the Tongan... Yeah, they got Dion as well. Dion yeah, as well. Development, so they are in a very good spot as far as halves go. South Sydney, far out. Very exciting. Um, I've got them top four. Yeah, three to six for me. I've got them second. So we'll, yeah, we'll go oh. top four. Uh, I've got them three to six. Uh, they're my second flatly five to eight. Okay, yep. second flatly. Five the other, to the eight. other one on it. I think four guys to play in. He stays fit. His bromance with Jackie White and brings out the best of him. Latrell Mitchell, Dalliam, huge chance. Oh, what's he playing? Can you get that all? We'll keep Can't bet on the Dalliam. Oh, because of some idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Got to ruin the party for everyone, you know? Apologies. When the it wasn't me, I wasn't here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when Trell is in a good mood and in wasn't, form. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> like we were sitting here going, bloody hell, honey. <laughs> you ruined the Dalliam. <laughs> Despite there being stars across this lineup, which often doesn't lend itself well to Dalian votes because they're so shared, when the trail's on, he racks up just three after three, or nowadays six after six after six. Mate. So he could be Dalian medal winner. Oh, if he stays injury free this year, <laughs> stop the press. Stop the press. Um, okay, Rabbitohs, done and deuced. Um, let's get on to the Newey Knights. Newcastle Knights. Oh, for the Knights. What a year it was for the Newcastle Knights last year. Uh, start of the year, it looked like absolute panic stations. Um, people playing different positions, trading players, and, you know, now those players aren't even at the club anymore. But against all odds, so much didn't go the Knights' way. Like, you know, I feel like some of the other teams that had good years, a lot went their way. Whereas the Knights were in a u- unique position where Everything didn't go their way. Star player goes down, looks like he's retiring. It was in a position he wasn't supposed to, well, you know, we don't believe he should have been playing. All the stuff, we all know that. They found a way, somehow, some way, to pull it all together. What I love for the Knights heading into this year is the fact that, oh, look, Adam O'Brien's come out and said that the halves isn't settled. You know, he's, he hasn't fully selected who's going to be six or seven. But for the most part, it feels like the first time in a, a while their, their roster is settled. Like, you've got a clear indication of where it's headed, who's going to be the guy in key positions. Um, whereas heading into years before, you know, Braley goes down, who goes to nine? Uh, we're getting Lockie Miller in. We hope he works at fullback. You know, we hope Ponga works at six. Hastings is brought in. Hopefully he works. You know what I mean? There's always hopefully he works. Whereas after this year, you've got a very clear path of, like, we know what works for us as a club. I'm extremely excited for them. Now, does that mean they're going to have the same year as they did last year? I don't think so, but I do think they are a chance of making the eight. Uh, I think that similar-ish to the Warriors, where 
the Warriors were the hunters and ambushed a lot of people. I think the Knights ambushed a lot of people. I think that to expect Kalen Ponga to have a full year again like that, I mean, if he does, it's absolutely incredible. But to have a, a year the way he had it, to especially towards the back end, to do that again this year. Now, he still may have a really good year, but to have that kind of year, it's going to be tough. Yeah, I'm a bit higher on the Newcastle Knights. Okay. So, yeah, oh, um, well, you've, yeah, you scarred. You're scarred from the fans nearly killing you yeah, a couple that's of years true. ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, when you have a look at their preseason last year, um, they moved Ponga to six. Right, wrong decision, whatever. That made it hard. Ponga then got injured during that preseason. They didn't get to train together. They had a new seven in Jackson Hastings. Tyson Gamble arrived at the club. They got a few weeks in. Jaden Braley went down injured. They had to find a makeshift nine to fit in. Eight weeks later, they had to say goodbye to KP to go overseas. He came back. They moved him back to fullback. They moved Tyson Gamble into 5'8". And look how far they got. Mm. I also think that, and you know, it was this time last year, we were sitting here going, my God, KP looks huge. He is getting ready to defend in the front line. He didn't have a preseason as a fullback. He sort of had to drop that weight as the season went on. Mate, I think Ponga has a huge season again. Mm. I'm very high on him. You mentioned before KP. Uh, you mentioned, sorry, Latrell before about a Dally M shot. Mate, I, I would have KP as my red-hot favourite to go back-to-back. Back. Who's stealing points off him? Yeah. And, you know, it's a good point. I always speak about, we go, oh, well, he can just transition from six to one or whatever, but your whole body shape is different. Yeah. KP coming into the year with a body shape specifically tailored to playing fullback, he'll be more far, he'll be faster, more explosive, he'll be better on his feet, which is a scary prospect. I guess where – look, I mean, I still have him from four to eight, so it's not like I'm having him outside mm. the eight. Um, where I just look at their roster and I go, can they back that up again? It's probably their forward pack where I look at it and go – can they go on that crazy run? Now, look, to be fair, they finished fifth last year, correct? Was it fifth? Yep. Fifth? Yep. So, I mean, it's the same around the same spot. Um, I, I just – let's say last year for KP was 100 out of 100. I think that it's most likely going to be the case he'll be 90 out of 100 this year, which is still amazing. Mm. I just – to back – we'll put it this way. If he does back it up, I mean, talk about – like, if he continues this form for the rest of his career, you've got to start talking about where does he rank as fullbacks for this generation, but also ever. Um, Timmy, how high are you in the Knights? Yeah, I've got a foot in both camps for your boys' arguments there because, Kempi, I'm with you in that I see a bit of a regression just off the back of... I think the Warriors was a good comparison. The Newcastle Knights went on such a special run last season and they were near unstoppable... And, you know, they were destroying some teams that had been injury hit a little bit. And they just found their groove. The height wears off. The season starts again. Everyone's back to square one. Can they continue? Like, they're riding such an emotional high for a good two and a half months during that year. That takes it out of you. So I'm not sure they can do it again. But I'm also with Guru in Ponga. But Ponga is similar to Walsh for me in that it doesn't matter as such what your team is doing around you or how good a form you're in, when he's on, no one can stop him because he's so quick, his footwork is so good, his footy smarts are so good, I don't think it matters. So, you know, you talk about Dally and Red Hot favourites, Guru, and I tend to agree because no one's taking votes off him there. But I think Kalen can replicate what he did last year and for the same reasons, you know, cutting a bit away, more time at fullback, I think he can go to a new level this year, which is frightening. Ooh, now, I've got them... I hope so. Far, I, I, right? I've, I've got them potentially regressing a little bit this season, but if KP stays fully fit, there's no limit to how far this side can go. So... Yeah, okay. Okay. Man, if he has the same year as last year, holy heckers. That would be incredible. Incredible. I think he will. Yeah. If he's fit. Yeah, I think he will too. Yeah, wow. Well, I think okay. he's going to go huge. Why do you say, why do you say he will go Well, I just think 90%. his year was so incredible. Mm. It's like, I'm, I, I, people listening, please don't confuse this with me saying he's going to have a bad year. It, not at all. Mm. I'm just saying like, to hit that again, far out. Like we haven't seen it before from KP, mm. you know. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, the only people that work at that level year on, year out are the greatest of all time. So if he does, then fuck. Mad, like incredible. Um, I just think that, okay, almost like Tommy Trevojevic had his incredible year. Now, every time he takes a field, everything is about Tom Trevojevic when you're doing the video sessions. And I just wonder with KP, that extra little 5 to 10%, does that get taken away? Because, of course, the video sessions would have been about KP before 
last year. But heading into this year, when you play the Newcastle Knight, it is genuinely like, we're going to create systems to shut him down. So we're going to start sending our centre flying in off the wing to take time off him. Now, KP is so talented, he might, um, uh, what's the word, respond to that and just dominate even more. I, look, I hope he does. I hope he goes as good. I just think it'll be just 5% or so, 5 to 10% or so, just a little bit. So he'll still be probably top five, Dally M. Which is like a very reasonable thing to say that when you have a 10 out of 10 season, you might have a 9.5 the year after. Yeah. I, I just think that he did have so, like as much as, you know, everyone acts like he had everything go his way last year, he didn't. Absolutely. He had, he had didn't. very little go his way, yeah. realistically. Yeah. Next to nothing uh, well, go his way. Well, yeah. the argument that, you know, Sean Johnson was robbed, uh, that blows my mind. In the system, in the current system, KP played got. ten games at fullback. Mm. Yeah. Like, what are we talking about? It's, I <laughs> think that I think people say robbed when they really should mean like, I really wanted SJ to win because yeah. of the story of it all. Did SJ deserve to win? Yeah, he played well enough to win at Dally M, but so did KP. Yeah, absolutely, he did. Um, but I'm so excited to see what KP does because put it this way: if he does go out and plays the same this coming year, then we are he is definitely stepping into the potential of the future superstar that we saw when he was 18 years old. We have to remember, in his first year, he would have won a Dally M, did his hammy. He played two less games in RTS and he missed it by two points. Yeah. Like that, that was his future. And then he's, he lost the rails a little bit with injuries and everything. If he if steps back up and goes as good again next year, then you go, he is definitely fulfilling his potential. I think the other big plus for Newcastle heading into this season, um, Tyson Rizal looks like he's been moved to the left edge. Mm. You would have to assume that is solely to help Bradman Best and Marshall in defence. Yeah. Which is a huge uptick for me. Well, if you can sort that defence out on that side, then Jesus Christ, an attack, whole league. Huge. Lead. Massive. Um, I just got a quick question. It won't take that long. <laughs> KP or Walsh at fullback for Queensland? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm Don't joking. you dare answer that question, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare. I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm super excited. At the moment, I've got him at 95 or so percent of his game last year, which is like still amazing. Um, what a hater. <laughs> yeah, you're such a hater. It's just a big call to say yeah. you don't rate him, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, some other key um, positions. I think that this half situation, it's going to sound really dumb, but you almost you're like, not wish, you wouldn't wish it because it's a great depth signing, whoever you end up putting there. But it's like an extra headache that you're like, you finally got it sorted. You almost want to sign a guy that's a little bit like, put it this way, you almost wanted, um, oh, I'm forgetting his name now, Cogger to not have his grand final performance yeah. so that you could go, he's locked in, depth signing. If he plays really well, he gets that jersey. Goes out and has that grand final performance and now you're going... It should be Gamble and Hastings, but, like, that's a grand fight. You know what I mean? It's tough. I get where people are coming from with that, but I think people are out thinking the room. Oh, I think it's Hast Hastings Gamble for sure. 100%. O'Brien's come out and said he's not sure yet. Yeah, but, yeah. I, I think O'Brien would be sure. I think he'd know he's going with Hastings and Gamble. Um, Coaches you know, do not lie to the media. How do never. You, sir? <laughs> not once. Um, I just think, you know, for everyone sitting at home that's telling me Gamble has uh, – telling me Cogger has to be on the side – We've spoken about this before. What he did in that grand final is exactly what Hastings does for KP week in, week out. If you're picking uh, Cogger over Tyson Gamble at 5-8 because of that grand final, that's ridiculous. Mm. It's not the same role. It's completely different. If like, And unless you were telling me that Cogger well, had think, to be the six I think, over. I think the argument would be he did that in the grand final and then he kills it in the trials or something like that, you know? Yeah. Even still, I just... Uh, if you've got Jackson Hastings at seven, which they do, I want a guy like Tyson Gamble at six. Mm. I think Hastings uh, and Cogger, they're, they're two similar footballers for me mm. to have in the halves. So I like having the Gamble, Tyson Gamble there. <laughs> One of your best that was accidental, group. but we'll take it. <laughs> uh, I think it should be Cogger. Wow. Ooh, at six? six? No, nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> sort of shake things up a bit. <laughs> Boys, Gamble, if I won, what, 10 on the trot or whatever, and then the semi final loss in one of the all time runs from a football team and got dropped the next season for a bloke who played 20, albeit incredible minutes in a grand final, I would be absolutely livid. And I just think they'd be mad to do it. I think coming out, AOB and, and blowing up, not blowing up, uh, I think he was just sticking a rocket up their ass and saying, boys, no one's safe here. You need a big pre-season. This isn't to say that it can't be, say, Cogger and Hastings by round 10, but Gamble gets first crack of that. I think he'd be mad not to. I also just think 
they complement each other. As you said, Guru, Cogger and Hastings, very similar, organising number sevens. Uh, Got to be Campbell. Um, now, another position, and I'll get you go deeper on this, but I actually, uh, obviously writing Blood Chronicle preview for Knights recently, Kai Pierce paul went and looked, looked at his, um, his highlights in the Super League. Uh, look, I'm not sure whether he'll start the year, but when you talk about physical attributes and the ability to be a super special back rower, if he can, you know, keep up with the NRL and the physicality, geez, he is some, someone to watch. Physicality is the key word. That's all we need to see from Kai Piss Paul. Um, I think if he handles the trials well and he's fit, he's, I think he's carrying a toe injury, Timmy. Yep. Or something. I think if he's fit and he handles the trials, I think he will start on the right edge. Timmy the toe man. Timmy the toe man. <laughs> a lot about toes, you weirdo. <laughs> I do have good looking toes. <laughs> How'd you know? Sorry, I'm getting delirious. <laughs> <laughs> getting delirious and we're not even halfway. <laughs> yeah, I, I think there's every chance he starts on the right edge. You've obviously got Dylan Lucas there as well, which is wild. I think Dylan Lucas's story is that he was playing wing in the Newcastle comp two years ago to now potentially being an 80 minute back rower. And he played bloody good towards the end of the year for him. Did he ever? He was unreal for them. So a very good spot to be in. Um, If Kai Piss Paul handles the physicality, I think he will be there. Yeah, do yourself a favour if you're a Knights fan, go look at his um, highlights, like huge, rangy. If If he fulfills his potential and mentally he can really, like he's happy over here, he fully commits to the training, like, he genuinely could be one of the more destructive back rows in the comp. It's actually hard to think of a good player comparison yeah. for him. He's very Maybe a unique. Hill and Lukey-ish. Ish. That's the kind of rangy vibe yeah. I had, but they don't really... Anyway, um, very exciting. But I think, like, right now, if I was selecting the side, I'd probably have Lucas there. And with a guy like Kai Pierce paul if I'm going to give him a crack really early, I'd probably bring him off the bench, give him, like... You know, small minutes to see how he handles the pace and the physicality of NRL. The other one I cannot wait to watch again this year is Leo Thompson. He gets better every single game Mate. he plays. Is Leo paying you? You love Leo. No, He's not a good I footballer t- when I see one. I right? tell you yeah. what, he does, just quietly. If you go back and uh, look at the stats from the Kiwis um, versus Australia game where they won 30 nil, he had the most metres per minute of any forward on the field or any player on the field. Uh, yeah. Any... Any player, I think, but any forward on the field. Yeah, I have no knock on Leo, nor would I. Sounds be like game hate him. To, nor would I be game to have a <laughs> knock on Leo. But you know, <laughs> you get all this hype around your Jaman Hopgood love, but Leo is a under the radar. He does fly under the radar. Is he your secret love, like your fling or something? Yeah, he's my uh, he's my side chick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but he, yeah, he's don't a, hurt me, Leo. <laughs> no. He's another guy that he initially started pretty much on the edge. He played in the middle a little bit, but now he's fully into the middle. Um, and you look at his performance again, it's a forward pack of Tino, Haas, Cotter, Grant, um, you know, you name it. And he killed it. He killed it. So he can go against the best of the best and put up big numbers. Uh, only signed for two years, so he'll be able to negotiate at the end of this, um, this season, which will be, you know, that's uh, probably bring the best out of him. Uh, and so what's good about Thompson is that they're not so reliant on the Saifidi brothers, where if they're having a little bit of a quiet... You know, usually, or you would have expected heading into last year, if one of the Saifidi brothers is struggling with form, there's just going to be no go forward for the Knights. The good thing about Leo Thompson is that he can pick up that slack. On top of that, if all three of them are playing to the potential we know they can, it's a great forward front row rotation. A great front row rotation. Uh, We've already spoken about their outside backs. Jeez, Louise, Bradman, Besh, Marjo on the edge there. That's a... If you have nightmares about having to tackle tackle breakers, there'd be two of them in it. Them in total. Imagine defending on the right edge and seeing Frizzell, Ponga, Best, and Marju coming at you. Is that arguably the best edge in the competition? At, I, at their best? I think it's got the potential yeah. to be the best, mm. and it's right up there with the best for me. The Especially Bradman when best. KP's humming. <laughs> the Bradman best edge. <laughs> yeah. In the comp. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what about um, uh, losing uh, Young on the wing as well? I reckon they had the best back three in the comp last year. Um, Twala obviously comes in there as well, but I, re- I think he is more of a loss to the Knights and he is a gain for the Roosters. Mm. Dom Young. Definitely, definitely. Like that, that ability to finish the way he did and some of the tries that he scored yeah. that only he could score. Yep. I, I, looking into it recently... I will say one thing that Tuala brings 
that may be better than Dom Young is his defence. Yep. Quite a good defender. Mm. Um, and so for what you miss in the incredible tries, maybe Tuala makes up for in defence. Now, I'm not saying Tuala's a, as a good player overall as Young yet, but Tuala's, he's a handy, he's not, he's not bad. He and, really isn't. And of course, like, you don't want to neglect an edge and say that, oh, you're going to go to this side all the time or whatnot, but if defensively he can tighten up that edge a little bit, and the Knights' defence was quite good last year, you know, let's call it what it is. The Knights are going to hammer that left edge this year, especially if they then send Frizzell over to left as well. So if Tuala can come in there, finish well, have some decent yardage, they'll be all right. Yeah, but I mean, in saying that, like, we thought the same thing last year, and the right winger scored 25 tries. That's what I mean, yeah. yeah like, like they, 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 ha they went heaps down the right line. I'll tell you what, if you're in the group of Tuala, Tom Jenkins, Mapalangi, even Will Price at a long shot, maybe, just to get a gig outside Dane Gagai <laughs> could be a career defining opportunity. Yeah, one of the best gigs in the game. Yeah. Um, one of the best Ryan gigs in the game. Uh, <laughs> now, oh, nice. Woohoo. Uh, <laughs> now you've got, Timmy, you've got Jaden Braley starting over Crossland. Very bold. Yeah, well, was he still, still club captain? Coming off ACL. I'd be starting Crossland. Guru? Crossland. Matty? I'm definitely starting Crossland. I think the big question is who will be starting by the end of the year. But to start the year, I'll definitely be starting Crossland. Crossland. Jeez. Yeah, because it, going for ACL, you know, you, you bring him off the... Like, I feel like Crossland earned the right to keep that jersey. Oh, he is the club captain, Brayley, and we know, like, you know how good Brayley is. Like, he's a really, really good hooker. But... I just think everything points to there's no need to start him. You bring him off the bench, you get some minutes into him, you find out what works balance-wise with him and Phoenix, and maybe Phoenix could probably play another position as well to get more minutes into him. Um, you know, maybe at times you pull Phoenix to 13 to give him more minutes when Braley does come on. Again, I'm just, you know, shooting off the hip. Um, but, yeah, I just reckon off coming off – what was his? It's his second or third ACL. He's had a few injuries, yeah. Yeah, so I just reckon he did – it is Achilles, didn't he, as well? Okay. It was an Achilles and an ACL. Okay. So with, with that, I just think just ease him back into it. And then by round 10, you can make a yeah. more informed decision. Yeah, no, decision. no. Very fair. Uh, and you absolutely could be right, boys. I suppose I was thinking of it as like Braley coming in, doing the first 30 minutes of dirty work, and then Crossland comes in, darting out a dummy half a little bit more. See, I reckon... I reckon Crossland's more suited to the dirty work. Yeah, get through it early. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I was probably thinking of like uh, minutes split and going, all right, if Braley plays 40 or 50 and they do split it almost down the middle, it doesn't really matter if they start or, or come off the bench. But yeah, no, no, no major knock on it. Uh, so since 2020, Braley's done two ACLs and one Achilles. The most recent one was the oh, ACL. God. Oh my God. Yeah. Poor bloke. Legend Isn't that of a wild that at the same time his brother seemingly. Never gets injured. Mm. Yeah. Never gets hurt. Eight every week. Yeah. Um, okay. I like um, Adam Elliott, obviously, starting at 13. I think that, I mean, we've been shouting at the rafters for years we think Adam Elliott's at 13. And with a year, you know, I know he had some injuries at the start of the year, but it seems like his body right, that's just another plus for the New Inners. Yeah, I don't know. It, it sort of felt like to me like Adam Elliott sort of carried a bit of a groin injury the entire season to me and I feel like he only started to get it right at the back end of the season when you start seeing him play big minutes. I think it was very evident too with Adam O'Brien's rotation throughout the year whenever Newcastle got out to a lead Adam Elliott was the first one he'd take off. Yeah, okay. That sort of indicates to me that he's probably carrying something okay. throughout the year so I am and that's the other thing as well like we spoke about in the preseason that they lost KP for a period of time they had a new halfback they then lost their hooker they also didn't have him for most of the preseason Adam Elliott so that's what I like about this night side, that hopefully all goes well in this pre-season. They all get to spend plenty of time together. And realistically, not a heap has changed, especially in their spine. Mm. So they'll be settled. Um, they'll be ready to go. I just had a quick look at their draw. I don't think they leave New South Wales for the last 12 weeks of the season. Oh, that's nonsense. Any club that doesn't leave their state, <laughs> that is a joke. Talk about favouritism. <laughs> oh, my God. They just want – they may as well give them the bloody trophy. Unbelievable. So they, they, they finished the season with two home games, round 26, 27 against the Gold Coast and the Dolphins. So they could be coming in hot. Um, okay, boys. Another actually quick shout out. Jack Hetherington, since that last blow up he had, yep. outstanding. Mm -hmm. And he's really, I feel like he's turned a corner. I really do. Um, 
Yeah, I th- I thought for, when I saw that last blow up that he had, I was like, he he is just <laughs> he's never going to be able to stay on the field. Since that, I think he's been outstanding for the the Knights. Really underrated part of their team. Yeah, full credit to him. He uh, I thought that one would be the end of him. To be honest with you, uh, I thought it was yeah, but he has managed to turn it around seemingly. So hopefully he can keep it up. Um, young guys for this squad, Kempi. There is a not that they need a fullback, but there's a fullback that's in their development squad this year named Fletcher Sharp, who is a uh, little yeah. pappy reincarnated. Same body Look shape, sharp. same hair. Looks sharp. Yep, very good player. Nice. <laughs> um, another guy, uh, Jed Carwright. He might find his way on the edge there at times throughout the year because um, he's obviously been signed from. Uh, Rabbitohs? Yep. yep, Rabbitohs. Uh, but, okay, boys, time for the, where they're going to finish. I've got them 4-8. Yeah, I've got them 4-8 to eight as well. I've got them in ninth. Um, so we'll go 7-10. to 10. I've got them 7th to ninth. Yeah, well, I'd broken them into four, like all the 4s through the, through the thing, and I, I can't get them into the 8, so they're going to be in my 9-12 to 12 bracket. But they're right at the top of that. I think for me, okay. the market can't make its mind up either. They're a dollar ninety to make the eight, a dollar eighty five to miss the eight too. Before yeah. we move off, new, oh, sorry, Amy. Sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say uh, the one I'm looking at though, a bet for them, Anari Tuala. If he's to be their top try scorer, Dom Young was their top try scorer last year. You're getting nine bucks mm-hmm. okay. to be the top night's try scorer. Uh, uh, before we move off Newcastle, who is more likely to make the top eight next year, Knights or Warriors? Uh, I've got Newcastle. Knights. I've got Warriors eight, Knights nine. So didn't I? Didn't I think I had Warriors six to ten? Didn't I? I think so. Yeah, no. Tough. Uh, I reckon Knights. Yeah. Ham. Yeah, I'm the same as Timmy. I've got them uh, eight and nine respectively. Warriors just scrape in. So you, you Warriors then? Yeah, I think Warriors. You got Warriors more likely. Warriors eight. And you've Knights got nine. Okay. Okay. Good one to watch. This is a really good one. I mean. It all really depends on like SJ and KP really yep. if they oh, ever stay Flip a coin, free. like take your pick. Um, okay. Next side, don't forget to grab, grab a case of bloke beer from your local. Uh, Cronulla Sharks. Sharkies last year, they had fourth best attack, seventh best defense. Uh, a, b- a bit of a strange one, the Sharkies, because like I, I understand the argument, you know, that they don't be the top tier sides yet. There's two ways of looking at that. They are quite a ways off, you know, the premiership standard, or with the current squad of where they're at right now, they absolutely nail what they should nail, and they're just a bit of improvement away from being where they need to be. So it's like glass half full, glass half empty. Um, I'm, I'm. Pretty excited for the night uh, for the uh, for the Sharkies this year. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> Jesus Who aren't God. you excited for? Just can't wait for footy. Really. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm excited for everyone. Everyone can make my eight. Um, I, I think that I, you know Fitzgibbon has come out and kind of said like I believe that this current squad has been together for a few years now. We're developing, and I, I tend to agree. I tend to agree. I think that this is a third or fourth year that they've been together. They're going to be better for it. Hopefully, Dale Finucane can stay. Uh, relatively injury free this year so you can straw up that middle all of their forwards none of them have played 100 games they're all about to hit that hunt not forward sorry front rowers they're about to hit that 100 game mark uh, you've got guys like Hazelton coming through that's a real crowd favorite that I, I really like ha- Hines is in his third year of first grade seven Trindle has been given the six jersey it is yours now I think they've got the most underrated outside back line uh, in the competition um, I'm I'm um, I'm cautiously optimistic for the Sharkies this year. What about you, Guru? Yeah, um, they're a great side to watch. Jeez, if you're a Sharkies fan, having a look at this list, how good do you feel seeing 2029 next to Nico Hines? It's not. Oh, wow, it is incredible. Um, I think it was uh, without stealing your gear, Matty the Waterboy. He pointed out to me the other day of their top 30, only seven of them are signed beyond 2025. Mm. So it's going to be very interesting over the next few years uh, who stays, who goes, those well, I think players. that reflects Fitzy's kind of comments of this group is in that third, fourth year phase. Yep. So I, I'd assume if they don't go well this year, I think we'll, we'll see some movement. Yep. So you've got Blake Braley, uh, Jesse Ramian, uh, Michael Gabriel, who's come over from the Canterbury Bulldogs, a young centre, Nico Hines, uh, Sianna Katoa, Sifatalakai, Toby Rudolph, everyone else off contract at the end of 2025 or before. So, interesting to watch that over the next few years. Can be I, I just want to see them win a finals game. 
Yeah. I, I personally think maybe I'm being over the top or whatever, but I think that if they don't manage to do it this year, I think you're getting into yips sort of categories. Really? Yeah. Well, that's where I, I kind of – I agree to you to a, to a degree where I go, if they don't win the finals game this year, I don't think Craig Fitzgibbon is the kind of coach that's close enough, he's good enough. He'd almost rather take a step back to take two step forwards. And that's where I do think that they'll start to make some pretty aggressive roster changes if, like as in for 26, so 25, they'll still have that same roster. But I think they'll start be looking towards 26 then. Yeah, I hope so. But like from what I've seen of Craig Fitzgibbon's coaching, he seems very hesitant to make changes. It's one thing that I has sort of surprised me with this side. Uh, well, the way, unfair or? The way I think... No. Spot on. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. But uh, the way I think he's approaching that is, I've got this group, mm -hmm. that this is the window for this group. Yep. See how they go. If they can't deliver in their peak year, which would be this year and next year, <coughs> um, then I need a new group, I, I think. Uh, mostly Yeah, quite group. possible. Yeah. Well, an yep. example of that, Guru, is just like the left edge defensively, how it just brought them down for so, so long. It basically took like it was pretty well forced into making moves there. It took an injury with, to make a move. An injury yeah. and Matt Moylan eventually out. It, it forced his hand, like it was because it was just tearing them apart. He sticks with his four forward bench, and that's fine. That's style of foot he likes to play. He likes Blake Braley as an eight minute hook, um, number nine. But you're right, he doesn't like a lot of change, which yeah. is fine. But I, I get where he's coming from in the like the loyalty to a player because sometimes it can draw the best out. But I mean, you know, I said that weeks before they made the change that they should have made the change with Brindle, uh, Brindle, <laughs> Trindle, um, because they, I don't feel, I feel like they didn't give themselves enough time heading into finals to cement that left edge to go, we're ready for finals. It was kind of like two or three weeks before finals, they go, okay, yep, this is the setup we're going with, seemed to improve a bit, um, where I feel like they could have made that call maybe a few weeks earlier to set them better up for that finals game. Yeah. Um, What's, what's heartbreaking with the Sharkies is like the year before they lost in that die, in dying moments to the Cowboys and then they lose in the dying moments to the Roosters. Mm -hmm. And you're like, one play, like one or two plays go differently and we're sitting here going, the Sharkies are building perfectly towards a premiership push. Yeah. And like you do look back, like they've obviously played three finals games in two years. They've lost all three and they've also had two home games. Uh, and you're right, they, they, they've lost them, you know, last minute plays and whatnot, but like... It's still a loss though. It's still, and yeah. it's also, they lost to that Roosters side who, as we said earlier, had played eight weeks of finals leading into that. Had a couple of blokes sin bin, I think, as well. Yeah, they had a heap of injuries, they had injuries, they had like, it just, so for, for me, that, that Roosters one was, and you know, they, I think they, they lost to the Cowboys, they then played South Sydney in 2023, and they were just out of gas from that Cowboys game, so yeah. I sort of put the red sharpie through that one, fine. But that Roosters game, that was one that they should have won there, at home, at Shark Park, you know... The DNA of the Sharkies is that no one comes to Shark Park and outgrits them, mm. and the Roosters did on that night. Yeah, and I think that that's like, again, regular preview, bloke chronicle. Uh, that's where like, it's not about making the eight for the Sharks anymore. It's about winning the big games. Yeah. And so like, before they get to finals, they need a few scalps. They need a few big fishes mm. to get to get give them the confidence to head into finals footy. Because right now, if they were to play finals tomorrow, you gotta you gotta Surely they're sitting there going in the back of their minds, oh, we, we struggle in these big games. They have to like, be, surely yeah. in the back of their heads they're thinking that. Whereas if they get a few scalps on their way to the finals next year, they'll be going in, oh, we're good. We can beat these sides. Yes, finals footies is different. Um, and like I remember sitting there last year, Matty, I want to say about four weeks before finals, they gave it to South Sydney. And I remember sitting there going, okay, maybe that's the yeah, game. Yeah, they're on here. But in hindsight, you realise South Sydney had fallen into a heap. Yeah. And they hadn't really had that game. Yep. Um, I think the really telling game for me last year, they went out to Penrith, gave it their absolute all, and got pounded into the earth. Yep. And it was just like, like it was, that's got a scar you, because you're going, even if we make it into week two, we got Cam McGuinness making a thousand tackle, tackles and we can't even get close to these guys. And so that, surely that rattled their confidence of, like we are, and look, to be fair, Pen, Penrith and Broncos, they were, substantially further ahead of every other side. Um, but it's still got to rattle your confidence. It's such a brutal comp like that, that like the Sharks, the Melbourne Storm, the Warriors last year, all really good teams, but still such a distance away from that top two. Yeah. Like it's just not fair. Yeah. And that, that's why I like, I think 
you might have sort of said it this time last year, Kempi, of what's the ceiling on this Cronulla Shark side? And in terms of where they're going to finish this year, they remind me of the Titans a little bit in like they could finish third, they could finish 12th, and I struggle to sort of line them up there. But in another sense, they're completely different to the Titans because the t- Titans, I think the sky's the limit. They could go on to be run. The Sharkies, I'm confident, will be consistent this year and play some good footy. <clears throat> But how far can this side go? Because you look at this side compared to the last two seasons, there's not been much change really at all. They haven't won a finals game the last two seasons. Well, my point heading into finals last year or the back in the year was not necessarily like how far they can go. I just feel like they're missing one top tier in any position really. Like they've got Hines yeah. obviously at seven. Outside backs, really, really good, but probably just under the top tier. And so if they could just get one more player, and that's why AFB, if AFB was there this year, I'd be would change so, it. so excited. Like, I think it turn, AFB could turn them into premiership contenders next season. Of course, you've got to look at Nico Hines. Go, right, he's had two brilliant seasons. There's a lot hinging on, on his performances. That being said, he's also still just two years into playing halfback. Mm. So he's only going to get better and better. So I think the upside is remains with Nico Hines and how good can this bloke be as a number seven and a game manager? Because if he can go to another level this year, and it sounds silly about a bloke who won a Dally M two years ago, but I think if they're going to push into, you know, premiership contenders, Nico has to find another level. Yeah. And you have a look at the way they've structured their squad and whatnot. Obviously, a lot of guys coming off contract 2025. If they can get to finals this year, we know... Win a finals game, mm. have a have a shot at a prelim final, get a sniff of that sort of big stage. AFB walks in next year, and then you've got twenty eight blokes that are playing for a contract. Yeah, you're flying all. You're of a in the perfect position. Yeah, and that's what's so tough about their like last two final series. Like, you know, they were an inch away from week two of the mm. finals. You know, um, now a, a player that I'm really excited, and I think this is going to be his best year of his career. Don't want to put the mocker on him. Blake Braley, I reckon he's in for an absolutely massive year. He's, um, I think he's around, he's actually played more NRL games than Harry Grant. Um, so, and he's still, I think, I think he's the same age as Harry Grant, so he's about 25. Now, granted, Harry Grant was behind a goat. Um, I think Blake Braley is in for an absolutely massive year. He's had a, two years now with Hines. They work extremely well together. They probably played through the juniors with um, Trindle, um, I'm assuming, but they'd be, he's at the very least been training with Trindle for at least three or four years now. I think he's in for a massive year. He looks like he's put on a lit, just a tiny bit of size just to bulk him up a little bit and just that confidence to run the ball, to run the ball. I'd imagine you're dropping him back to 60. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, just to, like if they have the bench. Yeah, yeah so Kim McInnes. Yeah. Perfect. I, I reckon you drop him back to 60 and say, mate, we want you running the ball a oh, bit more. That'd be awesome for late break because we know how good his running game is, but you can see also that he holds back because he's like, I've got it through 80 minutes. I'm also small. I make 40 plus tackles a game. He's such a lethal ball run, and we haven't seen the best of it. And I think also with Kim McInnes, like we forget during that transition phase, it was between him and Cookie for that New South Wales mm. Blues jersey when he was playing for the Dragons. He's a, he's a quality um, hooker. Now it's been a few years, but if you bring him on for that twenty minute period and then maybe you know move other people around to give him more minutes, Kim McInnes, that is, he can add some massive punch through the middle in defence. Massive punch. I think the other thing about if you are going to play Cam McInnes there, like the way that the Sharkies play for that 25 minutes, very simplified job. Mm. I don't even need you to run. Yeah. It's just you just run the side through Nico Hines. And very lead, similar to what Blake does, to be fair. And lead the defence. Yeah. Your, your one job is line speed and good service. The uh, the greatest compliment to Blake Braley is that most people at home would have no idea who Jaden Beryl is. Yeah. We will. He's a Queensland Cup player of the year. That's how good he was. Yeah. And he arrived down there and he has been playing for Newtown. He's, he's probably knocked up 60 games for Newtown by now, I would say. Mm. Crazy. Um, so I'm really excited for Blake Braley. I, th- I think it's the year for him to take that next step, uh, especially in hooking role like, you know, even Cameron Smith, like he was at 25 years old, he was still getting better and better and better. And I said, Kempi, that, you know, maybe uh, like Nico Hines needs to find a new level to turn him into a premiership threat. Maybe Jaden Braley's the man. Yeah. Na- yep. Sorry, Blake Braley. Maybe if Blake Braley can, you know, impact more with his running game or just creativity around the ruck because he's a terrific number nine now. But he said he's young, learning the craft. Mm. If he can go up a level, maybe that's it. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope um, – I'm really excited for Trindle as well, a whole preseason at six. So he's going to have a very clear vision of what his role is in that side. The, the tough situation that he finds himself in, defensively, he's probably better than Matty Moylan. 
But I tell you what, Matty Moylan in attack with Nico was some of the silkiest <laughs> stuff you'll see. Very hard to replace. You know what, like... Silky's one way to describe it. I think the other thing that was, you know, Hines' biggest strength is that Moylan was happy to take a back seat, let him be the dominant half, which sounds easy and it almost sounds like Moylan's a lazy player. But, you know, a guy like Matty Moylan, like, he was the Penrith Panthers captain at 23. He was always the guy. Uh, all of a sudden he gets to Granella and the best role that he can possibly play is taking a backward seat to a guy that hasn't played halfback in five years. And he did it perfectly. Played the role perfectly. Uh, Trindle's a little bit more of a ball-dominant guy. I probably think Trindle's more of a seven than a six. Mm. Um, I think that combination is going to be very interesting to see how they gel. The advantage is they've got a pretty – I mean, there's no easy starts in the NRL because all teams are up at the start of the year. Uh, but they have got just about as best start as you could start a season with the Sharkies. All right. I want to ask you about your boy, Kale Iro, 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 Iro? Iro, I believe. Iro. Yeah. Um, special talent in New South Wales Cup mm -hmm. Special talent uh, Glass half empty I guess the question is How come he hasn't already You know Played a lot of NRL Not a lot of NRL But You know How come there aren't other For example If I'm the Eels oh, I'm calling him every day Trying to get him there Yeah um, they, they clearly didn't But From what you've seen In uh, New South Wales Cup He is special And this brings me back To my point of Fitzy's Very hesitant to make changes um, but at the same time, which Cronulla Sharks outside back do you want to drop? Oh, Like, it's easy to say Talakai. Everyone throws out Talakai straight away. That's fine. Looking at some stats the other day, Talakai is the only player that is not a spine player to be in the top 15 in the NRL for try assists and line break assists. Jeez. It's incredible in attack. And he's a back rower playing in the centre. So he doesn't, like, he's just learning the position still. And he runs 200 metres for you from centre. Yeah. yeah. 180 metres he averages at the centre. That's mm. unbelievable. Yeah. So as much as I want this kid to play left centre, I actually get why Fitzy doesn't want to make this change. What I don't get is what, go to he should be playing in a real. Why is why is another yeah. club's going, mate? Here is a you know a decent you know 400 grand contract, which would be under as if he hits his potential, because um, currently I think he's only signed. I don't even know 24. Just this year. This yep. year. So like, you know, I hate to keep bringing it up, but like, or even from the Tigers. Mate, if you're anyone, anyone that needs an outside back, I just, I'm just don't understand why Iro isn't, Iro isn't out, out yeah. of there. I, I'm shocked he hasn't got a gig yet. I know he was 18th man on a number of occasions last year and was close to playing. But when the time came to pick someone in the team, he went Connor Tracy. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not sure if Iro knows exactly where he stands right now. But I, if I was so many other clubs, I'd be getting his manager's phone number because like. <laughs> I think he got him at the Eels. Him yes. and Pensini in the centres. I, somehow he missed my list of 40 dudes that the Eels sort of signed in the last two years. You get him for cheap <laughs> um, and he start. He would be starting in the Eels. Because I oh, – Matty, can, can, can you have a quick look? I think he got New South Wales Cup Player of the Year two years ago now. Yeah. Like, I was his stats, yeah. He was top metre maker in 2022 in like – what did he play? 22 games. Destroyed it last year as well. I think last year he averaged the most post-contact meters of anyone in the comp. Mate, he like if I had to give you a player comparison, he's Val Holmes. Yeah. The way that he moves, like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah twenty twenty two. Yeah, like getting New South Wales player cup of the year, uh, New South Wales Cup player of the year from a, as a center. Center is ridiculous. Like, re absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with him because you'd have you'd have to suggest if he's not getting a start this year, he's going to get a contract from somewhere else. <laughs> Sure, yep, maybe. Surely, would have said it last year too, though. To be fair, yeah. so um, I think another underrated little signing, mate, is Billy Burns from the Dragons. I agreed, agreed. I like Billy Burns. I love Billy Burns. I Great I've name. said it on my potty a few times, but I reckon there is every chance he starts on the left edge. It was I'm received saying, well too, Guru. Yeah, yeah, it's real good. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter loves you. <laughs> you, should have, you should have said I was saying Blue Burns. <laughs> <laughs> one, of the, one of the one of the. Correct me if I get this wrong, but one of the great uh, sledges on Twitter the other day, God bless that place, <laughs> oh. Guru, Guru had some call about Cade Dice or something, and someone commented, Rogue League Guru, more like Rogue League Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, so switched Time on. Time for a rebrand. Wow. <laughs> um, thoughts on the Sharkies, Hemi? I'm not as bullish on the Sharkies as you guys are. Why do you hate them, I, mate? I, well, because I usually steal all the Tigers players. <laughs> Tiger Sharks, simple as that. But honestly, yeah, the the sports punters are off them as well. 
Best back team to miss the eight at two dollars wow. ten. Okay. I've got a missing as well. Um, look, I don't know. They last couple of years, they probably. I feel like they've. I've, I've felt more confident about them. They've got to the finals. They haven't won one. Mm. Um, have they kind of improved that squad in the off season tremendously? I don't, I don't know. They're a good team, but yeah, I, I don't think I can't see them certainly winning the comp. And I've got a missing. So that's where I sit on. You got okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have them making the eight, um, but they've for me they've got such an exciting team, but they've been extremely underwhelming last couple of years. They've barely got a scalp, uh, and that's in the regular season as well. So, yeah, they haven't really improved their roster. I, I think they'll have a similar year this year, make the finals, and hopefully uh, win a finals game like Guru said. But yeah, I haven't come about seventh. They really struggle to beat top eight teams. That's that just seems to be the ongoing mm. thread with them. So, you know, I'll back, I'll back the punters. You know, I think they miss. I will say, uh, you know, and don't don't come at me, Guru, but Teague Wilton, pretty good player. Goes all right. I know you hate him for some reason. <laughs> That's what I've heard. Is that true or not? Yeah, factual. <laughs> factual. Um, he was one of their better back rolls before he went down. In attack, yep. Yep. So, like, an extra few years in a first-grade system, defensively, you know, maybe he has, has a big year. Oh, for sure. And look, if he improves his defense, I will fall on my sword in a heartbeat. Uh, but I would be looking at Billy Burns as an option at okay. that left edge. Um, really keen to see Britton Nicola. Yeah. Really keen. I mean, what a good year he had last year. Had him on the podcast the other day, and I was like, um, I said to him, mate, you're like, you've got a great defensive technique. You're a, you're a big hitter, all kind of stuff. And he literally said, You think I'm a big hitter? I was like, uh, Yeah. And he was like, oh, really? He was surprised. I was like, well, to be fair, I am a winger. But, um, <laughs> mate, I, I love Britton Nicola as a player. He is – I still think we're going to see – he's just going to get better and better and better. He's got a great story as well. If you, uh, if you said he is the best back rower in rugby league, I'd be like, yeah, okay, I get it. Well, last year, you know, in the, the team of the year for a lot of people, they just, like, dismissed him. I have no idea why. Like, yeah. that's craziness to me. He was so good who last got, year. Who got in again? Who were the back rows of the year? For Feeder, I guess. Yeah, Liam Martin and for Feeder. and Liam Martin. Yeah. And See, then, I, I yeah. thought for a season, I thought Nic- Nicola had a better season than Martin. So for a season. I. Yeah. I think there's a very fair argument he's the most consistent back row in rugby league. Um, and, you know, his edge with Nico is only going to get better and better and better. So really excited. Uh, got a, like, Craig Fitzgibbon, he's in his <laughs> third year. Uh, look, there's, there's no pressure on him, in my opinion. But I think internally he'll have pressure on himself mm. of if they do struggle again, he's going to have to make some really tough calls, I think. And that's, that's going to be hard for a rookie coach heading into his fourth year of first grade. Um, but it's hard. like you know, that, uh, That's what I worry about, that if they don't win a finals game this year and that pressure builds, I look at this team and I go, OK, what changes do you make? You don't change anything really, unless Braden Trindle has a poor year or Seifer at centre. You don't really change anything one to seven, I don't think. Maybe a few of the ageing forwards. Yeah, I think the forwards you probably have yeah, to, to look at. A bit more spark there. Mm. Like there's, it's lacking. They're not overly explosive, aside from Nicola, who is and runs the probably best line for back row in the game. Maybe that. That's where you have AFB coming in too, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also, I mean, I, I don't know how accurate this is, but Hamlin Wele uh, to the Warriors, I don't think it's actually that much of a done deal. I've heard that the Sharks are actually really keen to keep him. Yeah, well, I'd be keen to keep him. So him and AFB, all of a sudden, that's a, that's a great starting four pack. So, um, okay, time, rubber meets the road. Boys, I have the Sharkies in my sixth, no, sorry, fifth to ninth bracket. Fifth to ninth. Yeah, I've got them um, four to seven, four to eight, that sort of range. I've actually got them in tenth. Uh, I don't feel great about it, but pretty stacked top eight. So I'll go eighth to eleventh. I did not see that coming. No, no neither. Wow. Well, uh, like who? You like? So you looking at my top eight now? I have got the Eels at seventh. I'm like they're probably a team who could drop out for them. I'm just like. So let me get this straight. You live in the Shire. You abuse the government there by taking all their resources and then you put them outside the eight. Is that what you're telling me, Timmy? If anyone is abandoning the Shire, it's <laughs> ScoMo, mate. He's resigned from <laughs> politics. He's resigned from his electorate in the Shire. You're pointing the finger at the wrong bloke. <laughs> Next thing you're going to be doing weird stuff at Engadine, mate. 
<laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> uh, I got him seventh or eighth. You know what? Even though I just hung a bit of uh, bit of shit on Timmy, I've I've got him at tenth as well. Oh wow! In the nine to twelve bracket. Well, you know how do you how do you fit them all in? You can't put them all in the top eight, can you? And I said they're going to slide a little bit, so I've got them at tenth. Okay. Okay. The fact that we're leaving them out and you boy, blokes have all got to be in means you're going to have some very interesting sides outside of your top eight predictions because I don't know who drops out of mine. So. Okay. All right. Um, now, Manly Seagulls. Are you guys good? Yeah. Good. Manly Seagulls uh, heading into this year. Last year, uh, really disappointing year. I understand that they, um, you know, had some injuries. I get that. But I feel like they're past the point of just accepting that, oh, okay, well, we had these injuries, we're not playing finals footy. I think they need to really develop um, players around, key players to fill in the gap and make pushes for the eight. Uh, heading into this season, Luke, Luke Brooks is a great gain for them. I think he's going to do really well with DCE. Um, but at this stage, I don't have them in my eight at this stage. Ooh. I'm excited for them because outside the Titans, they're probably my biggest swing side. Because Tom Dravojevic, if he kills it, they could be as high as top four. If they, if he struggles or whatever, they could be, you know, twelfth, thirteenth. Uh, boys, what do you got? I've got them just outside my eight mm. at the moment. Yeah, I don't know, it's all pending turbo. It really, is all pending turbo. I've got them outside my eight. Let's say Tom Dravojevic stays fit for the year. Does he? Do they go straight into the eight for you? <clears throat> I, it's it's hard to say that. Like they definitely could for sure. He's he's so good. I just I look at that forward pack, and I I go heaps of potential. Like heaps of potential. <clears throat> Are they going to reach that potential this year? I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. If he if he plays every game season, they're in my eight. They're in your eight. Definitely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I've got Manly. Uh, I've got Sharks, Warriors, Knights as my seventh to ninth. So I've got like Manly, Titans, Eels in the next bracket under that. So I've got pretty comfortably out of the eight, Manly 10th to 12th. Okay. Ooh. I've got Manly in my eight. Okay. Um, $2.50 to make the eight as well. Okay. And I'm, I'm glass half full. I think uh, Turbo, let's assume he's fit all year. Kills me to say it. Luke Brooks, I think he's going to like gonna be a great get for them. He started playing some really good footy last year um, for the Tigers. And I think the fact that he doesn't have to manage the game and he can just run – against probably one of the best game managers in DCE. I think he's going to have a really good year as well. I, I reckon they're a shout to make the top four. Ooh. If I don't think they – I haven't got him in my top four, but we've actually taken more bets on any other team than Manly to make the top four at $6.50 wow. at this point for the wow. for sports bets. So, Wait, are these your ladder predictions or just the sports bet punters? <laughs> no, I've got, him, I've got him to make the eight. I don't have him in my top oh. four. The punters uh, – yeah, the – even with Tommy fit for me, they're not in top four. Top four or top I, eight? I, even with – so if Tommy's fit, I can definitely see him making the eight. Okay. But even if he is fit, I don't think they'll make the top four. Happy to be wrong, but I don't think so. Yeah, I'll probably lean towards you. Mm. I just look at some of these rosters and just go far out. If he's fit, I'm five to eight, pushing for the four. And I guess the only, the only question with Tommy – it's not a question because he's done it at Origin, but from a manly perspective – when he gets up against the Penriths and Melbournes, they usually do a really good job at just triple, you know, quadruple teaming him and taking him out and of the game. I think that's fair come finals time, as we saw when they went bonkers in 2021. But throughout the course of a Playing season, they get enough it. wins up yep. to be to push for top four. Okay, okay. Um, some exciting things about the um, the Manly Seagulls. Look, I think it's exciting for Seabold. You have, he has the roster that he wants now. Um, he's been there for a year, so he's got that first year out of his way. Uh, we all have heard about, you know, the unique way he approaches coaching and the unique training that he does. And so for Manly fans, if we're going to see the best of Seabold and almost, you know, I know he had that first year with the Rabbitohs, but since then uh, we haven't really seen the best of Seabold. But I think if, if there's going to be a year for that to be set up, for that to happen, I think this is the year to do it. He's got exactly the roster he he needs he doesn't have the baggage at the, that he had in brisbane where he was constantly you know that the brisbane media if you don't have them all on side you know like wayne bennett does and that and he, you know the whole wayne bennett shadow of brisbane it's so hard to kind of step out from under whereas that manly he doesn't really have that i know desi does have a bit of a shadow but i don't think it's the same as wayne bennett in brisbane so if if, the, if it's going to happen with seabolt i think it's going to be this year for him 
Yeah, I think a lot of this, obviously Turbo, he's going to be super important. I also think that the seasons of Paseca and Sipley, they're going to determine a lot. Mm. Um, especially against these top sides, I worry about their forward pack. Um, especially, you've obviously got Matt Lodge still there. He's coming off an injury. I'm not sure when he'll be available. Um, Round five, it's got listed. Yeah, right, okay. So, at his age, coming off an injury like that, I just... I'm a little bit worried about Lodge, how he's going to go this year. Uh, Paseca, I thought he played some of his absolute best footy last year and he got cut down as soon as he hit his best. How he's going to return. Simply, I thought he was fantastic at the end of last season. Yeah, back into last year, like, that's that's a really key thing and I think we agree. If they hit their potential, they can match it with the best packs. Yeah. If they play, you know, eight out of ten of their potential, I, I do think they get dominated in the business end of the season. Yeah. And I think we're... I think we're left with a little bit of a false currency on Manly. The last time we saw them, they put 60 on Bulldogs and Tigers who had checked out for the year. <laughs> <It doesn't matter. laughs> <laughs> was the season, the season or well? Because just said that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but That's why I've got to be my potential top four. Well, when you look, the two ways to look at it. The two ways to look at it. Uh, you've got Paseca, Sipley, and even Aloye. They've got a, the second year under Seabold, so they understand his systems. They understand the way everything works. They've got... Croker, who's in, what, his third or fourth year now as hooker. Brooks will relieve heaps of pressure on DCE. So there is – the ingredients are there for them to have the best year of their career. Like, they really are. What do you it reckon, Tim? Yeah, and it's – again, it's another fairly exciting roster. There's a lot of talent there. Luke Brooks is the huge watch. And as you said, it's, it's been all about Turbo and DCE – for a number of years now and Turbo's been missing for a lot of that and the pressure that puts on DCE is tremendous but he manages to stand up and get them by to respectful finishes each and every year DCE so he's like a fine wine he's getting better with age but if Luke Brooks can come in focus on his running game take that pressure off DCE you know it's it's hard. it's such a mystery because we haven't seen Luke Brooks outside of the Tigers' system. What's we haven't really seen DC with a good, uh, like a top tier yeah. half in a long time. It's oh, we have in Origin when we tell he's up. But yeah. you know, outside <laughs> of that, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> um, okay, I'm just gonna we're just gonna talk about this really quickly, and then we're just gonna move on because we're talking about it so much. Origin you, one to seventeen. Yeah, but that's, <laughs> 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 it's gonna be who's the goat, Cam Smith or Joey? But um, it is concerning. In the paper, literally only a couple of days ago, Schuster, you know, hasn't been training apparently with, reportedly with the squad for a while now. Struggling with calf injury, fractured finger, got chicken pox. Now, these are things out of his control, but for a player on that much money, as I said, they're out of his control, but that's still a player on a lot of money that's not training a full preseason that's key to their side. Yeah, it's not the sort of process you want for anyone. Josh Schuster in particular has got a lot to prove this year. Um, definitely not what you want for him. And I think it's also just the reality of Schuster now that, you know, if you need an article or you need a headline, he's the first guy to go to. Mm. And he, he just can't provide them with opportunities to do it, mm. realistically. And I know this is out of his control, but um, it is just sort of all starting to pile up, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, even if you – let's take, you know, the, the attitudes, concerns – that we've seen over the last few years out of out of the you know conversation even the fact that he's had another calf injury is concerning yep. you know that's, that's quite a few different injuries that he's had over a short period of time last few years and he's such a young player yeah it's a lot of old man injuries for a young guy yeah calf yeah. injuries like just it a bit concerning so so anyway i think we all kind of feel the same way yeah on that. i'll say like glass half full on josh schuster like last year was a train wreck there's no hiding away from that playing five eight and in the most it's such a bizarre turn of events. But, you know, when we've seen him play his best footy and kill it, was in the second row. Mm. It looks like that's mm. where he could land this year. And I know that makes no sense whatsoever that when he puts on the 12 instead of the 6, he turns into a, a really solid defender. But when he's playing in the second row, he has played tough there and he has played in the way that we always wanted to see from him last mm. year. Um, but I'm still far from convinced we're going to get that Josh Schuster. Mm. Yeah, th there's just there's always something with Josh Schuster, Kempi, and it's you sort of... It becomes difficult to look at it in a glass half full perspective and be positive about it because there's always something and we keep saying if we see the best of him, if we see the best of him and it's just something pops up. As I said, hasn't trained with the main squad reportedly for two months. He's obviously been with the rehab group. The chicken pox probably kept him out for a while as well, probably away from him entirely. Uh, again, things out of his control, but you know, the one thing I, I give to him is 
I went to say, like, you know, he's getting old now. We can't keep using that young man. She's, he's still only 22. Like, he's still a young Super bloke. Young. Yeah, so 23 in May. Uh, agree with Guru. Hopefully back to the, on the edge in the back row. He's, he's comfortable there. And he gets back to his football. I really hope we see her. But we just feels like we're a long way from it. Glass half full. Good to get the chicken pox out of the way. So, <laughs> true. Well. You don't want that heading into finals. Exactly. Get that finals. We're what? talking about preparing for finals. Maybe it's a plan. Maybe they gave him chicken pox because they were about to win a premiership. They're going to go on a run. Exactly. So. I think Maddie enjoyed that one. <laughs> um, now, on the other side, super, super positive. Olakawatu signs a thousand year contract. Um, super excited for Olakawatu because, mate, if you want a Blues jersey, this is your chance. This is your chance. New coach. Fresh start. Look, you're still going to lose against Queensland, which sucks, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> touch wood, touch wood. Um, I'm really excited for Olakawatu because I feel like the last couple of years, it's like being there or like, is he, in, is he uh, in frame? Is he not in frame? And then he gets around origin time and he might be a little bit quiet for a few weeks where it's like, it's extremely clear now to Olakawatu <laughs> that Guru doesn't know how to use a computer. <laughs> He doesn't know how to use Maddie's computer. I think that was a game of a jewel that was going on. He was getting out of some kind of sick, weird, <laughs> twisted browser that you were looking up. Uh, <laughs> uh, was, Gary, he, putting viruses on his computer. Um, okay. What's Born Hub? <laughs> <laughs> chicken and corn. Thing. <laughs> the best chicken shops are on it. Um, which would be Kingsley's. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable chicken, awesome chicken. The, the Rue does love chicken. Who does? The Rue does. Should we get some M4s in here for the boys? <laughs> getting about that time, isn't it? But yeah, Olakawatu <laughs> heading into this year, I wouldn't say it's now or never for him. It's absolutely not the case. Like he's still relatively young. But I would say that you don't want someone getting the jump on you with that jersey. The jersey seems to be almost in the open right now. You, I wouldn't have anyone locked into that edge jersey for New South Wales. You could argue Martin and, and Murray, but I'd say Murray, you could say that maybe he would play 13. Martin, with a new coach, is he a lock for that edge jersey? I, I wouldn't, I, I don't think he is. I don't think he is. Is he the front runner for the edge jersey? Yeah, I think so. So with Olakawatu, you're heading into this year, it's like, mate, it's up to you. You've got the talent, we've seen it happen. If you want the jersey, you take it. And that's great for Manly. Yeah, and I think that if Olakwatu can have a really solid season here where he plays tough, intimidating footy, he will get Madge's attention mm. very quickly. Yeah. Uh, which is the only reason why I think Liam Martin is just about a certainty to be in that side because he'll really fit in with what Madge likes. But mate, if we can get a fit and firing Olakwatu coming into Origin, that would be unreal. Oh, and, uh, you know, with DC and Brooks, I know that, you know, they play in their own lanes, but with, with DC and Brooks... What it does for Olakawatu is it creates a situation where if you're doing video session to Manly last year, it's like, boys, we just got to find a way to stop Olakawatu. On the other edge, we've got decent back rowers, but they're pretty stock standard NRL back rowers. Whereas Olakawatu now with Brooks on the other side or DC, whichever they go, defences have to make sure that numbers are set on both sides. Whereas if you look up and you see DC with Olakawatu, you're going, He's 100% getting the ball. We don't need to worry about it. So that's another reason why I think Olo Kawatu is going to have – I think he's going to have career best year. Yeah, and if, if you're looking at that origin frame and the origin jersey as an incentive for him to, to get out there and play big football after signing that big long-term deal, the other value he adds from a New South Blues perspective is he can be injected in a lot of different ways. He can be a starting eight in an edge back rower. He can come on in short stints off the bench and play as a middle and have an impact on a game. There, you know, you can't say that about all – Edge back rolls in the game. Mm. So you can be used in a lot of different ways. Mm. Um, so really excited about him. Uh, another guy that I think is going to really... Like, that's the thing with Manly. When you, when you really look at their squad, it's not necessarily that these guys are jumping out at you um, with their names, as in superstars. Mm. It's the fact that they've got a squad that is bringing points of difference that they haven't had for a few years now. And Brooks at six... Opens up DCE. You know what else is, opens up DCE and Croker? Um, the Chan Kum Tong. Mm. Yeah. So there's going to be minutes now this year, a 20-minute period, where you're going to have a silky number nine running the ball and giving DCE space. Now, Croker, Croker is great, but he's a good ball putt, like he's a good service and a great tackler. And he actually improved his running game. But he's not a silky number nine. He's a tough, gritty number nine. 
again, uh, Chan Kung Tong, it's not like he's this huge name, but it's another point of difference that gives DC more room to do what he needs to do. Yeah, I think uh, Lucky Croker has been a great servant for Manly for a long time, but I think it is time to partner him with a 14. Mm. Um, Gordy's obviously right in the conversation. He'd be my favourite. Uh, they also reckon this Jamie Humphreys is going very well. That's fine, though. Is so like That really stacks up against most in the comp, really. There's no really not a weakness there. Turbo, DC, Brooks. And then we, a lot of these teams that have only got one hooker, mm. everyone's kind of been going, ooh, but this is this is a team that's genuinely got the hooker rotation pretty much sorted there, yeah. haven't they? So absolutely, yeah. Okay. Maybe the the forward pack is, as you quite rightly pointed out, is maybe not as strong as some other teams. But I think their back lines are late and their spine very very strong. So good team. Yeah, it's yeah. it's they really are a they're just a dark horse. You just don't know what's yeah. going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen with yeah. them. The other one to add in, uh, boys. It took about six hours into the podcast. Actually, no, I mentioned it with Brimson, but. Uh, roaming cola, roaming centre. Yeah. And especially if you're trying to take a little bit of the workload off Tommy Trebojevic and ease him in a little bit with his injury history. What well, we saw at Cola at fullback last season, those final few games of the year, they'd be mad not to get him a bit more involved this year because he was sensational. You know what does excite me actually for Manly looking at this? No, I forgot to read the stats out. They were fourth in defence last year. That's wild. <sighs> fourth in defence, wow. twelfth in attack. What does is, what is Tom Trebojevic do? Get your points. So, oh, I tell you what, looking at that, I start going, you coming around? Oh, I might be coming around. Can I give a special shout out? I didn't realise this, but Aaron Woods is on a development contract for yeah. this year at 33 and got a trip to Vegas to hang out with Gronk. <laughs> what a nudge. Unbelievable. Two trips to Vegas because you went for the pre thing. He's, he'll be going well, I was talking about the pre. Do you reckon he'll, he'll probably will go on the he'll, main Yeah, one? he'll go there. How he'll good's go that? There. So, so when you look at that, you go fourth best defence. Um, and then you go, okay, attack, you know, with uh, Tommy on the field, then you go, okay, maybe, maybe you're onto something. So when I, when I like sit and we talk about it and I you know, feel it out, it does get me a bit more excited for Manly. It really does. I guess the only, I will say the Seabold situation, it's still, it's still, I'm still unsure. Can he lead a team into, you know, the top six or top four? Um, I know he did it with the Rabbitohs, but outside of that, I think his best finish at the Broncos were like seventh or something like that. And then they went out 56 nil or something first week. Yeah. Um, Jeez, that defense status. It's, it's incredible. Eh? Me, yeah. And, and you've got to give Seabold raps for that. Like coming with the fourth best defense with everything that happened last year. It's pretty. And also with the roster they've got pretty bloody good. And, and the injuries they had last year. Got to remember, I think they lost like their three starting front rowers. And by the end of the year, they were down to their like, Fourth or fifth string. You should clarify, Kempi, how that came about because statistically, just on the against on the ladder, they were further down, um, conceding five thirty nine. But the way it's been brought together with all the rankings, scrambling is down there. No, no, I'm just like I want to give an example. Like, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. they're best in the league in missed tackles. So, like, that's yeah. what makes right. the stat goes up. As in, they 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 miss, they miss the, the least, least amount. They miss of the tackles. least amount of tackles. Yeah, which is a it's a bloody good start. Wow. That's a bloody yeah. good yeah. start. So yeah, that's to, all attitude. To clarify yeah. for Maddie. Best attack, best defense is not all based on for and against. There's a lot more going into it. Yeah. yeah. Did right. I say that at the start that we'd measure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. people will know. Um, but yeah, because people are going to go look at the ladder now and yeah. go, hang on, what is it? Um, they'll sound exactly like that too. Uh, <laughs> uh, Cooler, I'm really excited to see how he goes. Garrick in the centers. Do you agree or disagree? Because that was a predicted team. So this is um, Timmy's predicted team Turbo, Paolo, Garrick, Cooler, Saab, LB. DCE, uh, Josh Aloye, Lachlan Croker, Paseka, Olakawatu, Schuster, Trevojevic. Well, Schuster won't be there. Um, Trevojevic, uh, GCKT, uh, which is Jordan <laughs> Chan Kum Tung. Uh, Sipley, Trevojevic, Bullymore. Yeah, the, uh, the team list that we've got was since yesterday, Schuster News. So that would be probably Ben Trevojevic on the edge, I'd imagine. Okay. If Schuster isn't available. Um, I will say, I would, I, I like Garrick at th- three, but I, I don't mind if Tommy Talao kills it in the in the trials. I, I don't think people really appreciate how good this guy was coming to the. You can talk about it, Guru. Like this guy was the Gyan outside back. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was very very handy, Tommy, and I. Uh, yeah. Big boy, big strong boy, young. Yeah, I don't think we've quite uh, seen the best of uh, Tommy Talao yet. So um, yeah, I think it'd be very interesting. I. I personally don't love Ruben Garrick at centre just because I absolutely love him as a winger. Mm. Um, and I think he's still the best winger at the club. Um, I think that 
I think he played three games at centre last year. Uh, one of them they dusted Dolphins, the Dolphins by 60-odd. Uh, and Ruben Garrick was great there. That was his first game at centre, but you win by 60, most centres are going to have good games. Mm. Um, I, I, once again, happy to fall on my sword, but I think he should still be on the wing. That's right. So him. would you go t- Tommy or Brad Parker in the centres? Um, that's the other problem. Yeah, I don't know which one of those two I'd go with, but I, I just prefer Garrick as a winger, and I'm happy to change if Brad Parker and Tommy Talao both just play solidly I'm putting Brad Parker in there every day of the yeah. week sounds like Great Parker's defense. moved into the back row yeah. from what I've heard really maybe yeah. he starts back row instead of Benny Trojevic maybe and yeah, again to clarify this is not what I would have for the 17s this is what I'm expecting and Ruben, I don't mind Brad Parker as a centre. Yeah, I, okay. I like Parker yeah. centres too. And yeah, I'm, check vibes. I'm with you, Guru. I prefer Ruben Garrick on the wing, but all the mail is that he's been training at centre and will play centre. So, yep. you know, lots changed in the preseason. If Tommy Taylor comes in and kills it at centre, they'll make a change. But that's how I see it lining up. You know the saying, like, all the mail is, is this? Do you reckon in, like, 100 years, I'll be like, all the DMs are this? Because <laughs> it's like, who gets mail? <laughs> Great move there too, who got mail? Great movie. I've never seen it. I just said it because it was great. <laughs> uh, um. Greg Mail, great Sheffield Shield batsman as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jake Travojevic at 13. Do, do, we, do we love it? Do we hate it? Do we think that he needs to get his, be allowed to be the ball player again like he was with his brother you know, a few years ago? Do we make him do all the tough stuff, get through the, the shit work? Thoughts? I want to see him ball play a little bit more, mm. like what he used to. Um, I also, I think though that if they were to go out and sign like an out and out thirteen, I would be happy to move Jerbo into the front row. Mm. But I'm not seeing that guy in this squad. Okay, thoughts, Timmy? <laughs> I like him as a as a ball playing thirteen. I okay. think he's got him. He's not the you know wax in D. Doesn't sort of make enormous meters as, as a starting front row. See, I, I like him as a thirteen. <laughs> Thumbs up for Jakey. How good? Um, get your thumbs out for Jakey. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a long time to catch on what I was going. I just joined in on the party. Like, <laughs> uh, anyway, it, they, they are super, like, super weird for me, eh? Because, like, when I talk about them, I get excited. But there's just this feeling. I just get this feeling of, like, it's just not settled. Something's not settled for me. Uh, but anyway, as I said, at the moment, I have them outside the eight. 9 to, um, I think I said 9 to 11, 9 to 12. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm probably 10 to 13 or 14. I've got them finishing 11th, so I'm going to go... What? Didn't you just say you had them in the 8? No, I'll tell you why if you let me finish, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Holy, thumbs <I've>, down. <laughs> what are we, nine, te- nine teams now? I'm sick of your shit. Nah. Uh, I've got him 11th, so I'll go 9 to 12. It's Tommy Chavoyevic, so what, he's... Finished one of his last five seasons, even that was 2021. Even then, he missed the first five rounds of the year. If I knew Tommy was fit and I believed it was going to happen, I'd have him top eight, but I don't think it will. What about the breaking news for Tim that Turbo can have an injury? <laughs> Thanks oh. for the insight. Big shift. <laughs> oh. uh, 10 to 12, and even with Tommy, just pushing for the eight, but I've got to miss him. They're my third flatly. They're in my eight. They're, uh, I've got them at seventh. $2.50 to make the eight. Um, I like what I see. I think there. How many Eltons we got to come? One more? One more to come. Don't go anywhere. Coming up after the break. <laughs> this is a paid advertisement from BetterHelp, our show partner this week. It's the start of a new year and we all have our own resolutions. Some of us want to get fit, some want to learn a new skill, and some of us want to watch more footy. But there's a lot of us that probably just want to improve our mental health. If you're thinking of getting a hand with your mental game, get in touch with BetterHelp. Their services are entirely online and designed to work around you and your schedule. We all need a little guidance from time to time. As the largest online therapy provider in the world, BetterHelp can provide access to mental health professionals with a wide variety of expertise in mental health. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash bloke. That's betterhelp.com slash bloke. So you get 10% off if you go to betterhelp.com slash bloke. All right. Now it's under the Dolphins, just quietly. Uh, just went down to South Dowling Street Sandwiches, best in the game. Yep. And the guy, I'm not sure if he owns it, but he manages it, I assume. Yep. All time greatest memories ever. So I went there once, one time, out of, and I've been here for years now. So it's the first time, this would have been like six months ago. Got my sandwich, didn't go back for at least two to three months. He saw me for the second time in his entire life and literally recited exactly what I got last time. 
Then we just had a six month break. Well, I had a six month break. You guys, we had an eight week break yep. going back there. We all just went back there just then, South Downing Street. This is in Alexandria. He literally told us all our orders and did it without us having to even tell him. And also what uh, type of bread we have with it as well. Individually, he remembered everyone's. And sauces. Yep. I didn't even know what my order was. I just let him go about his business. Yeah. Matter of fact, when you walk up, don't even say anything. You just give, Whatever <laughs> he gives you, that's what you actually wanted. Yeah. That's how good he is. He's predicting. He's like AI prediction. Yep. He sees you as a person goes, oh, yeah, that's a chicken snitty with a bit of cheese, lettuce. Yep. Experts uh, are saying that he could be the only threat to AI. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he started AI. Maybe he Maybe. is an AI robot. Well, that would make more sense, Because the bloody sandwiches are good. If AIs are taking the sandwich jobs, we're done. <laughs> If AI is taking over sandwich gigs, yeah. that'll ruin the economy. It will. Anyway. Drinking listens to blow? Mate, absolutely he does. Uh, so anyway, shout out South Downing Street. Best uh, sandwiches in all the land. Absolutely. And anyone from South Downing, promote that man down there. He's doing a great job. Oh, pay rise. Jeez yep. Louise. Anyway, it's not like we've got stuff to get to. Um, <laughs> Top five South Downing sandwiches. <laughs> Start with you. What is the greatest South Downing sandwich of all time? I'm a Jimmy man myself, Jimmy okay. Maloney. Shout out. <laughs> Alrighty, now we are on to the Dolphins. They finished ninth in attack. And in defence, they finished 12th. Um, look, it goes without saying, incredible first year. Yes, they finished towards the bottom end of the table. They got smashed with injuries. Um, their first half of the year was outstanding. I think that we all agree, a massive pass mark for the club. The fact that this club is in a better position than you know numerous other clubs in their first year. Has a you know a healthier system, a healthier squad, a healthier backing, is is honestly remarkable. Um, they had an amazing year. The challenge heading into this year for the Dolphins is that first year. It's a honeymoon phase, baby. Oh, we love each other, love you so much. And then like six months later, fuck, get up my first man. We don't want them to say <laughs> get up my face, man, to the NRL. We want to say we're still in the honeymoon phase. Yeah, fins up. Is that fair? Yeah. Very fair, yeah. I took the am, I, out of am I out of line here? That's exactly what we want to see. From okay, the okay. Um, so Dolphins, stay in the honeymoon phase. Stay in love, baby. Stay in love. The grass isn't greener. Don't go to AFL. Stay in NRL. Anyway, South Downing Street. Good, good, <laughs> good, good, good shot. Give me that. Uh, the, the there might have been something oil. in that, actually. Truffle oil in your life. <laughs> Holy heckers. Uh, <laughs> Dolphins, heading into this year, um, you could argue they've made the best signings of anyone in the competition. Um, I'd probably say they have. <clears throat> Uh, the only other, you, you've got uh, the, the Rabbitohs with uh, Whiten, but that's one player. You've got, um, who else would you suggest? Uh, RTS um, and with Catewell. Doggies Critter. But I, I truly believe that the Dolphins probably have the best signings. Herbie Farnworth, Flegler, Origin, Australian player. But Herbie Farnworth would probably be playing Origin if he could. Um, towards the end of the season, was probably the best centre in the game, barring maybe Critter. Uh, did, did Herbie end up winning Dallium Centre of the Year? Yep. Yeah, he yep. was one of them. Yep. So they've managed to sign guys before they hit the form of their career. So probably on unders. So, for example, Flegler, let's, let's all assume he's on 650 this year. That's unders for Flegler right now yeah. in the new salary cap. Um, and I'm going to be saying that for a while, guys, until we all get used to the new salary cap. It takes time, just like a new relationship. Um, <laughs> Guru? Yeah, look at those signings. Like, there's every chance Herbie Farnworth could be signing of the year. There's every chance Jake Avrillo could be most improved player of the year. Like bang for buck signing kind of yep. thing. Yep. And Tom Flegler could be the best like future signing. When you look at where their squad's at with an ageing forward pack, to sign a state of origin caliber front row forward like that who's going to lead them for the next decade or so, mm. that's incredible. And the other kid, um, Oren Keeley from the Newcastle Knights, very handy as well. You'll see him in their back row over the next couple of years. So What a name, Oren. I like Oren. that. Mm. I like that. Um, I guess uh, the Dolphins, it's wild to talk about a team that finished 13th being a raging success, mm. but that's exactly what they were. Mm. I think Tim's quote at the start of last year was they'd be lucky to finish 17th mm. and they defied the odds, had a fantastic season. Um, and I'm, I'm expecting more from them this year. Very Are you excited. expecting more from Tim this year with that terrible I call? Am, I am. Uh, to, to be fair, Timmy wore it very well. We had a I feel like he tried to deny here. it. I feel like he said, he, I never said that. That's what I heard him say. It was like, I never said that. I never said that. I said that would go really well at the start of the year and then they'd finish 13th. I thought that's what you said. I loved to the Dolphins' social media haunted him all year. It was fantastic. The year is 2024. <laughs> we have moved on. <laughs> <laughs> I've drunk my bloke tin out of a fin. <laughs> and they will win the comp this year. <laughs> <laughs> um, thoughts on the Dolphins heading into this year, mate? 
It's exciting. Uh, like the the twelve month difference in, in previewing this squad is just phenomenal and honestly even trying to put the starting seventeen together, I'm like, okay, you know, that they were good last year, what can they do this year? And you go, Oh, they've gained a couple of faces. Their depth is tremendous. Mm. In particular their forward depth. There is some like out and out pretend, probably starting NRL quality players they are gonna miss the seventeen to start this season. So roster wise, there's no reason why they can't be improved as you add in obviously the fact that seventy or thirty blokes who have gotten together and they now have a year under their belt of playing together, training together, all these combinations coming together. Wayne Bennett on top of all of that, they can be improvers. You touch on it, Kempi. Honeymoon phase, the hype around the Dolphins will be gone. It's just everyday business now. I mentioned before with with a couple of clubs about the emotion, the Warriors, the Knights of last year, and how that hype drives you so far. But it's wearing over time. Mm. How do the Dolphins respond to that? With Wayne Bennett at the helm, <coughs> probably pretty well. Yeah, I think that I've probably got them at the moment between ten and thirteen, um, which is it's it's bizarre because you'd you'd go, well, how's that exciting? Like they finished thirteenth. Again, it's it's more just a reflection of the squads around them. Like when we've got Manly sitting yeah. mm. at, in ninth, then you would go, well, okay, Dolphins probably do sit in tenth um, at this stage. Now, a Wayne Bennett coach side with Flegler and Herbie arriving, with Avril arriving, with Jeremy Marshall King playing an entire season, that could make the eight. I, I'd be shocked if they make top four. I don't, I don't think they could do that even with their full strength side. Now, Wayne Bennett has done crazier things, 2020, you know. He, he's done amazing things. At this stage, I think their highest possible uh, position with everyone staying injury free would be four to eight. But considering how the year always pans out, I've got them 10 to 14, 10 to 13 around there. A real key for them is, is obvious, and we'll get into Flegler and Farmworth in the back line and all that kind of stuff. And I'm sure you're going to talk about this too, Guru. It's Jerry Marshall King. Yep. You know, it's no surprise that when he was playing at the start of the year, they were essentially a top eight side at that point. He gets injured. I wouldn't say they fell off a cliff, but they definitely were nowhere near the side that they, they were the year before. But I'll let you continue to talk about JMK. I would have JMK in the top 10, if not potentially even pushing the top five of the most valuable players in this competition for teams. Um, As in... Ratio wise, yeah, as in like when you take him out of this side, how different they look without him. Mm. Um, and you know what? You, you said I wouldn't say they fell off a cliff, and maybe that is a little bit overs, but I didn't think it was far off. Mm. They just look completely different without him. You've obviously had your Tommy Turbos, your Callum Pongers at the very top of that list. Jeremy Marshall King would not be too low on that mm. list for me, he'd be very high up. And there. for clear for the listeners, you're not saying like top 10 player in the comp, you're saying comparison to where that team is with him in it, yeah. And without it. Yeah, so his value within yeah. that team is huge. Um, I think this year as well, very important thing to consider off the back of last year. And once again, he might not be a superstar, but he's incredibly important to this team is Sean O'Sullivan. Uh, they lost him for like a 10-week period last year, and it just caused absolute chaos mm. trying to find a halfback and whatnot. So hopefully SOS can put together a whole season. JMK can stay on the field. Think um, about how much better Katol was going to be for that year under his belt. 100%. Yep. You know, like, sometimes when you see a rookie come in, there was a lot of hype around Katoa because he was the next up at the yep. Panthers. He comes in, he has a solid year, and then, you know, fans, and, and I get it, I'm, I'm a fan too, I get caught up in the buzz of stuff. They kind of like, oh, lose focus on Katoa and go, oh, okay, maybe he's not um, as, as good as we thought he was because of all the hype coming into first grade. But, like, that's not usually how, especially young halves, that's not usually how it works. We're going to see the benefits of this year for Katoa. It's in three or four years' time is we're going to see the benefits from it. Yeah, and I'm not even hyping him up for this year. Mm. I saw he's got a lot of – he'll learn a lot of hard lessons over the next few years. And the Dolphins, I think they've still got a superstar on their hands there, but it's in three or four mm. years. Yeah. This is investment into – and it's smart by Wayne because he's deliberately selected a squad and a side. He, look, I'm sure he would never say this, but – I'm sure he's sitting there going, look, we're not going to win a comp in the first three years. Like, especially with how hard it is to recruit people at the moment. Everyone's contracted. If you watch the documentary, you can see that the available people actually off contract is like tiny. Yep. Um, and so I, I'm sure he's going, okay, if we're not going to win a comp this year, I get Katoa, I debut him early so that when that window does arrive, he's about to hit his straps. And I think that's what they're aiming for 
with a guy like Katoa. What do you reckon, Timmy? Yeah, he turns 20 in like two weeks. <laughs> and due to a few different scenarios, he's been thrust into positions that young halves probably shouldn't be in that. You know, with the Dolphins last year, O'Sullivan going down, so he was leading a team around at stages at that age. Did the same with Tonga at stages because they were lacking halves when he had no right to be doing that at his age and with his experience levels. And the credit to him, and I think will continue to be as he progresses throughout his career, is that it doesn't, like that can stunt the growth of some players because, you know, we see players get thrust into particularly the Origin Arena and even probably to a lesser degree internationals at times. And it can really stunt their development just because they can be cooked by the pressure cooker. But Katoa, seemingly at this stage of his career at 19 years old, has handled it fine. And the experience he's got ahead of so many rivals in his position at his age and even a few older ones, it's going to stand him in very good stead in a couple of years' time. Look at um, Sam Walker. You know, some people go, well, okay, well, look at Sam Walker. He was a teenager, came in and killed it. Yeah, he's coming into the Roosters. Isaiah Katoa is coming into a new club with a parves pairing of Sean O'Sullivan who, you know, and respectfully, like he was reserve seven at his old club. He wasn't a starting seven. He goes down. Like the pressure on this young kid, I mean, Wayne's done an incredible job in, in sheltering him from it, but the lessons he's going to be learning, like even Sam Walker, who had that incredible year, had to take a couple steps back this year to take a few steps forward. And so everyone's journey is obviously different, but to write off this kid yet, not, that, not to say that there's this huge push to write. I, I think everyone's pretty understanding. But I think that anyone that expected to, him to come in and just dominate, I think that's asking a bit too much. But as I said, I think we're going to see the dividends of this in a few years' time. Without a doubt. Um, I think another guy that he's not a signing, but he comes back into this side, and I'm going to pick a bone with Timmy. I cannot believe you've got Tommy Gilbert on the bench. I think he's one of the he's best. He's come back from in the injury, game. you pelican. <laughs> no. <laughs> one of the best in the game. This bloke. Wow, well, very oh, aggressive today. He's, you know, he's obviously a starting play for them, but what he missed a big chunk. Weird, of he's last got a fifteen season. next to his no? Wow, wow. This this is a bloke who's Jaden Braley's biggest fan and just said he'll be coming off the bench because he's come back from injury. Tom Gilbert's no different. <laughs> I, I would have Gilbert starting on the edge, um, and I'd be bringing Lemon Lemo off the uh, bench. If you scroll you have him on the edge, <laughs> yeah, probably because he played on the edge for Queensland, didn't he? Uh, yeah, you got injured. Yeah. I, I love him at 13, personally. But. If you want to read the analysis below that Sorry, team list. I apologise, I apologise. I'd be putting Bromwich to an edge and him at 13. Yep, okay. If you want to scroll down um, two lines, genius. The forward pack possesses nice depth that may <laughs> see Tom Gilbert play off the bench early in the year on return from a lengthy injury layoff. Once Gilbert is fully fit... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Holy, oh. hit a nerve there. Tell me about it. Jeez, you hate Tommy Gilbert, like, <laughs> refusing to put him into the starting side, mate. He just he just wants to play footy. Dolphins agenda. Wow. Dolphins. Yeah, he's trying I to, just he, hate people speaking ill of the Dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so th that's the thing. Like, a guy like Tom Gilbert, glad that we're on that topic. <laughs> um, Sorry, mate. <laughs> also flies under the radar because we're talking about an origin player here. Yeah. And I think that when he got injured early on last year, we just forgot about it. But... A lot of other teams, when they lose an Origin player, it's talked about all year long. Mm. Literally never spoke about it again after he got injured at Origin. Um, yeah, well, he hasn't played since whatever. He got injured round 10 or something. Round, round, yeah, 10, 12 or something. Um, so he's just going to bolster their forward pack. Uh, interested to see Kafusi again this year. Cannot wait. Like, just the hitman. Was it Finn Diesel? Finn Diesel, yeah. Finn Diesel. Around that, the back row and that question <coughs> looms. Let's say Tommy Gilbert does brain the trials and he's fit and good to go, starts at 13. What happens? Because they're in a great position. Let's say Felice Kafusi's locked in one edge. Canelli Lemuelu, who is under a bit of injury cloud at the moment, but let's say when he's at full fitness, Kenny Bromwich. What happens? Is it Felice and Kenny on the edges still, veterans of the team, and Lemuelu impact off the bench? Has Lemuelu done enough to stay in that spot? How do we see that? I'd go Bromwich Kofusi. <coughs> yeah. Just because, like, you, you're looking at top, top tier players. And they didn't have bad years by any stretch as well. So I didn't watch them and go, oh, that's an aging player that doesn't have anything to offer anymore. I mean, we saw Kofusi at the start of the year. He was absolutely flattening blokes. And there were moments where Bromwich was outstanding as well. And you just can't replace, you know, we look at the storm now and we talk about they miss Brendan Smith and they miss this player and that player. We very rarely talk about. What did Storm have problems with last year? Their edge defence. Yep. What has been so rock solid for them for like 10 years? Their edge defence. Why? 
Kofusi mm. and Bromwich. And so I, I'd, I'd probably put Bromwich in there. And I think Lemuelu is such an explosive type of player. I'd be, I'd be actually pretty excited to bring him on for 20 or so minutes or 30 minutes and get him just going ham. Just like, yeah. we need you exploding through the middle. Use your good footwork. Used to be a centre, so we know he can move. Uh, but I guess the question, and something probably you're alluding to, is if he continues to improve on last year's form, then maybe he does get that spot. Because if he's even better than last year, he was arguably their best back rower all, all year last year. You know, I know Kafusi probably would have been if he played the whole season, but stepping out and coming back in, you could, you could argue Lemuel Emilu was their best back rower. Sitting here this time last year, I would have told you and Aiken was probably one of their top five signings. He's not the starting side, and I don't think anyone bats an eyelid because their depth is just so good. So strong. I, I actually I went through and did my um, 17 the other day. I can't remember exactly how it looked, but I remember sitting there going, Aiken could miss this side because they've got yeah, so much Yeah, if he's not playing depth, really well, yeah, yeah, like, sure. Which is crazy. Which he is, was, 12 he, months ago, he was their best second rower and centre for me. And also, he played pretty well this year. Played great, yep. So it's, it's not like he's you know out of form or whatever. Uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, look, when you look at that bench too, Talk about just a really well-balanced bench. Cody Nikorima can play hooker, six, seven, like fullback, centre at a pinch. So he's got – and obviously hooker. You've got, got so many positions covered. Then you've got Gilbert, who we know can play on an edge, but definitely in the middle. Ewan Aiken, we know he can play on the edge, probably in the middle, but also centre. And, and then, then Lenuelo, Nichols the who can do the same. Exactly. It's, it's, a, it's a really well-balanced roster. And that's a, when you see something like this – and you see how well balanced this is, and ironically, who are we talking about a well balanced roster earlier? Warriors, who was their uh, recruitment officer? POS. POS. Um, <laughs> now he's obviously the Dolphins <laughs> recruitment manager. Talk about having a knack for balancing a squad out. You go go through some of these rosters, especially the bottom, some of the bottom tier rosters. It is so out of whack. It's like, and look, I know the Bulldogs are in a rebuild phase, but like that roster is so unbalanced. Like you, you don't even know who's going to be playing somewhere. So yeah, well, yeah. Whereas this one. Every position is covered. If there's injuries during the game, whatever, there's no weaknesses in it. There's depth. It's so balanced. Yeah, for a second year in the NRL, uh, another guy I want to talk about, guys. Your your twin, Hamiso, um, Hamiso <laughs> Tabuwafido, uh, Tabuwafido, Tabuwai. Is that Tabuwai Fido? Tabuwai Fido. Uh, like, what's scary about him is I don't even feel like we're at his potential yet. A whole year under Wayne, it looks like with uh, the signings of Herbie Farmworth and Avrilo, that centre position is almost locked, which forces him out of it, which is good at club land. He's, I mean, his origin is incredible at centre, but he's a fullback at club in my mm. opinion. Yep. You lock him in that fullback position and he's set the standard himself now of, Hamiso, you are no longer a player that's a rookie that can have quiet games. You are a marquee signing. Even, and what's crazy about him, he's on unders as well. He's on unders as well. He got signed before he, he exploded. <sighs> Played um, off the bench when he got signed. Oh, mate. What do you reckon they got him for? 500, 600? If, maybe. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was a, a bench four? player when they got him. He's was, was been there for an opportunity. Yeah, wow. Well. What do you reckon about four? Could, honestly, it could have been. Like, I, I, I'm not sure, but it, it could have been fours. <sighs> Talk about bargain signings. Holy oh, heckers. Oh, okay, sorry. The. NRL Zero Tackle have got him at 800, signed no, from 20. No, no way. No. Unless he extended. That's what I'm thinking. Like, it's probably extended. an extension rather yeah. than what they got him for. Yeah. That's through to 2027. Yeah. Oh, he extended? Yeah. yeah. Okay, fair. I mean, is there an argument to be made if he plays, as we know he can consistently, 800 into the unders? Definitely, yeah. With the, with the new salary cut? We, we saw the jump he made <laughs> in 12 months yeah. from 2022 to 2023. It could be the same level of jump from 23 to 24, full season at fullback. It's frightening. And, and what I like about him being locked in at fullback is, again, it's that idea of, mate, you cannot have quiet games. Like, if you come in and you've had five runs, 60 metres, as a marquee key player in our roster, a guy that's the face of the club, essentially, it, you just can't do that. You just you cannot do that. Whereas when you're a rookie that's like, sometimes we play your centre, sometimes we play your fullback, you can hide with that a little bit and then come out, have this incredible game, and it's okay. Whereas now with this big contract, it's like, it just, it just cannot happen. What do you got there, Matty? So he signed with the, uh, the Dolphins on a two-year deal, and then by about round eight or nine, it was 19th of April, he'd signed that five-year deal. Yeah, so they've just gone, mate, we need to get it now before it blows us out of the water. 
I was just having a look at this squad and um, outside of uh, Tommy Gilbert, I'm not going to bring that up again though. I agree with Tim's 1-17. Yeah. to I think it could be pretty much on the money. And I know that these guys aren't like superstars of our game, but they've got Milford, Edric Lee, Jared Wallace and Josh Kerr, four guys that have played Origin or been <coughs> in Origin camps that don't make their best 17. Did you say Jared Wallace might make their best? Oh. Yeah. He's not in that team at the moment. It's crazy. So he was one you, of their best players last year. I, I'd probably have Jared Wallace on the bench there somewhere. Who for? Be between him and Nichols or Aiken. Yeah. Okay. Wallace was outstanding for them last year. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, and then the other one, again, he probably doesn't creep in mm. through those, but even like Ray Stone. Yeah. Great football. Oh, He's not going to be there. Yeah. yeah. yeah thought about. And that's, that's when, you, when you, if you're a club that's struggling at the moment, it's got to piss you off. That you see something like this at a new club, yeah. and your club is like <clears throat> just grasping for, for for depth. Yeah, especially when you look a little bit deeper into their squad and you realise, okay, Flegler's young, Gilbert's pretty young. Um, they've obviously got Avrilo's young, Farmworth's young, young, Kessie's young, <laughs> but they've also got guys like Mason T, Jack Bostock, um, the five eight, like a heap of young guys who <laughs> fight. They're probably five years away from their best. And they're still playing at a high click now. Yep. I've seen a lot of chat around, and, and whether it's rubbish or not, about <coughs> Bostock potentially being a starting winger for them. Yep. Yeah, I saw a bit of chat around that too. Ahead of who? <clears throat> Tessie, I guess. Surely not. I think it would be Tessie. Who would you do? I'd go Tessie. <coughs> but, well, I mean, to be fair, if it is true, Bostock must be killing the preseason. Well, there's no way he'd be winger over us. No way Sarko's getting dropped. Was, yeah, Won't be a top, Sarko. Top yeah. point scorer so it'd have to be Tessie. Yeah. Oh, man, Tessie's still got so much more to give, I reckon. He's so good. Yep. He's, a, he's a bloody good young player. And, and because he's been in the game a while, you, you feel like he's like 26 years old. Mm. He's like 23, maybe. Could you check his age, please? I think he's 22, 23. Still super young. Plenty more to prove. And he's had patches of absolute brilliance out on the edge there. So, 22. 22. Tessie knew. Yeah. Because wow. he debuted really, really young, yeah. mm. really young. Maybe, uh, maybe Wayne's just sort of slipped the room out there to stick a rocket up Tessie and say, "Mate, you're not locked in." Yeah, I think also maybe Wayne's gone. You know, Bostock. Sometimes it's about body shape. So Bostock's a quite a tall, rangy winger. Yep. So maybe he wants a, a winger that he can kick to on that edge. Um, and he did play Tessie at centre last year, to be fair. So maybe it is something maybe there's down there. And there's another bloke we haven't spoken about, but Tafade. Um, you know, by all reports and by all images, and trust me, I've looked at the image, baby. Fit as anything. Fit as anything. Uh, look, probably not going to be a bloke starter, bloke starter yet, but keep, keep training, baby. Keep training. Um, another guy that would it surprise you if Tafade gets a shot through injury and just stays there the whole rest of the year and he's a, he's a breakout star? Yeah. It not would possible. surprise you or wouldn't? No, I wouldn't, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> it would not not surprise me. <laughs> Nothing could possibly go wrong. <laughs> that's the first thing that's gone wrong. Um, okay, let's talk about Flegler and Herbie. Uh, just to land those two players with all the clubs that had the option to to go for them, like it's Wayne Bennett Magic One Hundred and One. Yeah, like I was surprised the Roosters didn't go after Flegler to be the replacement for Hargreaves because Spencer Linu, who it looks like is the replacement for Hargreaves, he's a very different player. Mm. Whereas the closest thing to Hargreaves is Flegler. Now Flegler's you know, probably got a bit more about him in, in regards to offloads and, and footwork, but just that gritty edge Flegler has. Um, and Flegler, as I, I think that just, I guess, seeing some of the things he said and just the way he plays, I think he wants to be the main alpha dog. And at the Broncos, he was always Haas, Carrigan, Flegler. Yep. Whereas he comes into this, um, this roster, and look, obviously Jesse Bromwich is the alpha dog, but he's the old kind of aging guy that says, well, you can be the front and center of it. I can just teach you everything I've learned and, and just try my best to support what you need to do. And it, it almost, if you're the, the, the tip of the spear, it can open other things in your game that you may not be able to do when Payne Hass is a tip of the spear or Paddy Carrigan's a tip of the spear. So I'm excited to see if he can go to another level, level Flegler, because this may be, for Queensland, this may be the best thing that could have happened to Flegler because yeah. you may be yeah. setting him up to be the alpha dog of a pack. In two years' time, he's the alpha dog of the Queensland pack, takes over whoever is, you know, Lindsay Collins is there now or wh whoever is there now gets selected this year. So thoughts? Yeah, really happy for you. That's good. Um, but yeah, I, I think that even if you don't see the absolute best out of Flegler now, I think this is a guy that 
he's going to pay dividends for the next half a decade. Mm. Um, such a good spot to be in, getting a guy like him and a real, real opportunistic signing. Mm. Just smart to look around the league and find a guy like him. Um, it's, it really is incredible when you look at the guys that they've recruited, the depth they've got. I, I think Jake Avrilo has got so much potential on this side too. I don't know, I mean, what have we got? Jermaine, Jermaine Osako is the favourite for top point score. Great. I reckon outside Avrilo, he could score more tries this year. Ball playing centre? He, he's a gun, Avrilo. Whenever he plays centre for Canterbury, the, they don't know how to score points. He, he just produces stuff all reckon, the time. Um, Wayne will play him at seven at periods. Oh, you'd have to, wouldn't you? <laughs> Well, that's, that's with Avrilo, like, attack's never been his issue, has yeah. it? Like, if you look at a point scoring, that sort of stuff. Oof. Apparently he's training the house down too, which is always good to hear. Defen- yeah. Defense will be the big one. Yeah. He's um, been chopped and changed between positions. I think Few- Wayne Bennett will he'll shore that up. You'd think you'd he think he would. I'll never doubt Wayne again. So you're saying, Guru, you reckon Avrilo's got more tries in him than Asako, potentially? No, no, Asako uh, might get more tries. Asako might Asako's get more tries. got more tries in him, potentially, this year. Because right. you've got, a like, a ball-playing centre. He's... He is run first, but he's very cognizant of his Man, winger. He gets an offload every yeah. time. His, his timing is impeccable. Yeah. And he is a former seven as well, which yes. helps. Um, okay, boys. What a time to be alive that was. <laughs> Rubber meets the road. Rubber meets the road. I have the Dolphins between 10th and 13th. Yeah, I've got 11th to 14th. I've got them finishing 13th. Uh, and I'll go 11th to 14th as well. Yeah, I've got them 13th too. Um, and I think they'll be 13th. I've got them 13th to 15th, but they, they could punch above their weight. But I've got them 13th. So have you got them 13th? I've got them 13th. Okay. I also have them 13th. I do. I've got, I've you got, got them 13th? I think there's a big drop between 13th and the bottom four teams. But I've got these guys. So they're basically the top four of the bottom <laughs> four. Bottom eight. Yep. Yep. They're at the top of that. So I've got them 13th. And... Um, <laughs> Just a few markets around them, I suppose, to, to make the eight if you are optimistic about them, 350. If your fins out. If you, if you, exactly. If your fins are up, uh, $3. If you've got your fin out right now, listen. <laughs> yeah. Listen up. Uh, 350 to make the eight. Dollar 28 to miss, uh, which I think we all, I think we've all got them there. Jermaine Asako, last year was the top point scorer for the comp. What do you, what do you reckon he was playing last year? $32. Oh, hundreds. He would have been. 100 yeah. to 1. Yeah. And he came home and he did it. This year, he's the $4 favourite. Wow. Um, That'll get your fin moving. Yeah, big time. <laughs> Would have got your fin moving last year if you were on him. 100 to 1. <sighs> oh, okay. This side, they could be, honestly, they could be one of the most improved sides on the field and not move on the ladder at all. And that's why it sounds so, if you're a Dolphins fan, you're sitting there going, how's this an exciting year for us? We're about to finish in the same spot as we finished last year. Yeah. But I just... You're future-proofing yourself this year, though, for me. Uh, but also, I, again, I'd look at the other rosters and you would have to assume Cowboys are going to improve. You'd have to assume Rabbitohs is obviously going to improve. Like all the Manly, if, if Tommy is, is fit, you know, there's a lot of rosters that can... I think the standard of NRL is going to be quite high this year. It would be great to see the Dolphins have a very good injury run this year and just see what they can yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, completely injury-free with a bit of Wayne Magic. There's a top eight there. There, there definitely is a top eight there. And in terms of <clears throat> really pushing, pushing to the top eight, I kind of just feel like maybe they're lacking the superstar that a lot of clubs we've got listed above them have. That being said, Tabu Ifido, he's the man that, as I mentioned, it wouldn't surprise me to see if we're having conversations about him in the like top, top echelon of fullbacks by the end of this year because he, he would go so far. If he does, he could be that superstar that mm. takes me into the top eight. Yeah. And then you've got, like, Herbie could have another stellar year. Flegler could – you know what I mean? And then, who knows, Katoa could be ahead of schedule in yep. regards to his development. Uh, okay, now, on to the Dragons. Don't forget, grab a case of bloke beer from your local. If you enjoy the podcast, support it. It's also a beautiful beer. On to the Dragons. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> no, joking. I'm joking, Dragons. Relax, relax. Um <laughs> <laughs> okay, last year, bit of a tough year, a uh, bit going on. Bit happening. Last half full kind of guy, still in the comp. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking, peoples. Uh, this, I, I just lean into it because like, I saw these comments the other day of like, apparently I hate the dragons. I'm like, what? And I've got a, that one of the comments was I've got an agenda. Uh, there's a media agenda and I'm a part of it. Like, what? 
Like, what what do I get out of that Such agenda? Such a sellout, Kempi. But like, also like, as in no, but I am the one pushing it. Oh. But then you think like, what do I gain out of that? Am I getting paid by big NRL to? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, so last year, obviously a tough year, but let's let's go in this glass half full, boys. Let's go in glass half full. Shane Flanagan, premiership winner. Shane Flanagan works in chaos extremely well. If there is one coach, or not one coach, but he is one of a few coaches that if you had a team that was b- their backs against the wall, he's the guy that you get in the, in the changing room. He's, his ability to galvanise a gritty, rough, everyone's against us, you know, kind of mantra, he's honestly one of the best, you know. For example, you go and watch that Sharkies grand final, their vitriol towards the Storm side, like you could feel their hate towards that Melbourne side. And they, they really didn't have a reason to hate, like outside of Storm being so dominant. But you could see when the Sharks played the Storm, there was a genuine hatred there. And that was a mentality that Flano had, it's, I see him, I assume, I don't know, I wasn't in there, that he had instilled in them this kind of chip on their shoulder, like who do these Storm guys, they think they're better than this. And so you look at this Dragon side, if there is a fairy tale to be written this year, like, that's your starting point. It's yeah. Flano getting the boys revved up. No one believes in us. Let's do something special this year. Uh, Guru, what do you think? Yeah, and if you're Shane Flanagan, it's a fun canvas to work with. Mm. Like, you know you've got a good leader up in, in Benny Hunt there. He reportedly wants to be there now, so that is fantastic. That's the, the glass is overfilling all of a sudden. Now but also, like, wants to stay. it's a massive win for Flano. Yeah, huge win. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I am very, very excited as far as Dragons go. I want to see Zach Lomax at fullback. Mm. That's my biggest wish and want. For this side, I've heard rumours that he could play him on the wing and move between him and Sloan throughout the game. Smoke and mirrors, I reckon. Yeah, it's bullshit. Just dive in the pool, put Zach Lomax at fullback. Like, go all in. Yeah. Go all in, Lomax at fullback, he's your man. And it's it's the best of both worlds because Lomax in a, in a very strange spot in his career, you know, if he has another quiet year with the wicket that he's on, mm-hmm. it's going to change the rest of his... Because he's going to have to take unders to go elsewhere. Um, and obviously the Dragons aren't going to re-sign him on a massive wicket. Uh, just trying to see... How long has he signed 2026. For? Oh. Oh. I mean, he has, he has to be the guy. So if you're looking at it from a pressure and pressure makes diamonds, this could be the best thing for, for the Dragons because... Uh, sorry, for Dragons fans... Because you'd have to assume the Dragons, when they look at their salary cap, they look at the talent that Zach Lomax has. That's the perfect recipe for putting a lot of pressure on a guy with as much talent as any outside back in the competition, bar none. Seriously believe that. If they can get the best out of him, you've got a marquee elite outside back killing it. He's the only player in their squad that can play in the spine that is signed beyond 2025. Yeah, wow. Got to be there for me. So you've just got to you've got to bite the bullet. It's almost crazy he's been playing centre. How bad could it go? Yeah. Well, it did go. He killed it when he played fullback last year. Yeah, it was, it was a good great. two games. Um, Why they changed, I have no idea. I will never understand. Never understand. Uh, so yeah. So it's, it's exciting from a narrative perspective. It is exciting from a narrative and the potential of this all working out and backs against the wall. But if I have to be honest, I do have them in my 13 to 17 position. Um, I just don't know when you stack them up against some of these other rosters whether they can go a full year. Can they go 12 rounds? Yes. Can they go 26 rounds or 24 or 27 with the, with the top tier sides or the top 10 sides? At the moment, I would say, no, they can't. Yeah, if we're being like completely realistic, Kempi, you sort of look at the squad they've got together and you look for upsides and there are a lot of question marks about how far this side can go and how many games they can realistically win. And uh, look, I'm no different. I, I To what the most of the critics out there are saying, I have them finishing pretty lowly. But you nailed on the head. Flano's the man you want for the job. Shane Flanagan in this position because he loves it. He'll use it to get them up. He'll use it as motivation for, out, for them throughout the entire year and he, he'll get them to buy into it. So... Who knows what they can produce? Look, I'd be stunned if they, you know, made the top eight. But what Flano can do is do what he did with Cronulla to lesser squad, but just turn them into this tough, grindy football side that grinds out two and four point victories and can get them towards the the pointy end of the of the bottom half of the table. 
I, look, I'm not saying they will. I don't think they will, but they've got the man for the job. Mm. Some positives. Uh, I think Jaime Sele is a great signing. Yep. I think uh, Raymond Fatella Mariner, uh, if he stays injury free, good signing. Uh, it does, look, it, des- it definitely improves their forward pack, bringing Sele in and Fatella Mariner. Uh, Sele's a great player. He's a great a really player. And I thought he was a big loss for the uh, yeah, Rabbitohs. The, the key with those two, as you said, they Perfect. need to just stay on the field. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, the, the, the brief patches that you see them, they go really well. Yeah. But the problem is there's just not enough consistent footy. Imagine how good they can be with 10 games under the belt, 12, 15 in a row. It feels like Harm Sello <laughs> plays six great games mm. and then has a niggling injury for four weeks consistently for two years. Yeah. Is that right, Matty, or is that, like, yeah. you've watched him closely? Especially like last year, like yeah. he was, yeah, you're right. And he, he can't be, he'd absolutely kill it. But yeah, last year was a bit of a frustrating one for him. I think uh, Jaden Sewer, really interesting watch this year. Um, we know his potential. We know yeah. how good he can be. Um, got a bit unlucky with a few ridiculous send-offs uh, that weren't head highs. But anyway, we won't get into that. I think it was a while, a while ago now. Um, Just throwing back, Kempi, sorry to, to circle back. But <clears throat> around the fullback spot, it is so important for him this year because... The forward pack are a bunch of toilets. They'll do a job. They'll sort of, you know, near enough match a lot of opposition forward packs without probably getting on top of a lot of them. Where do their points come from, though? And obviously Benny Hine, but outside of him, if Zach Lomax can thrive at fullback or if Tyrell Sloan gets the gig there and can round his game and be the fullback that everyone's hoping he can become, it changes so much for them. Oh, absolutely. But there's so, a lot of question marks. There's a lot of question marks. So last year, 16th in attack. And 14th in defence. Uh, so, and then when you look at their squad and you go, okay, has it improved that much compared to the, the year before? Probably not. Probably not. Um, but as you just suggested, Zach Lomax killing it at fullback, it does elevate them. Now, I don't think it elevates them in the top eight, but there's, I, I would be shocked if they've got Lomax at fullback killing it and they're 16th in attack. I would be shocked. He's too good of a player. Too good of a player. Uh, now, predicted 17 from Timmy. Lomax at one. Bang I, I hope I'm saying that right. Bang I uh, at two. Suli, three. Bird, four. Ravalawa. Oh, speaking of positives, Ravalawa was outstanding for them last year. Really, really good. And we talk about, like, Sivo earlier. Like, Ravalawa's year, like, they're similar-ish size and, I mean, massive, massive bodies. I, I felt like Ravalawa did exactly what you want him to do for the Dragons last year. Um, and that's scored, probably what Tiffa could do. He scored so many tries last year, he had absolutely no right to do. Mm. Uh, Flanagan predicted to be six. Uh, Benny Hunt, seven. Sele, eight. Little, nine. Laurie, 10. Sua, 11. Russell, 12. Delabellan, 13. Uh, Mul- Mulasine, 14. Molo, Francis Molo, 15. Michael Molo, 16. Eisenhuth, 17. Um, like when you look at that starting thirteen, it's it's solid, it's solid. Uh, but again, I just it's just that punch. Now, as I said, Jaden Sua, really interesting watch, really interesting watch. Had a great year at the Rabbitohs, was good at the Broncos coming through. Um, just struggled a little bit with injuries and suspension over the last year or so. So, if if they're looking for punch in the forward, a guy like Sua finding his best again, still only I think twenty six years old, so Jeez. still relatively young. He can really find the punch they need through the middle there. Like, I know he's on the edge, but you know, with his yep. running in that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I thought Dan Russell looked really good last year. Got an opportunity at the back end of the season. I looked with him. I've heard that Tommy Eisenhut could start on that edge. Okay. Coming from the Melbourne Storm. So I don't mind Tommy starting on the edge. I love Tommy starting. Experience from a great club with great systems. You just rely on him. Yeah. You know what you're going to get. Um, and, and so if, if Eisenhut was on one edge... Would you be basically saying to Sua, then you need to be our punch on the other edge? Bloody you need I to be our punch regardless. Yeah, regardless. Yeah, 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 okay. Yep. For sure. I, I'd be, if I was fun, I'd be really challenging Jaden Sua yeah. this year because um, the ability's there. A um, little bit deeper than their squad. Um, Viliami Fafita, I reckon he's one that you will see this year as a forward. Um, I think he can play sort of edge or middle. I think that Flano will go into this season with a heap of jerseys in the middle of them outside of probably the seven and go... We'll see who grabs it. Mm. And I reckon Vili Army Fafita could be one. Another one to keep an eye on that I really like is Tamale. He's uh, a centre winger. I think he's more of a centre. Uh, another one that could – they have injuries in the centres or something. I think he could be a player of the future okay. for them. So there are a couple of guys 
there. My next question, does anyone know what's going on with Cody Ramsey? I noticed that they've got 29 roster spots there. He's not on it. Is he the 30th or is he not part of it? Do we... Because he's on the club website. Um, but they've also I'm got, sure. I think, six developments. They're probably players. just tracking it to see how he's going. Tracking so. how he's going, yeah. Uh, just quickly, have you heard of Hamish Stewart? Yep. Uh, he is a fullback, I believe. Signed um, 24, 25, 26, and the 27 is a player option. Yeah. That is unheard of. Let me double check that. I'm pretty sure he's a fullback, though. Bloody hell, he must, he must be good. Did Hamish Stewart not play in one of their trials this year, Timmy? I don't remember him. Doesn't ring a bell. I mean, look, I, I've, I haven't seen him play, I don't know, but the fact that they've got him on such a long contract and he has a player option in his favour mm. for 27 would surely suggest this kid's got something about him. Surely. Uh, I, got the, I got the news on Ramsey. So basically, he's, he got a contract extension and that was out of goodwill from the Dragons. Uh, so it's which, is t- good, which is good on the Dragons. Well, well it, it, it gets better. So it doesn't count towards a salary cap because he's not playing, but the Dragons have funded it themselves. It's not the NRL. So the Dragons actually pull, uh, gone into their own pocket for that nice. one. So that's why he's on the list because it's not towards the salary cap. He's not technically on the roster right now, but yeah, he's thereabouts. That's bloody good from the Dragons. So, you know, we've been super critical of him for a while now, but that's, I can fit, that's good really good go. Really good go. Uh, all I can get on Hamish Stewart doesn't provide a position weirdly enough, but he came off the bench in reserve grade a number of times last year. Never started, so I'd assume he's probably a forward then. Okay, a forward. I'm not too young sure. Young forward, but yep. yeah, signed for three years. Jeez, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah excited to see how he goes. Uh, Flano at six. Well, at six ish, but kind of sounds like Shane Flanagan has said that he's going to uh, like take the organising off Benny Hunt to, I guess, ease his mind to focus on the attacking stuff. Again, I'm, I'm yeah, interesting to see how that plays out. So we'll say six, but he'll be seven at times. Thoughts? Uh, yeah, I've got no idea how this is all going to play out. Um, I mean, in an ideal world, if it all goes perfectly and Flano plays that role and Ben Hunt's allowed just to play off his head a little bit, I can see the positives to it. Mm. Um, is Flano ready to lead a side at halfback that's is behind a pack that, in my opinion, won't be winning too many battles. Mm. That's the big challenge. And we have sort of seen Flano in those situations, and it's not a Flano thing. It's Unless your name is Andrew Johns, most halfbacks yeah. can't win when your pack's on the back foot. Um, <laughs> in saying that, Ben Hunt's probably one of the few guys that have shown mm. that he can sort of do it. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know how this all plays out, Kempi. I'm trying not to be negative, negative, but I am very nervous about them. Just the pressure, just the pressure. So much right? pressure. Like and then, you know, out. it's the article writes itself for yeah. the newspapers, being Flano Sun and whatnot, like it's a just a shit spot to be in. I guess, you know, if you're looking at it from a perspective of he's one of the best at just everything's against him and he finds a way to fight through, maybe that'll help. Yeah. Flano if anyone's going to get the best out of Kyle, yeah. surely. going to be his dad. Yeah. Uh, interesting to see how they use Little. Uh there were obviously whispers that Flanagan was going to play a bit of nine. Uh, Little, even though he was their best hooker last year, they were really re- reluctant to give him more minutes. He was actually getting, I think it was like 40, 50 minutes sometimes. Really weird. Yeah, very, very oh, strange. Yeah. But so, I thought he was, well, I think we, we spoke about him at length uh, on the podcast and thought he was good every time he started. Yeah. Adds a bit in attack, got a good running game. Decent enough motor on him. Another bloke who's just been really injury plagued for a few years now, just little injuries time and time again, but if you can string some games mm-hmm. together, which he started to do last season, he's mm-hmm. a good number nine. Um, yeah, look, another positive, Black Glory, easily the best year of his career last year. Absolutely yep. outstanding last year. Uh, I'm really excited to see what happens to the, the Dragons. Uh, Concern, I, sorry, mate. Sorry, no, sorry, you go, you go. Uh, depth, such an issue in, in key positions. I think they've got a lot of forwards that will come in and can do a job, whether it is starting off the bench. But, you know, between the question marks at fullback already, look, if Lomax and, and Sloan both kill it, happy days in a great spot. But question marks about who's even going to be the number one. If Kyle Flanagan doesn't hit the ground running at number six, who comes in there? Jacob Little at number nine. Like, who's the backup to him? Probably Mole Eisen. There's The depth isn't great in key positions. Hammy? I mean- I am not going to be his glass half full with the Dragons okay. as a Tigers fan. <laughs> We've had some big spoon bowl clashes with the Dragons over the past couple of seasons. Uh, and they are actually outright favourites for the spoon, the Dragons. $3.25. 
Usually you see these markets for the Tigers, but this year it's the Dragons. They've gone up today. Dragons versus the Spoon, uh, which is a market. Uh, will they get <clears throat> under two and a half wins, which would be less than the buy? Bang on three, which is equal to a buy, equal to the buy, or, or uh, over three wins as well. So, yeah, I think they're in for a bit of a tough year. I think the depth you, you touched on there, Timmy, um, is going to be a big issue for them. Flano's a good coach, <clears throat> but I think year one, new coach, new club, I don't think you can expect too much. You've got to give them a year or two to kind of get the, the roster together that they want, and I think it'll be a tough slog for them. So, yeah, I have them, I have them down the bottom as well. All right, I've got them, um, I've got them bottom four. Yeah, bottom four, definitely. Bottom two and wooden spoon. Bottom two. Spoon. Okay. Now, on to the Mighty Milk, Canberra Raiders. Um, very hard team to judge. Very hard team to judge. Because, first of all, I hate Tim. But <laughs> second of all... Um, <laughs> When's this anger shifted off Maddie and onto me all of a sudden? <laughs> Second of all, <laughs> I really felt that they overachieved last year, and that's a compliment to them. That really is a compliment. Um, it's hard to say it's a rebuild right now when you look at their forward pack, but at the moment, it's most likely looking like they're going to have a rookie six, a rookie one, and a nine that we're not really sure on getting a lot of minutes. They're all key positions. Um, unfortunately, I don't think they make the eight this year i actually think it's going to be a tough year for the raiders but i think i don't think it's by design it's going to be a tough year but what i like about the raiders in this current specific like situation is they've made it extremely clear that you know i think it was like start of last year i said instead of going out and buying big i think the raiders need to go get the best young talent coming out of school go big on them and then build them through and that's exactly what the raiders have done um, they've got the gun center five eight that played Origin, killed it under nineteen. Ethan Strange, Chevy Stewart. They've got the Eels half coming uh, in twenty five, maybe is that, earlier. Is that confirmed? I think so. Yeah, sweet. Want to be? Uh, so so in key positions, they've made key recruitments the best coming out of school. But I do think it's going to be a bit of a tough year for the Raiders. Timmy, you go. Let us know what you think, mate. Yeah. Look, uh, honestly, a little bit. Concerned going into the season, mate, and I think we're in a very much a transition phase. And look, the team that is likely to run out round one suggests that. You look at stalwarts of this team for a long time. We know Jack Whiten's obviously departed. Elliot Whitehead, Jordan Rapana, blokes probably retiring at the end of this season. Josh Papali'i, maybe one or two good years left in him. <clears throat> All very good NRL players in their own right, but they're very much at the pointy end of their career. <clears throat> I think they can hold up and have good seasons, but every veteran of the game, there's that, that final season where you go, did they go one too long? I don't think they have, but it's a real possibility. Well, I, think, I think a key to that as well is like, you may not be in a situation where they've gone one year too long, but what you are pretty sure on, or what we are pretty sure on, they're not going to be at their best. Yeah, they're not going to be at their best, and how far can we go with all these, you know, very much twilight of the career players? <clears throat> so then we look to... The rookies that you mentioned in Chevy Stewart, in K.O. Weeks, Ethan Strange. So much talent mm. for the future. The prospects on these players are, are enormous. So that's exciting. And, you know, where I might be wrong and go, all right, maybe we can compete for top eight spot is we need at least one, probably two of these blokes to hit the ground running mm. and mature quite early on in their careers. Yep. Chevy Stewart's one I'm very excited for. Whether it's, I expect him to play fullback round one, but he's young. Maybe they do go with the experience of Xavier Savage. I think there are a lot of spots in this lineup that are up for grabs in the trials. I'd be surprised if Ricky Stewart had a lot of these spots locked in. Uh, so, yeah, look, I'm leaning towards being probably a tougher year for them. We know with Ricky Stewart and the Raiders, they will be tough as hell. They'll be gritty. Mm. They'll get tight wins. They won't give it up in contest. Mm. But is there enough talent to push top eight i'm not convinced mm. yeah i think a lot of people tipping them for the spoon i think that's over the top ricky i don't think he'd allow it i think Jeez. he'd pull his team Cole's out of comp too strong down there they're too gritty to yeah. finish last for me i don't think they'll be in the top eight but I, i'd be shocked if ricky's raiders finish eight this year uh, i agree with everything timmy said you're gonna have to ask way too much of a lot of young guys um it's gonna be hard lessons learned but i think it will Pay dividends in the future. Um, Chevy, I'm very high on him. I think he's got a huge future. I probably don't think he's ready for first grade right now, but I think he is the best option. 
to just start that process. Well, especially in a year where, look, I'm not, Ricky would never sit there and go, boys, we're not going to make that. Who gives a shit? No way. He would never do that. But in a year where it's like, are we going to win a comp? Just get him in there. Get yeah. that year yeah. under his belt. Especially if he's mentally can cop it. And by all reports, these young fellas are super mentally strong and confident. I think you just get him in there and build for the future. We, we just spoke about Isaiah Katoa at the Dolphins mm. and it was named to start from memory <laughs> round one last year, which became a little bit of a surprise. Same thing, Wayne going, geez, that's going to benefit us next year, even if it's not the best option for round one. It ended up being fine. But same thing with Chevy. Yeah. Get him in there. Oh, I think so. You just get him in there, <clears throat> get him learning the flow of the game, getting used to, you know, the players around. If it's KO Weeks, it gets that six roll, more time with him. Um, bit, bit of a, a sidetrack, but... I think a really interesting player in this whole roster, I know they're stacked for forwards. Trey Mooney is only signed for 2024 this year. Mm. Now, we're talking about a guy that uh, has killed it in reps, has played solidly when he's got his opportunities, uh, was great and under-19 reps against Queensland this year as well. Surprised that he's only signed for 2024. The Raiders probably are opening themselves up to lose a guy like Mooney if they haven't already re-signed him. Um, what is exciting though for Raiders fans, off-contract players usually have a bloody good year. And the reason for it, Kemp, is it's not so much that I, I think Mooney underwhelmed or anything last season or like heading into this season, he's currently not quite in my predicted 17, but it's because of the depth in this forward Crazy. pack and because we don't splash out enormous money on stars because we struggle to attract them in Canberra, it does mean you have generally have a really deep roster. And you look at like the bench this season, Emre Gula was terrific last year, um, future Bloat FC member Zach Hosking on 16, <laughs> Adam Mariotta, 17. They've got Pasami Solo as well, who I thought was terrific at the back end of last season. So it's we've got a bit of a luxury and depth in the forwards. <clears throat> um, why Trey couldn't push into that for, but for round one, he might. Mm. So it's a good spot to be in. And I think with the, the Raiders is that, you look at the Melbourne Storm and like clearly, you know, leaps and bounds ahead of, um, of where the Raiders are at. But like the Storm's problem is, their forward pack is a little bit light on. If Ricky can land these young guys and nail their development, they're gonna be coming into first grade on unders. So you're gonna have these gun young halves, fullbacks, yeah with this incredible forward pack. So there's, there could be a year where the Raiders genuinely go from you know 12th, 13th to literally top four that next year, yeah. just because those key positions are being filled by rookies in their second or third year. We have so many middles. Melbourne are lacking middles. Player swap, perfect. You have Mariotta, we need a spine player. You give us Pappy, give us Munster. <laughs> it works for both teams. <laughs> I will say I am keen for uh, Atta. Mariotta, he is. He was outstanding. Like, and what's scary with the Raiders, specifically to their forward pack, they go up to Newcastle. Injuries. Everyone wrote them off. When we talk about Flano, likes the, he's back against the wall. Ricky, he builds the wall. He builds the wall and then puts his own back to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, he loves it. He loves it. And what's scary is that you had guys like Mariotta come in and play as good as a Papali'i when he's playing well. You know, that, that's how. You know, good this young forward pack is at the Raiders right now. I was huge on Trey Mooney coming into last yeah. year. Marriott is the one that's got my yeah, attention now. Absolutely. Also, this for Trey, I just had a look at his New South Wales Cup stats last year. Um, played about 25 odd games or something like that in the front row. Of those 25 games, about 12 of them, he played 70 plus minutes. So he's a goer. He loves yeah, it. Yeah, like he's going hard. You have a look at his stats for this year. Playing in the front row, 17 games, um, seven tries, whatever, 65 tackle breaks. Um, he's averaging about 60 post-contact metres, 150 metres, 18 offloads. Jeez. Pretty handy. Bloody good for how many games he played. Yeah. Um, and being a young fella as well. Yeah. So I wonder whether that's him not re-signing yet because he's looking at his options because he could probably get a fair whack somewhere else as a good forward. Um, Elliot Whitehead, his last year, I actually think he'll be super missed by this side. Oh. Super missed. I, I really believe that he's the glue that really keeps the side together. It might sound like an obvious thing to Raiders fans, but like outside looking in, he doesn't get the shine of a Tarpanair or a Papali'i or a Hudson Young. But there's an argument to be made he's, you know, outside of Tarpanair right now, there's an argument to be made he's their most consistent forward. I want to say that like when C.S. Oliola left, Elliot Whitehead took over as the spiritual leader of the Canberra Raiders, but I don't think Elliot Whitehead and spiritual have been used in the same <laughs> sentence before. <laughs> but I, I don't know what their plans are for him when he does retire. But 
I would love to think that there's some role Surely. in the club for Elliot Surely. Whitehead because you're right, we, we will miss him so much, but if they can keep him in to some degree in and involved in the club. And this is the big worry heading into 24. If they get to the end of this season and none of these young guys have jumped out of the ground and we're farewelling Jordan Rapiner and Elliot Whitehead, leaves the Raiders in a very tough spot. It's a crucial season this yeah. year. And it's a, it's a big all-in on these young guys in key positions because if they're a bust... Because the thing is, if you go into the market and you sign someone for a big wicket, you've got runs on the board, you know that they can perform at an NRL level. So there's much more of a guarantee they're going to come down. At the very least, they're going to deliver a decent NRL standard. When you go young, it's a, it's a huge risk-reward. You know, A lot of risk, a lot of reward, but also if it doesn't work out, you, you've sat there, spent the last two to three years that you could have instead gone out and purchased an experienced key position player and you're behind the eight ball even further than you were when you were first got them. And I hope not, but I reckon there is every chance that we get to midway through the season and potentially Josh Popoli, he says, maybe that's enough for me to... I reckon it's probably what he's... I wouldn't be surprised if he retired this year. Yeah, wouldn't surprise me either. Mate, talk about a tough, tough hombre. Like, oh my God. What he's put his body through is actually outrageous. All those origin games, all those big games for the Raiders, all the times you guys needed to try, and instead of looking to your winger to score the match winner, Papaliti rolls around in the front row and scores the match winner. Yeah. It's um, a joke how many times a front row has been our saviour. Seriously. Uh, <laughs> some really key points uh, in the halves. Jeez, there's a lot of pressure on Fogarty this year. Mm. Um, you know, he, I really like Fogarty as a player. He's a good, solid seven but he just can't afford to not ice games this year. You know, last year you could, you could go, okay, Fogarty, you should have nailed that, but because Jackie Whiten's the big dog, you go, you could kind of diffuse it and be like, Jackie, why weren't you the one to... This year, it's all you. It's all you. I spoke about Jeremy Marshall King earlier being so valuable to his team. <laughs> Him, just down. out of necessity, oh. shoots up that list. If he goes down, like, who's their seven? Yeah, if he has a yeah. bad year, we're in all sorts. Sam might get a call up. He might. Straight from Creamy Roos. <laughs> we had a, good, a couple of good ones <laughs> waiting around last year um, in Frawley, and I, I really rate Brad Schneider, who's off. He's with the Panthers now. Yeah. Um, I was surprised when they let him go. I same here. I think he's a. I think he's going to be a really good, really good player, really good number seven. So, um, yeah, a lot of pressure on on Frawley for sure. Uh, sorry, on um, Fogarty for sure. Frawley from the Broncos winger. Get around him. Remember Frawley? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Not my favourite Broncos. We're getting to the Broncos. Broncos. Oh, sorry, we're not there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Hammy. <laughs> All you talk about is the Broncos. Fuck me. Um, another guy, Corey Horsburgh. He, what an incredible year for him last year. And I think that, you know, Tarpani is going to need a guy like Horsburgh to pick up the slack from Papali'i because I'm assuming Papali'i's minutes are going to reduce as he gets older. They, I mean, they already kind of have. Where in Tarpane can only do so much, and it, it, look, he's so talented that he could probably defend against it. But it will get to a point where, when you play the Raiders, you do video session and you just watch Tarpane. You shut that down, and the Raiders are going, "Oh, that's tough." Whereas Horsburgh, out of, funnily enough, out of all the guys that were like, he should play thirteen, he should play thirteen. Horsburgh was probably like three or four down my list. Now you lock him in at thirteen. I thought he was outstanding for them. He signed a, a, a deal to 2027. He's confident in his ability. He got the origin start last year. Um, he'll be, I think he'll be a cult, a cult hero at the race. I mean, he already <clears> is, but I think, like, go down and – look, this isn't – I know this might be blasphemy. I'm talking Alan Tung areas. Yeah. Yep. Alan Tung areas. Hey, I'm the Red Dogs' biggest fan, and I mean Corey Halls, but not, not Alan Tung. So, <laughs> hey, he, he can be there. He can be there. And please, please, like, we sit down and we talk about – Where's X Factor in the Raiders this year? Where are the points going to come from? I know I dribbled on about last year, but Corey Horsburgh has a great offload. Ricky, let him free that arm. Because if we've got a Chevy Stewart or a Xavier Savage, two quick little whippets whipping around the rock, we need to play off the back of it. And he's the man to create that second phase. I think one of the most exciting things about the Raiders this year is that, you know, the last few years you've been a gritty footy side that hangs in games, but God damn, you're, like, you're just boring in attack to watch. <laughs> Like, if we're just being honest, like yeah. you, you, I look at them and I, I just sort of go, fuck, what's, what, are, what are they doing during the week sort of thing? How does this – with these young guys, it forces Ricky Stewart mm. to just play a more expansive game of footy. That's a great point. Yeah, he has to. He's got no choice. First one you've made all. Thank so. you. I've been waiting for it. It's going to be a big year. <laughs> On that note, the one I would love to see in the side somewhere, I agree with you. I think that 
Uh, Corey's the best option at 13, but that uh, young fella, Puru, I would love to see him mm. grab a spot in this side. And I wouldn't play him at 13 for, you know, the whole game or whatever, but I reckon he could be a really good guy to come off the bench for you guys. Yes. So, Timmy, you're starting 13. Is starting 17, sorry. <coughs> Chevy Chase. <laughs> also known as Chevy Stewart. Uh, Jordan Rapana, Tim Oko, Ethan Strange, Albert Hopawadi. Uh, Ethan Stranger Things. Uh, Kaya Weeks. <laughs> Uh, Strange selection. <laughs> uh, Jamal Fogarty. <laughs> Papali'i. Danny Levi at nine. Tarpon here. Whitehead. Hudson Young. Morgan Smithies. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it either. Are you serious? Well, let's note firstly that the red dog, Corey Horsburgh, oh, okay, round is suspended. One. Okay. Yeah. So he's okay. back round three or so. Seb Chris is round two. This is round one, team. Yeah, okay. Fair, fair. <laughs> I apologise. Morgan Smith, is I haven't has he debuted yet? He's the Pommy recruit. Oh, ah, okay. Looks to be tough as nails. Sounds like a packet of chips. <laughs> <laughs> plays, like, plays like he's got a chip on his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> that's Ricky Stewart vibes for sure. Uh, Maybe that's why I got him. Packet of chips, chip on his shoulder, the vibes right, yeah, sign him. Bit rough around the edges. <laughs> <laughs> he's crinkled one, not not the flat chip as well. <laughs> um, chips. <laughs> Partial to a chip and chase. Every, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're getting delusional here. Um, speak to me. What's what's? How's he getting to jump over some of the other guys you got coming through, like Trey Mooney? So, Ricky Stewart. What does he love? Uh, fight. Tut, yeah, he Anger. does love to fight. Ang- up. Yeah, and that's and that's an English forward, isn't it? All those things. So. Uh, we'll credit Guru Guru's gone through Watched every tape Of Morgan Smith His last four years And uh, Not a lot of Tacking upside to him But Big worker Huge work rate A lot of tackles A lot of runs Still the hard yards The question will be uh, There's the word, there's a bit of Ball playing ability there Can he be the link man As a 13 Because There's every chance That when Corey Horsburgh Returns That he just goes Straight to 13 But if Smithies Smithies will have The first what Two rounds To prove himself As a starting NRL forward if he does, Josh Papali'i could drop to the bench and then Corey Horsburgh just plays, starts a prop. Mm. So it's his spot, well, I'm not saying say lose, but it's his spot to win the first few rounds before Corey comes back. That being said, mate, I, let's see how he adapts to Australian conditions. I mean, if you train Mooney and Morgan Smithies, Mr Smithers, um, <laughs> if you train Mooney and you're off contract and the bloke comes into the squad... First year gets that spot. Surely you're a bit like, hang on a sec, mate. I'm, I'm just picking what Ricky's going to. Should I get Trey to call you? Yeah, get no. You're the one that put him in there. Don't get Trey to call me. (laughs) Please don't get Trey to call me. (laughs) Trey, shoot him a DM. That's disrespect. Straight disrespect. I'm putting you in my 13 when the big red is not there. Um, okay, we've got to talk about it. What is going on with Xavier Savage? What is happening there? Have you heard any whispers? This this guy's a gun. He's a gun. I haven't heard anything. Uh, Timmy might know more, but I thought it was pretty evident last year that he just wasn't fitting in. Mm. I think Chevy Stewart is the preferred option. Um, and I, there was a, the Raiders had like a photo day a few weeks ago and Xavier Savage had the one on his back, so everyone lost their minds over that. I, I couldn't care less. Mm. He's wearing what jersey in December. Why are they so keen t- for him just to be a one? Like, surely he's battling Hop- Hopawati for that wing spot. Timmy? It's almost weirder that you haven't heard anything you like. Why is he not more talked about about getting a run? Uh, and I don't know, as you said, like they, they basically did everything they could not to pick him. Mm. And I'm not sure. We've seen his upside. We've seen him score a phenomenal, phenomenal finals try in 2022 against Parramatta off a scrum. That's the upside to this bloke. There are a lot of rough edges to his game as a fullback. And as you said, Kempi, it's like they just see him as a fullback, but... He has spent time on the wing in New South Wales Cup, so I'm not sure, mate. I, I don't know what's going on. I just, for the life of me, can't understand why, why you can't. He could be a quality winger. I don't mm. – he's quite big, obviously lightning fast. He's going to get bigger and bigger as he gets older. I, it just surprises me. A guy that quick and you, and you've, you struggle for X Factor, I, I'm just – and I think Tim's nailed at one to seven here. I think this will be how they line up, and that's not including Seb Chris, who's suspended. Who I personally think is in front of Savage for just about every position. Yeah, and then honestly, there as I said, the I think that's how they line up round one. But the preseason there is a lot up for grabs, and when Seb Chris comes back in, who can play? 
I was going to say anywhere one to five, but there's also chat of him playing five eight as well. He'll come back in there somewhere. There's tra- chat of Strange as well, isn't there? We Strange the can play in the halves as well. Yeah, I think he's about a six than he is centre. Yeah. Center. Um, I, look, I would probably be leaning towards Hopewadi to get that wing spot initially for sure. But what I'm just really surprised at is, is like, how is that such a sure thing when you've got a guy like Savage, you know? Very, I would love to know, like, maybe he's got stuff going on off the field. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's just, you know, struggling for form. That could be also what's happening. But, yeah, I, I just think he's got so much potential. Like, you know, maybe a fresh start's good for him. Maybe he needs to go to another club where it's a fresh start, where they see him as a winger. Maybe he wants to be fullback. I don't know. But just too much talent to just be sitting well, in I mean, though. he's lightning quick. He's got a few errors in him. He's got a few brain explosions. But that's exactly how we describe Carl Piero. He's walking into a first-grade wing spot. Yeah. Surely there's a few clubs out there that could use a guy like Savage in their he back line. Do much worse. Um, so, yeah, watch this space. Um, don't be too savage on him, though. Uh, <laughs> it's getting worse. I'm getting worse as time goes on. Um, but yeah, guys like that, I just think that when they've got that much talent, they've got to be in the NRL. They've got to be in the NRL. Yeah. Okay, uh, boys, it's time for the rubber to meet the road. Okay, he's ready. Yeah, good. I'm ready, ready to go, man. Okay, just getting started. <laughs> <laughs> you getting drowsy over there, mate? No, no, I'm, I'm waiting for you. I'm, I'm, I thought you were going to go first. But I saw you doing sign language, so I thought you were doing some kind of equation. Well, I think Tim held, Tim held up five. Five he's got teams, the Raiders at fifth. I'm um, <laughs> top Raiders, top five. Five premierships in a row, I thought he said. <laughs> um, okay, Raiders, I have them 13th to 15th this year. Uh, yeah, I don't think they'll finish last. I think you're looking at 13th to 16th around that mark, yeah. I've got them at 14th, so I'll go... That's just because you're a Raiders fan, though. Yeah, right. yeah. If you're being honest, like, that actually means. I just spoon. said they come fourth last after making five. No, that last means spoon because you've got to add. You've got to add the bias on. Yeah. So you're actually saying spoon. That's disrespectful. GST. They'll come. They'll come fourteenth. So I'll say because uh, I know Maddie will be checking this at the end of season. Thirteenth to sixteenth. Yeah. I got them bottom four, but not bottom two. Okay. Did win a game by more than twelve last year. Lost their best player. Too many question marks in key positions for me. Yep. Thirteenth to sixteenth. Okay, Door we're 18 all... to miss the eight. So okay. So we're all... Uh, Proofs in the pudding. Sorry, Timmy. Ricky will love that. Ricky will be showing them the odds. Yeah. you know, Ricky will show on the bloke podcast of all saying the 13th to 15th. If we all get punched in the head next time we see the Raiders, that's why. <laughs> We've been showing... <laughs> no, no, I, look, I love the Raiders. I think that... I love were, them too. I love them too, but... I think they were incredible last year. That game in Newcastle, like if you ever need... Like you've obviously got the grand final that you guys made that was amazing to watch. But if you ever needed a game that shows you what the Raiders are about, go watch Newcastle. I know they, they ended up losing it, but geez, they got close. Geez, they got close. All righty. Don't forget, grab a case of bloke beer from your local. Support the platform. If you enjoy this content, it's the best way to support it. Plus, it's a beautiful, easy drinking beer. Let's get into it. West Tigers last year, 14th in attack. And they were 8th in defence. Look, it's a, they're a tough club to speak about because new beginnings, it almost feels like every year there's a new beginning. There's a fresh coat of paint. We get excited. I'm going to go out on a limb, though. I actually am really excited for the Tigers this year. Same. Do I know... <laughs> <laughs> Do I know whether Benji Marshall will be a top-tier, top-four coach? Yes. I don't know that. Do you know that? <laughs> I think he will. Okay. Do I know that he'll be at least a solid coach? I think he will be. I th- I'd be very surprised if in two to three years that Benji Marshall is not at the very least a solid coach um, that has the ability to coach a team anywhere from 10th to 6th on the ladder. I, th- I think he has enough knowledge in the game. At, at the very least, I think he has enough ability to be a player coach, a player first coach, and then fill his coaching staff with the tactical nous or whatever needed, assistant coaches that know the X's and O's. And some might go, well, of course Benji knows the X's and O's. He's one of the best halves in the game. I mean, look, Joey's the GOAT, greatest of all time, but sometimes the GOAT can struggle, even though he's had success, but can struggle to um, communicate what he sees to other players. And so sometimes that's what's the beauty of assistant coaches. Their strength is their ability to communicate, you know, very complex things, very simple ways to players. So I am excited for the, the Tigers. And not only, it's not just the fact that it's Benji Marshall, the club legend. What I love about what's happened over the last few months for the Tigers is it seems like 
Benji has had enough sway and pull to rein everyone into going, I'm in the direction we are heading in. Everyone needs to get behind me. We saw articles about you know, uh, recruit, new recruitment officers brought in without his knowledge and then they clashed. That's now been moved, they've been moved on. Old CEO's been moved on, the board's been moved on. It does seem outside looking in, and then you look at the Jerome Luai signing, that was a Benji Marshall led, um, I guess, poaching of the Panthers. And so when you look at all these things, it looks like a club that is fully on board with getting on the Benji Bush bus. What do you reckon? Yeah, well summarised. I feel very similar about them. Um, I think that Benji, as you said, mate, I think he's a guy that can get the best out of players. Is he going to be the greatest coach in the world? I don't know. Mm. But I would assume, similar to how I'm watching with the Queensland Maroons at the moment, the guys they've got in there, man motivators. Mm. To all these guys, Benji, growing up, was the superstar, the guy on the poster on the wall. So I, 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 know, I know it's a stupid thing to say, but I can't possibly see the Tigers going worse than what they did last year. And I just think roster-wise, they've improved a lot. I think that having this many halves to choose from, I think that the agencies are signing for the next 12 months, I think it's got the potential to be a really good one, just to give them a bit of direction, which I think they've lacked for a while. Um, and I'm, I just really hope Bud Sullivan can play 25 games this year. Mm. Bud Sullivan plays 25 games. I guarantee you the Tigers are going to be, at least be entertaining to watch. Yeah. And there's also another fellow, I've forgotten his name now, if you could Google it. Benji was recently quoted saying that he's a chance to start. A yeah, really uh, good Galvin. year. Now, look, I understand that can be thrown out sometimes to put a rocket up people's bums and get them playing that well. But Benji's a pretty straight shooter. I, I don't think he just throw that out because... Yes, it may put a rocket up the bum of a Bud Sullivan, up a Caesar, or Fainu, but the negative of it is that you're pumping up the rookie's tyres. So you actually may damage the rookie because then he goes, oh, like I'm going better than I think I am. So I don't think Benji would do that unless there is an actual chance that this guy, if he kills in the trials, gets the first crack of the jersey. And he has also said um, that the only jersey that's safe in the entire side is Apicorosia. I think it's fair. Mm. Yeah, I think it's a good avenue to go down. Um, yeah, I like the direction the Tigers are heading in. I think there's a lot of positives going on there. There's obviously, you know, I think the squad on paper is good. To be fair, I actually thought the squad on paper last year was pretty mm. good. Well, I just want to ask you, I know they won the spoon back to back, but can you honestly say that they were, they're in a worse spot last year than they were like a few years before? Like, like put it this way, in my opinion, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but the Bulldogs were the worst side in the competition last year. Yep. Now, technically, the Tigers were, they won the spoon. I'm not being an idiot. But when I look at who's got further of the mountain to climb, for me at the moment, it's the Bulldogs. Had the Tigers had a successful year last year and finished, let's say, eighth, gone out finals week <laughs> one, do you think the board's moved on? Nah, no way. The board's celebrating. Yeah. So, you know, I... Uh, I don't mind how it's played out for the Tigers, to be honest. But I think that back-to-back -back spoons, when everyone sat here and said, well, the West Tigers can't get worse next year, wait, they added a team. They did get worse. Mm. Um, and if the collateral damage of that is that there was massive changes on the board and whatnot, even on the coaching staff as well, <coughs> maybe you can see it as a positive. Yeah, it's almost, you know, two steps, well, a step back for two steps Go forward. Step two step forward, yeah. Um, Timmy? Yeah, the, the West Tigers... Oh, sorry, just quickly. Do... What are your thoughts on that statement that the Tigers weren't the worst side last year? Oh, I agree with you. Yeah. Oh, look, give or take, they're both pretty ordinary. But you've got to choose one. That's not how this works. Fine, I'll say the Tigers were the worst. Okay. And I'll tell you why. Because oh. Oh. their roster was way better and they still finished below the dogs. Okay. A lot of injuries, though. Oh, unlike the dogs. <laughs> but I, I think throw into the equation of where... They are headed kind of thing. You, you know? mentioned a mountain to climb. I think the Tigers are heading in, the, in a better direction in terms of a rugby league team and going up the ladder this season. As a club, I think the Doggies are headed in a way better direction because the Doggies now have sort of with Seraldo and Phil Gould there, I think they're a year into their rebuild. I think there's a story from the Telegraph from the 2021 team. There's not a player left from that entire squad at the Doggies right now. So they are into their rebuild. The Tigers are doing it as we speak. They've just cleared out so, board, admin, players, so basically, all sorts of things. So to sum up your thoughts, and I actually agree with what you're saying, the Tigers are further up the mountain, but the Bulldogs are going to go a better route and eventually they'll get there. That's summed up. 
freakly accurately of what I was trying to get across. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I don't mind that because because. Well, the, the proof's going to be in the pudding. When those juniors come through with the doggies, anyway, we'll get to the Put doggies. it this way. I think the doggies are closer to like, let's say, I don't know if you want to say a premiership, but a top four than I think the Tigers are because I think they've – I know I'm, – I'm confident the Bulldogs have the right people in place in Seraldo, in Gould. Phil Gould's the big one. Mm. That I'm confident they will be going in the right direction. And last year was a big rebuild for them. The Tigers, I still have no idea. They've got a new board in and a few different faces here and there. Are they going to be any good? I don't know. Shane Richardson, you know, in a bit of a Gould mould, he's got runs on the board. So I like, I love where the Tigers are going, don't get me wrong. But the Doggies, I think, yeah. I think the Tigers are in a good spot, in a great <laughs> spot. Uh, all aboard Benji Marshall. Can Benji Marshall get the best? Benji Bus. Like all the aboard bus. the Benji Bus. Plenty of room. Can Benji Marshall get the best out of a, you know, a squad that he hasn't assembled himself? Yes, he can. Do you reckon Ivan Cleary uh, trademarked get on the bus? And so Benji can't use that and that's why they haven't been using it? There is a bit of baggage around on the bus and I think as a club we should avoid it. Um, <laughs> but can he get the best out of a, out of a squad? That stretch he... limo. What about a stretch limo? Yeah, I'd take a stretch limo. <laughs> I'd take a stretch limo for sure. But yeah, we've seen this before. Uh, 2022 in the Celebrity Apprentice, he took Team Collaborate to the top, to the pinnacle. <laughs> Raised half a million dollars for charity. Did he have the roster he wanted there? Probably not. Vince Colosimo, <laughs> Will and Woody, Darren McMullen, and he got the absolute best out of these guys. So, you know, if you want any proof that this guy can get the job done when the whips are cracking, you've only got to look back to 2022 uh, with Lord Sugar, and uh, the proof's in the pudding. So I think we're in a great spot. I've actually got us winning the comp here at 100 to 1. Um, so I think this well, is going to... i tell you what, how many celebrity apprentices has Seraldo won? The silence is deafening, isn't it? <laughs> the silence is deafening. Seriously, though, I think, uh, you know, we, we touched on, there's a, there's a few things to build on there from last year. You know, um, defensively, uh, we weren't that bad. We certainly weren't down the bottom. Attack was has always been the issue for us. But I think, um, you know, we've cleaned a few players out. We've cleaned a few board out. It's Benji's team now. Just And now that there's no dysfunctional board that would derail it, if he's got a couple of years to really put his stamp on it, I, I'm very optimistic as a Tigers fan who's been through a lot. I think we're in a good spot to, to improve, to at least yeah. improve. Yeah. Um, last. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I will say. Uh, <laughs> well, I was going to say, you know, I said the same thing probably similar time last year, but then they, they brought another team in and we actually went backwards. So <laughs> no new team this year. So very excited. Uh, we, actually, we actually can't go worse. The only way is not backwards. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The only way is not backwards. We'll be all right. You may not go forwards, but you're definitely not going. <laughs> well, I, I think we'll go forwards to avoid okay. any ambiguity. We are, we are going okay. to. Okay. We're going to go up. There's no fence, fence sitting here. No fence sitting. <laughs> not a splinter in sight. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just a bit of details in regards to the board. It's been you know a hot topic discussion. So the Holman Group, which is I think Westfield, uh, what is it? Anyway, the Holman Group, they're worth like a hundred million dollars. So they're worth a lot of money. They own 90% of the West Tigers. The Balmain Group owned 10%. The Holman Group was uh, the movers and shakers behind the review. And then they're also the ones that um, 50 recommendations that are now being uh, in, put in place by the new interim CEO, which is Richardson. Um, so the only concern, and I read this, I think, in the Sydney Morning Herald. I apologize if I get that wrong. I'm forgetting the... Roy Masters wrote it. He said the only concern with the recommendation is there was only one recommendation about juniors and that the big catchment area they have. Mm -hmm. But um, apparently speaking to the board, no, that is on their radar because I do think that if the – we talk about, you know, Bulldogs going a better route to a premiership and the Tigers – but the Tigers are further up. If the Tigers can sort out their junior catchment area mm. – they could be the next Penrith. I know it sounds crazy. I know it sounds crazy, but it, it what is it, Mittagong to Liverpool? Like, yeah. it is a massive base, a rugby league heartland. If they could somehow win the hearts and minds of the people there, look, I know it's ages away. Um, you know, that would be a massive win for the club. Just, just quickly, to, sorry mm. to go back to doggies because we will get to them, but, and, like, you look at the dogs and we know that, Gould's come in, they've got um, footprints in New Zealand in a bunch of different areas and a bunch of different areas of Sydney already. So there's, I just think they're a year ahead of where the Tigers are in that sense. And, and the juniors and stuff. Yeah. yeah. No, fair. That's fair. Um, so with the Tigers, uh, really, I mean, it's, it sucks to say, look, we understand that they're outside backs. Um, you know, 
look, when they're playing their best, they're bloody good outside backs. It's just the consistency of the concern. But at the end of the day, with this current roster, and it sounds stupid to say because it's every single team, but it really is they need their halves to not even play great, just be solid. Yep. Just be solid. What do you reckon? Yeah, they've got the team around them. Like, like obviously, we would have seen the scene just say of uh, Greg Inglis getting around mm. his Tigers camp as well. I know Matty wouldn't have enjoyed that, but I loved it. Uh, the more people we can get Buller around, the better. I thought I saw him kiss the badge, Matty, just, just <laughs> quietly. I think there's a picture of him kissing the Tigers badge. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, didn't, I don't mind that at all. I love seeing Joe, GI in the game. And, that, and for people listening, there's tears rolling down Matty's face right now as he says that. <laughs> there's no camera on me today. You can't see. <laughs> okay. um, Doreen Buller. I mean, look, um, Greg Inglis gets pulled in. He's going to mentor Doreen Buller. Again, like, these are the kind of things that can happen with Benji Marshall and Shane Richardson at the club. These are heavy hitters, big movers. Getting a guy like Greg Inglis in to, to mentor a, a guy like Doreen Buller, who went to America for basketball to potentially chase that, only to come back and play a muck around game with Greg Inglis and fall, fall back in love with the game. The rest is history. Like, Doreen Buller, like, that's another thing to be excited for with the Tigers is you've got, like, Buller and Stefano, key positions, both young guns, and they've got Benji Marshall to, to guide them through. I mean, no one had more of a superstar rise than Benji Marshall. So if he knows the pitfalls of a young talent, there's, there's no one more than Benji Marshall. I'm excited to see Buller under Greg Inglis and Benji for another year. Well, he, Greg Inglis obviously knows um, uh, Buller very well, but he's going to be able to help so many of those other outside backs as well. Mm. I look at a guy like Stafford Toa, mm. gave Val Holmes one of the great baths last year at uh, Leichhardt Oval uh, that, that night where the Tigers put on a show. 60 to 10 or whatever it was. Um, I, I, at his best, he's such a good player. And Tupo on the wing as well. Exactly, exactly. But um, they were pretty quiet for, for the rest of the season. So I'm really looking forward to not only the impact he can have with Buller, but also the rest of that back line as well. Buller's first season in the NRL after having spent, what was a year out of it or whatever it was, yep. 18 games in the Wooden Spoon team, lost 14 games, won four, and he had seven try assists. Five tries, ran for 160 metres per game. If the Tigers can improve this season, which they will, and like they can improve significantly, like you know, we've all seen him play, but he's uh, he's a superstar in the making. Mm. We also don't have a stat for the effort plays. Mm. Yep, yeah, that he's consistently coming up with. We don't have a stat for try savers yep. that he's coming up with, and you know what? Most of the time. The opposition scored two tackles after our, anyway, but my God, Bullard may come up with some huge defensive. You don't have a stat for making your friend smile as well. Heard he's a, a very good friend that Sky makes you high. smile. Yeah. His second game in the NRL against Penrith, <laughs> and he had those two try savers on clear. I didn't hear a sorry. word of that. I didn't hear a word of the one before. It's a, making your friend smile is a big part mm. of rugby league. What would you call that? Smile stat. Smile stat. Smile efficiency. Smile efficiency. Smile efficiency. <laughs> Post-contact smiles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, what were you saying? Sorry, Timmy. Before I, I don't even know. Just Pull that putting great on clinic at Bathurst. I think yeah. you're oh, a second game in the NRL and he's the best on ground. They knock off Penrith and two, as Guru alluded to, two incredible try-saving tackles. Possibly both on. Yeah, you go. I'm done. I'm done as well. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I agree with you, mate. I agree with you. And, and Thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you've made me smile. Um, and it's a good point. Like in a, a club that needs culture and needs someone to kind of lead the way, a guy like Buller is that. Like, even when the season over, game was over, Buller... <laughs> <laughs> Buller was there try saving tackles. Anyway, let's move on. Um, I think it is unreal to look at a Tigers side, one to seven and go, that's a pretty handy squad, and Adam Dewey isn't even part of it. Mm. Previous years, you're going, fuck, if this team is to have a crack this year, everything has to come off Adam Dewey, who's probably playing mm. out of position, mm. out of necessity. He's not even in this team, and I go, that's a pretty strong squad. And you're if, able to add him in mid season, fantastic. And also, like, if, if Stafford Toa plays as well as we know, Olin plays as well as we know. Mm-hmm. Where does he fit? Big question. Which and look, I'm I'm, a, I'm I would still have Dewey in my starting side. Uh, yep. It's more just that's where they've come from. When two two years ago, Dewey was captain. He was everything. He was the face of the club two three years ago. I do really hope though that Benji puts a line in the sand and says, "Not in the halves anymore." Though I there's no way. Surely, yeah, surely. So well, they've got too many options. Yeah. Sure, but I just. 
put a line in the sand. It's not your position. Make centre your position. Make 13 your position if mm. you want. Whatever it might be, I just think six and seven is not where his the rest he, of his career He reminds lies. me of White and just he's not a six. He's a, I think he'd be a bloody good centre in a side that's going to give him good ball. Yeah. Whereas before, he was six because he didn't get any ball. He had to frigging go in and get it all the time. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think he's a, a centre out, out and out centre in my opinion. And in those teams that needed something, he, he did really well at six. Yeah, for sure. Wrong, but he's not a six. Mm. I'm not saying six is necessarily his best position, but I think he has a lot of attributes that can make him very good six. Why are you boys both so adamant that he's not a six and he's a centre? Because, uh, well, I don't believe he has enough ball-playing vision. I think everything he does is very premeditated. I think that we see this giant left-to-right cut-out ball and... People think he's a great ball player. A lot of the time, to me, it's very premeditated. He can't pass the ball right to left. I, he is a, he, the, the, the best thing about his game is his running game. Mm-hmm. He should be in the centre. I, I, th- I think it's his, his, his mindset. He's a goer. And he's always thinking, not necessarily run first, but he just wants to get amongst it. He wants a lot of runs, a lot of touches. And sometimes in the halves when you've got structures and systems. Now, he could eventually he could change that mentality and maybe – he was being forced to run all the time because no one was doing anything. Yep. And I understand that, you know, the years that he was six and Brooks was seven, you know, Brooks was, he wasn't playing well. He wasn't yep. getting involved. He was having barely yeah. any touches. So had, that could force him to do that. He had 17 try assists in 20 games in 2021. Mm. Is, is, that, is that a nature of, though, forcing that because you're the only one mm. getting the ball in your hands and, you know, creating those moments? I'm not saying he's not a good player. I'm saying he's not a 5'8". Yeah, yeah, no, that's fair. Mm. I'm just... He's a, he's a bloody great player. I just think that in a good team that gets him good ball with a great tip onto his winger or a great – if he's in one further and he, uh, he cut out ball past the fullback, he can still have those ball-playing moments, but it's his running game that is yeah. special in my opinion. And, and he's just – he's tough carries out of his own then that he would do. I think he'd make a bloody good centre. He's, he's a good solid six, but he makes a bloody good centre. When are we – like mid-season or something, hey? He, he, yeah, he did it in round six last year, so – Potentially earlier than mid-season? Probably early. I mean, he's so dedicated that it wouldn't surprise me if he comes back a bit earlier. Uh, Now, another guy that hasn't been talking, like, you know, there's been Bud Sullivan, uh, Latu Fainu. Samuel Fainu is an under-19 New South Wales forward. Um, You know, he could have a breakout year off the bench if he does make that starting 17. Now, this is uh, your starting 17, Timmy. Mm. Buller, Staines, Toa, uh, Toa, Olam. Junior Tupo, Sullivan, Caesar, Clemmer, Corusau, Utu, Ikamanu, Bateman, Papali'i, Bola, Kapoa, Twole, Matumoa, and Fainu. But yeah, Fainu for me, he is very early in his development, but he's definitely flown under the radar as a really strong signing. I mean, if he was going into nearly any of the top tier rosters as a signing of a New South Wales under 19 forward, we'd probably be talking about him a bit more. Um, I think that there's a chance he has a good year. I really do. Yeah, he looked good at times last year for Manly. Really, yeah, for really sure. big impact. I'm surprised they let him go. Yeah, well, I, you have to wonder um, was Latu fine? Who just Which, all involved in all that? Yeah. But like, well, like, in some what degree? Yeah, what, like what happened there? Yeah, because you know, I was surprised they let Latu go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Fainu, he's already played NRL. He's shown glimpses of impact. I think that he was the captain as well of the. 19's Blues. He's a gun. He's a gun. And it hasn't really been spoken yeah. about. We've spoken about Latu, Bud Sullivan, Caesar, or whoever's going to get it. But I think Fainu yeah. may fly under the radar as one of their better I, signs. And I'd love to see the, the preference last season was for Appy Coruscant to be an 80 minute hooker. Um, Benji could see that completely differently. And I'd love to see Talon De Silva get that 14 spot. Mm. And, you know, to your point of shared hooking duties and. Particularly Appy Kosh, who has such a great running game. Mm. I think 60 minutes for him. Like yeah. He was so successful uh, over at Penrith. You don't want so, Coruscant making 45, nah, 50 tackles. Not at all. You really don't. So I, ho- I do hope they go that way. <clears throat> okay, time for the rubber to meet the road. <laughs> all right, I'm going to go. I am going to go. Carry the one, drop the two. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 11th to 14th. Uh, I was going to go 12 to 16. Uh, I've got him in 15th, so 13 to 16th. I've got him in 14th or 15th. I've got him in the 13 to 16 bracket, but towards the top of that, so I'm hoping about 14th. 14th? Yep. Baby steps. Okay, baby steps, baby. Um, so who's one in that side that if I was another club, because of how stacked their back row is at the moment, 
If I was another club and I could get my hands on this Asu Kapoa, he comes off contract at the end of this season, I would snap him up in a heartbeat and offer him a starting yeah. spot. You just look at him and you go, yeah, he's so rough around the edges, but you just see these moments of like just explosiveness. He's so big and strong. It's, it's almost a... He played wing at some stage. Like, he's yeah. so big. For, and, you know, I know they obviously signed Isaiah Papali when he was at a high, and I'm like, Isaiah Papali is a better player, don't get me wrong. But value-wise between those two, my God, mm. you get some good value out of Kapala. Mm. Yeah, agreed, agreed. I'm with you, Guru, um, around Jaden Sullivan being the one to step up with the biggest upside. But between, like, the team is, looks so good with the question mark around the halves. They do have lots of options. Between Caesar, Sullivan, Fino, if one of these boys can just step up and really lift and be the attacking key to this side, like they could be pushing towards the top eight. But again, big if. But that's the man. Well, if Sullivan fulfills his potential, yeah, like they, they could land seventh to ninth. They could if he fulfills his potential. Do we think Junior Tupu on the wing Tim's got here, which I, I don't mind, but he's obviously not going to be at the club the year after. Bit of a project sort of guy. Do you think Benji will go with Tupu or do you think he'll go in a different direction? Well, hearing Benji talk, he wants to win games now. Yeah. Um, so as long as he's consistent, uh, what a signing from Wayne Bennett. You just oh, know shit. that guy's going to go up there and become the best ring in the comp. Like, seriously. Because um, like, they've got this kid from uh, this guy from Union who – I don't watch a heap of Union. I watched some highlights the other day. I thought he looked really impressive. I don't know when the highlights are from, any context, but uh, Solomon – uh, Ayla Mala, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, apologies, but uh, just from the highlights that I saw, which could have been from 10 years ago for all I fucking know, um, he looks like a handy footballer to me. Yeah. Okay, now, on to the Bulldogs. Uh, they finished last year 17th for attack and 17th for defence. Um, look, in their defence, decimated by injury, absolutely decimated, but... Uh, extremely disappointing year. I understand it was Seraldo's first year, but I don't think anyone could have predicted that. I mean, the talk was they're going to, some people think thinking challenge for the eight um, last year, but for them to finish 17th, as I said, I understand they were decimated with injury, but extremely disappointing year. And heading into this year, um, they've made some shrewd signings. I get the joke about utilities and all that, but when you actually look at it like, Really, like out and out utilities, you've got Kurt Mann, maybe Drew Hutchinson, but Connor Tracy is an outside back, like, or six or fullback. You know, he's not really a utility in the middle there. Mm. Uh, and I think that the plan I think that's happening in the Bulldogs right now is they're sitting there and going, okay, we can go out and have a huge risk and spend a lot of money on some big key players in key positions. You, you know, there was word they were going after uh, Mitch Moses and then they found out that, you know, the price was too much and they're like, you know what, we're going to back our youth. They've just re-signed a really young, um, I've got his name now, but uh, I think Jersey Flegg, they won the comp, signed him on a three-year deal. Uh, he's a half as well. Yeah, I think uh, Mitchy Woods, I think his yep. name is. So they've gone youth rather than going the, spending, you know, the 1.2, 1 1.3 on um, Mitch Moses. AFB comes on the market. They look at that, they go, we could spend 1.2, 1.3 on him. They say, no, they're going to trust. Uh, Phil Gould was quoted saying that, you know, if you have an issue with our, not if you have an issue, but like basically a fan asked, what are you doing about forward depth? And Phil Gould was saying, you should see our New South Wales Cup and, you know, mm. younger grades. We have some of the best in the competition. I remember last year, we like it, it sort of did fall apart towards the back end of the year because the injuries, injuries became so hectic. But They were top well, of the table mid-year. Yeah, top of the table and just demolishing every game while the NRL side were battling. Like, how is this happening? Yeah. Um, and then I think Jersey Flag they won. Harold yep. Matt they won. Yeah, Harold Matt they won and Jersey Flag they won. Yep. So, so <sighs> the, the, the plan's there. That's, that's what, when, you, when a club says they're rebuilding, they can say they're rebuilding, but where's the evidence of the rebuild? Sometimes when a club says they're rebuilding, it's just an excuse to cover bad results. Unless a club says they're rebuilding before a season starts, you, you probably shouldn't believe them. Because if they get halfway through the year and go, oh, by the way, we're rebuilding, it sounds like excuses, honestly. Uh, whereas with Canterbury, it's a very, very clear rebuild. Since 2021, as you brought up, not a single top 30 member is still at that club. Uh, they are at the beginning of a rebuild. I wouldn't expect them to do much this year, if I'm being honest. I think that they'll be most likely in the bottom four. Uh, but at the very least, there is a plan in place. It's just 
Stay patient, doggies fans. Stay patient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you see, a, I think we said it earlier in the year, we were talking about Canterbury, when you look at a losses list like this, like that's a fucking Stephen King novel. That was <laughs> huge. I look at this list and I go, name a player here that they were getting the best out of anyway. Mm. There isn't a single one of them. I think they are much better culling a lot of these guys, moving in a different direction, bringing in. And yet, like the joke about utilities and all that, sure. None of them aren't handy footballers. Well, yeah. I, was, I forgot to say earlier, I think what they're doing there is they're going, all right, we've got a bunch of players that at the very least we know they're NRL players. They are NRL standard. So if they play as well as we know they can, we might jag a 10th or 11th. And then by the time the juniors are ready to go, we're sitting at ninth on the table and they're coming into a squad on the way up rather than having to restart themselves. That's what I think is happening here with the... the and science. I think it's very evident that these five or six... Um, utilities they've got I'm sure they would be all well and truly aware that you're all not going to play the rest of your career at Cranberry realistically in three years time probably two or three of you whichever one does the best over the next few years you're the ones that will stay here or yeah. not so I mean I, I don't know if it's such a bad thing to sign all these guys that are playing for a, their career uh, I, I, again they're proven NRL players and, and who's to say Salmon can't come out and kill it or Curran I, I like people are saying Salmon's a utility and he can play multiple positions I reckon he'll be Jersey 17 I reckon he'll come on as a forward I think he'll do really well I yeah. like James Hunt. I think he's moved past the point of being a utility half or anything I think he's yep. just a forward he, and if you get desperate you can play him in the if half if you have to what a bad thing to yeah. have mm. same as Connor Tracy you'll play him in the centre if you get desperate you can play him somewhere else sure I think the interesting conversation Toby Sexton, he comes off contract at the end of this year. Hutcho has just arrived at the club. Big year for Toby Sexton. Massive. Massive. Because Hutcho, he's always played solidly in first grade. Like he's uh, very rarely, I mean, he may not set the world alight, but you don't see him play poorly. Hutcho feels like a bulldog to me. It does It does fit. Yeah. Oh, it, it really does fit for some reason. Um, Turpin as well. Like uh, what I'm, what I'm excited about with these specific silings, where and I don't understand why this uh, the backlash to it or the, the utility, is like all of these players have the potential to be good NRL players. Yeah. Turpin has the potential. Has he hit it yet? No, he hasn't. He's had a good year at the Broncos. Was okay at the Roosters. Um, Drew Hutchinson. He's put together some good footy in NRL. Uh, Curran at thirteen. That's if he does play thirteen. That's a good thirteen. If he doesn't play thirteen, I'll give it away. In a side that they just simply cannot find middle forwards. Mm. He ha Can you imagine if Jacob Preston hadn't kicked on the way that he has? Like, imagine if Jacob Preston went like every other like signing yeah. that you get from reserve grade yeah. doesn't explode. All of a sudden, you've probably got Josh Curran on an edge and then you're down another middle forward. Yeah. God. That, that's the biggest concern for this year is just their middle is just – it's quite small, doesn't have the, the impact of other, other clubs. Um, but there's a plan here. At least there's a plan. I know Dogs fans, it's it's a nightmare to think. Seven years now, they haven't played finals footy. Um, and before that, since two, I think since 1998 or 2000, they'd only missed finals back-to-back -back once. So, like, they'd been in finals essentially every year except for back-to-back -back once. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe one or two other years outside of that. But for them to go from that to this now, just a such a flip of the coin. Like, it total other side, opposite side. Um, interesting to see how Bronson Zeri goes when he comes back. Boys, but the big question, is Critter a fullback? Uh, I don't think he's a fullback, but I think his best position in this team is fullback. I don't know, but I would absolutely be giving him the opportunity to prove that he is. Mm. Mate, I can't believe how, how quickly people aren't even going to give him the shot. It's wild. Like, what? Give him a crack. For Blake. He's 22, 23 years old. Clutch, gun, Dally M outside back. And, and like, even diehard Canterbury fans are talking, no, no, you can't do it. I'm just sitting there going, you, you can't score points. Yeah, and, like, okay, what are we, what, we're talking about the doggies who are second last on the ladder. What options do you have at the moment? What do you have to lose? If you get to week six and it's a train wreck, okay. Throw Taff in there. Sweet. Yeah. Abort mission. Nothing venture, nothing gain. Like you don't lose much. Like, but if he explodes... You've got a top-tier fullback if he explodes. Mm. Like I, the, the, they've got two guys, in my opinion, in this team that I would say are superstars or superstar potential. Matt Burton and Stephen Crichton. And I've got Canterbury fans telling me that they should both play their best position, which is centre. I'm going... In this you side? You're kidding, aren't you? Like, just, if you're back at Penrith, I get it. Yeah. 
in this team, no way. No, no, I, I had my reserva- I still got my reservations, I should say, around um, Critter's ball playing at fullback and whether or not he can do mm. it. Uh, all the word is Gus Gould, Geraldo, they've seen so much of him at training and all that with Penrith, and they're like, hands beautiful. Like we've seen like little snippets of it at mm. centre. They're like, ball playing, not a problem. He'll pick that up easily and mm. he's already got it. So if that's not an issue for them, what is? But like, let's, let's say he's just an okay ball player. Who gives a shit? He's a mm. gun ball runner. Mm. <laughs> like, uh, that Penrith don't win that grand final without, like, and it wasn't, it wasn't even his running that won, won him that grand final. It was his kicking game. Yeah. <laughs> this is what we're dealing with. Like, to, I'm not sitting here saying he's definitely going to be a big, big full, a good fullback, but to not even give him a crack at it, that's crazy. You, you literally have, like, the number one guy in the game for coming up with big moments on the biggest stage. Yeah. His worst season, he lost a grand final. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, like he has been. And then he went to that World Cup, he does the same thing, and you're telling me you don't want to give him a shot because of what Blake Taff has convinced you with? Mm. It's like, Blake Taff is All a... All due respect to Blake Taff, uh, but Stephen it, look, Crichton's a world-class footballer. Yeah. Blake Taff's a good, solid outside back that could develop into a really good ball-playing fullback, for sure. Absolutely. He went to a prelim... Oh, sorry, played in a grand final. But at the moment, when it, where, where Crichton is in his career compared to Taff, like, it, Taff's got a... You know, a very, very long way to go to get to that high quality standard, which I hope he does because I love the way he plays. He rips and tears. I love the fact that he's confident. He's going to challenge for that jersey. He puts pressure on Critter. Um, but yeah, you've got to have Critter in a key position at the club right now to get his hands on the ball as much as possible. You need him and Burton like connecting as much as possible in the game. And him being out in centre is not going to do that. Not going to do that. I, yeah, it's a no-brainer for me. Um, Really, really important year for Burton, though, because we just went through the fact that, yes, in other teams he may be a centre. The problem for Burton is if he has another really quiet year, those voices will just get way, way louder, way louder. Um, and then the pressure will just continue to mount, continue to mount. Which, ironically, is his biggest criticism at half. Voice isn't loud enough. <laughs> there you go, Timmy. Hey. Coming in strong towards the end. That's where the battlers do their best work. Some people run out of steam, I'm just on. So it's a huge year. It's a huge year for um, Matty Burton. And also, like, you know, he probably wants to get back into the New South Wales side. It's going to be a tough thing to do. But if you're looking at that 14 jersey as a guy that could suit a 14, um, it doesn't mean that Jackie White has that lockdown or whether they're going to go a two-hooker rotation. You know, maybe Burton can play his way into that 14 jersey. Uh, huge year for Burton. Yeah, massive year. I hate that he played halfback last year. I, I never don't know want why to say that again. Oh, look, I understand where Serato's coming from. It's like I got no one else. Like I'm trying everything here, and I just need to get my good gun player in key position, and, and hopefully his ability can just somehow you know patch the hole. But he's 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 definitely not seven. Yeah, it just we can't see it again. <laughs> uh, like there was a moment there last year when Matt Bird was playing halfback, and remember they came Reed Marnie played like lock or something. Mm. Just sitting there going, fuck, what has gone on here? And I understand <laughs> it's because of injuries and it got tough. I get that. But, yeah, I, I do not like Burton in the seven in any way, shape or form. Um, now, to the hooking role, role. Just before you get to that, Sorry. I want to believe that that Sexton-Burton halves combo can work so badly because I think Burton has the makings of, like, a brilliant – Ball running 5 8. Agreed. We all love Toby Sexton here, but we also know that, particularly with Hutchinson there, he's got to prove himself at the NRL level. I touched on a podcast at the back end of last year, but when Sexton arrived last season, apparently he was talking to Seraldo and, and saying, Mate, do you mind if I speak up and give you a few thoughts on this? He goes, Mate, I'm all ears. And he was giving his thoughts on the squad. He's out in the field and he's barking orders, which is exactly what they want, particularly paired with Birdo, who, as I said, does need to find his voice a little bit on the field. I, gee, I want it to work, and, and I think it can. I do, but it might just take a bit of time. Yeah, uh, they'll be much better for a whole preseason together. Mm. Like for him to come down and expect for that to gel. I'm mean, no, I don't think anyone expected it to gel. But like Sexton walked into a bloody, you know, it was an emergency room. Like yeah. seriously, it was a travesty. What time he walked in with all the injuries? Um, now, just quickly, we'll speak about the nine role. They've got a. I know people are sick of me saying it, but I don't want Reed Money playing 80 minutes every single week. I just, I know he can, but is he going to get the best out of himself tackling? Like, he was out in his feet. By the end of the year, he was hanging on by a thread. Hanging on by a thread. And I just think that if there's a way that you can get a 14 there, it doesn't have to necessarily be an out-and-out nine, 
but they just need to find a way to protect Marnie from himself. He's way too tough for his own good. Actually, when I had him on my podcast quite a while ago, that was his initial problem when he was coming through, is that like off taps and that, he'd be getting in the line trying to hit the front rower that was coming off a tap. And it was actually Mick Innes that pulled him aside and said, mate, like, we've got other players, you've got other players in the squad that can do that. You, you should, that's just a, I know you want to be tough and, and, and make that hit, which is what you want in your number nine, but it's just not smart. Um, and so I, what do you think about the Reed Miner situation? Oh, I agree with you. I don't want Reed to play 80, but I'll tell you what the last thing in the world I want to see is them have all these fantastic utilities and end up with an out-and-out -out hooker at 14 like Jake Turpin. Mm. I would rather see them have someone maybe like a Kurt Mann. It's going to be Kurt Mann, sure. Mm. I think so. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Kurt Mann would be my pick. Um, the other one coming back from injury who impressed me anyway in his first few years, been injured for a while though, Bailey Beyond Iodo, mm. who can play as well. He's a crafty little nine, but I still think uh, Kurt Mann would be my pick as a 14 there. Okay. Good stat for you. Uh, so the top five missed tackles in the NRL last season. You boys are going to love this. Not because of the individuals, but Reed Marnie, 131 missed tackles, number one. Ezra Mam at two. Won't love that one as much. 113. Harry Grant, number three, 107. Appy Corris out, 107. Mitch Kenny, 102. Four of the five were hookers who were playing, aimed to be playing as 80-minute men. Mm. I mean, it's no shock. You're also on the field for longer. Yeah, but yeah. there's there's also yeah like eighty minute edge back rowers or you know eighty minute mid not a lot of eighty minute middles but lock forwards but that's sad, not a shock yeah. but it's point, still, case in point yeah, 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 they're yeah, yeah, missing yeah. tackles they're so. missing tackles and it's like is there a way to make like can we get them not making that many tackles yeah, yeah it, it's a yeah, knock yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a knock on as you boys keep preaching the eighty minute hooker mm. rather than the individuals themselves and and also you know Cam Smith is the goat very rarely did you get, come off the field and he'd made forty tackles he might have missed two or three. Mm. If you can do that, if that if you can show me those stats, yeah. then I'm okay. You can be 80 minutes, but very rarely you're going to see it that. Is the exception, not the example. Exactly. Um, now, uh, oh, who else did I have here in that I was going to talk about? As Kick a out. shout out to sorry on that list. Talk about all these 80 minute hookers like Blake Braley's at number nine. There's not a lot of 80 minute hookers in the game. <laughs> Top 50 players in the NRL. Damien Cook nowhere to be seen. Yeah. So good. So good. So fit. Like, and he's one of the fittest in the competition, and that's how he can do that. Um, Billy Army kick out. Jeez, it's important for him to just stay on the field this year. They are desperate for a big body. You'd almost be tempted to be like, can you spend some time in the middle, please, bro? Like, that's how desperate they are for a big body in the middle. I, I know you wouldn't do it because he's an out and out edge back rower, but they just need size there. I'm not sure whether he could, the motor could handle the up and back in the middle like that, but. In attack, they're, they're going to be relying so much on him coming in and taking some tough carries. In saying that, oh, you're probably only one or two injuries away from maybe looking at kick out and going, fuck, maybe we do need you to Please, come in. Please, bro. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, you have a look at their side of the building now. I just noticed as well, Max King's off contract at the end of this year. My God, they wouldn't want to let him slip. Oh, man. He's the only genuine front rower in the club at the moment. Um, there's a lot of raps on Sam Hughes. I haven't seen too much of him, but I think... Phil Gould put out a tweet about him or something yeah. to him and the world's gone mad about him. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, 12 months ago, though, Phil Gould put out a tweet about one Jacob Preston and that turned out okay. Mm. So, fingers crossed. He went all right, Presto. Not bad. Talk about shining lights. Like, seriously, he's shining a light through that whole club right now, Preston. His year was absolutely outstanding and, like, when everything was falling apart, he was the heart and soul of that side last year. Yeah, like for sure. Seriously, week in, soul. week out, oh. playing bastard, debut NRL season, 80 minutes. Played both sides. Yeah. And just whatever was needed, he did it. Yeah. He did it. Hair just won't quit as well. <laughs> Loving the mullet. <laughs> um, okay, boys, it's time for the rubber to meet the road. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get the, the shirts printed after this one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we have the doggy sitting? <laughs> you like a good captain that knows when to give his little players a lift. <laughs> that was good. Well timed. Um, bottom Should four. I show everyone the meme that I sent you boys earlier to try and lift you up? <laughs> good meme. On the, on the steamer as well. Extra <laughs> points. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, always thinking about work. <laughs> uh, rubber to the road. Bottom four. For bottom me. four for me. Uh, 16th in bottom four. Bottom two. Bottom four for me. Uh, talking to Timmy in the green room. Mm. Uh, earlier he was saying 10 bucks for the spoon 
The doggies. Ooh. Uh, I said no such thing, not doggies worst, fans. Yeah. Don't listen to his Tom Fool. No, that's word for word. That's what he said. <laughs> um, if you are a, a patient doggies fan, you think they can make the eight. 350 you're getting, but I let that through. I don't know how betting works, but could you have a head to head for Tigers v Bulldogs for the spoon? Is that could, or is that just what they're all Yeah, we are? could. Um, I mean, we could leave it with me. I could definitely take it back to the. Uh, or could you do a three way like Tigers? Bulldogs Raiders. Yeah. She didn't see that one coming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Good, but Tigers won't be getting it. I'd put the Dragons in there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. All righty. Time for uh, the Cowboys. Mm. Curious case of the Cowboys. Oh. There you Maybe go. Bloke Bulletin. Headline. Bloke Chronicle. Bloke Chronicle. Sorry. Is there, is there a competing? There's not. There's okay. not. It's, just okay. a, it's been a big show. It's been a big show. <laughs> <laughs> is there a splinter group in this no in this crew <laughs> absolutely not jesus christ there's been talking behind my back that they're gonna start the bloke bulletin <laughs> oh my god Forget i said that <laughs> <laughs> okay uh cowboys um really disappointing year last year they're really aside because they're up in north queensland they kind of out of sight out of mind they don't get the headlines that a sydney club does but when you look at this side on paper Jason Tamalolo, Nanai, Lukey, Townsend, Dearden, Tualangi, Robson, Cotter, Drinkwater. Like, Semi uh, Valamai came up and killed it. Valentine Holmes, Kyle Felt. Like, this is, this is a side, in my opinion, that absolutely should be pr- pushing for a premiership in 2024. There is, there's nothing in this squad that it should be holding them back from a premiership push in 2024. The question is, I guess, with what happened last year, it's concerning that that like that they went from basically what five minutes away from a grand final all the way to completely bowing out of the finals and starting the year extremely, extremely slowly in 2023. How do you see the Cowboys in 2024, Rue? To be honest, I have no idea. I'm the same. I have no idea what to read into this side. You are right. They are harder because they're a little bit out of sight, out of mind. You don't really hear much out of the North Queensland Cowboys. But I look at their squad, and I haven't had a look at the 17 that Tim's put together yet, but I imagine it would be pretty top shelf. I look at their squad. There's not too many holes in it. Mm. In fact, I'd argue there's no holes in it. Uh, Spine sorted, strong forward pack. Um, Good outside backs. You know, there's maybe a a centre spot that's sort of up for grabs there, but if that's your biggest problem... Flying mm. realistically, Labart came in and played really well when he came in as well. Labart came in. They've also signed from the Warriors, uh, Viliami Valia. Oh, I'm excited for that. Yeah, I reckon he's a real smart. I love Labart, but I, I reckon he's got a he's got a lot of feels to me, like the fellow they signed from Canberra last Bellamy. year, Valame. Uh, I think he could really pop out of nowhere, Valia. Um, yeah, they should be a top eight side, but I'm far from confident on it. Mm. I am more optimistic, boys, and, and I think they'll be a top eight side this year, and I think they can push for top four. I think it's a very, uh, you know, the majority of the 17 picks itself. I look at last year, and two blokes we speak about so often in, in Helam Lukey and Jeremiah Nanai, both missed a lot of action last season at different times due to sort of different injuries. So they never really sort of found their feet of what we'd seen of them uh, at different stages. Lukey in particular, who we speak about a lot, just starting to get a few games on the field, but. You add in the, the captaincy to Cotter and Tommy Did, and her only going to get better. I think that can lift them to another level. Scotty Drinkwater, full season at fullback last year, was incredible. Uh, I love their roster, and I think they can go deep. So this is a pretty good roster from uh, Timmy the Toe Man, uh, Scotty Drinkwater, uh, <laughs> Murray Toalangi, Holmes, Labart, Valame, Dearden, Townsend, McLean, Robson, Cotter, Luki, Nanai, Tamalolo, Granville, Neem, Leilua, Cohen Hess. Toey uh, stuff. It's Toey stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, again, you look at this. Uh, look, if if you had to have like one, I wouldn't say weakness. If Jordan McLean has the same year as he had, you know, when he was nearly getting selected to Origin, then that's great. Mm. Like y- you're on. But if he is, if he hits that, you know, sometimes they just hit that age and they just struggle a little bit. That's where the top top tier sides don't have that problem. Like their front yeah. rows are top of the top of the um, class. Uh, Lukey, you've got Lukey starting over Leilua. What was your thinking there? Leilua was probably their best player, second best player last year. Yeah, 
And look, they might go with Lay Lewis starting, and uh, it's a, probably a bit of bias here just because I think so highly of Lukey. Mm. I'm hoping if he is fully, fully fit going into round one that he will be named there. I prefer him on the edge to Lay Lua. I think the benefit of Lay Lua as well, and particularly because you look at Jordan McLean, who there are question marks over, is at the back end of his career, what can he offer? Mm. Luciano can play in the middle really effectively as well, mm. whereas Lukey and and I are out and out edge forwards. So Could I, you go Tamalolo <coughs> as prop, Lay Lua at 13? It, absolutely, you could, mm. yeah. Mm. And, and I'm... I don't know what Jordan McLean's looking like in the preseason, mm. so that's you can definitely could. I mean, could you even start Leilua in the front row, bring McLean off the bench potentially? Yeah, I really like uh, Leilua on an edge, but I, I agree with you. The other two fellas are out and out edges. Um, the other one that I would have said would have one hundred percent been on my team would have been uh, Finne Fuiaki. Mm. But now that I look at the team that Tim has put together, I go. Yeah, their depth is so it's good hard, that eh? he potentially doesn't make it, which is crazy because I, I think he's an absolute weapon. The, the only way you'd kind of get him onto that bench, I think, is if if you did play Luciano Leilua as a middle and maybe put him on there for Cohen Hess, but he seems like a bit of a favourite of Peyton's in the club. So if he was going to come for anyone, it's probably Cohen Hess. Man, this side <laughs> is just like Griffin Neem on the bench. Like he's in the Kiwi start, side. You could stick, start Griffin Neem. Yeah, if you, you could want. literally start Neem and, and bring McLean off the bench if you had to. It's a. It's a bloody good roster, far out. And Cohen Hess, he was outstanding. He was really good from last year. Last two years, I think Cohen Hess has been pretty, pretty good. Yep. Had quite a bit of a lull there for a period, but definitely um, playing some good footy. A guy I want to talk about is Jeremiah Nanai. Like the scary thing about this kid is we haven't even seen close to his best yet. Like he's still, I think, twenty-one years old. You know, he's got the backing of Billy now at, in origin level. So the confidence is going to be sky high. I think it's really clear what he needs to get right each game. He needs to just be busy, getting through his work, be ho- a lot of high energy. Uh, I think we could see a big year, a really, really big year from Nanai. Like I, he had his breakout year. Then last year he was, if I recall correctly, had a decent around origin time and then really... F- Maybe got injured or something. He got suspended last year. Got suspended. Yeah. yeah, a few injuries. Yeah, so it was just a, a bit of a stop start. Whereas this year, um, I think that he has pretty much done the preseason. I think. Apologies if I got that wrong. Uh, he's he's, all, he's 21 in about a few weeks. <sighs> so he's still 20. Yeah. Nanai is 21 in a few weeks. Yeah. Far <laughs> out. That is a scary prospect. So I'm really excited to see Nanai um, play this year. Um, Schmokey, maybe Dalian back rower. Schmokey. Um, oh, yeah. I don't mind that shit. If you, have you got the? It would, oh, Dali M can't vote on it. Yeah, it's great stuff. Don't uh, shoot the messenger. Didn't wasn't you? Wasn't me? Shaggy. Wasn't me. Um, <laughs> Guru, thoughts on the night? Ah, uh, yeah. Obviously, so entertaining to watch. Uh, that first season, I've <laughs> I've never seen someone score that many tries of kicks, and I'm very confident I won't ever, unless their name is Jeremiah Nana. Yeah. Or freakish. If Gavin Cooper makes a return to the NRL. Yeah. Even Gavin Cooper, though. Like I remember him being like, oh. The amount he does is unbelievable. That season was mind blowing. It was a joke, wasn't it? It's just crazy. Yeah, and he's it was his first year of first grade too, wasn't it? And it was like the weird way some of the kicks that he caught were like they weren't even landing where they were supposed to land. Yeah. He just happened to be there. Yeah. The ball just always seemed to bounce to him, and he just always seemed to be there. Uh, and there's you know there, there's something in that players like yeah, that. Yeah, for he's sure. One of them. Yeah, it's like Alex Johnson for scoring tries. Like yeah. it's very easy. Oh yeah, he's just outside a good back line. But it's like hey, there's been plenty of players outside that back line or. You know, I've played with really good back lines that they don't find the line like an Alex yeah, Johnson does. For sure. Um, so I'm really excited for him. Another guy, Helam Lukey. He's just been really unlucky with injuries, uh, especially two years ago. Um, like, if he can just get games under his belt, week in, week out, a lot of minutes, really. Because, like, initially it was actually Luke. So it was Nanai and Lukey were coming through. Mm. Lukey had a really good debut. Um, and it was kind of him that was in the front of the pecking order. Then Nanai came the next year and killed it. But if Lukey hits his straps, like, Lukey and Nanai playing as good as they can play are arguably, well, I'd, I'd, I'd put them probably top three back row pairing in the comp, top five if I'm being conservative, playing as good as they can play. You could even make the argument they could go head-to-head with the best back row pairings in the competition. That's how good I think these boys are at there if they hit their potential. Yeah, the potential's there. Oh, mate, 100%. massive. I mean, look what Nanai did in Bloody Origin. Yeah. Um, so really excited for that. Uh, Reese Robson at nine playing 80 minutes do not like it especially when you've got Cotter and uh, Granville 
in the side. I wonder whether um, Peyton is going to go down that route of giving Granville some hooking time. No signs point to it mm. from what I've seen. Uh, but, yeah, I, especially at the age he's at and whatnot, he's probably going to start to add a few Origin series onto his belt. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it would be good not to have him play an 80 every week. Another one with a terrific running game that because he's going 80, it's probably, you know, not necessarily front of mind because he's knows, like a few of these blokes we've mentioned today, he's got to go the 80, he's got to think about that. And if you're running, 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 you're going to run out of steam. In a 60, even a 65-minute roll, you can just go. Yeah, yeah. And if you're very clear on the game plan, you can go, mate, you've got this period, 25 yeah. minutes. If he looks up and he gets to the 20-minute mark and he's like, oh, I'm feeling good, it's just run, run, yeah. run from there on out. Um, I speak about him every year. I'm a huge fan, but year of the drink water. Year of the drink water. He's got an origin jersey just flapping in front of him. I understand Teddy would still be the front runner because of, of the history, but I, I do believe heading into this origin series, the jersey is not in Teddy's hands right now. Mm. I, don't think, I don't think he's guaranteed that spot. Um, and I think Scotty Drinkwater surely, I'd assume Michael Maguire has given him a call and said, mate, there's an opportunity for you here. Because the, the good thing for New South Wales, from a picking the best players you know, in form, in positions this year, it's not an excuse, but you can use the excuse of, it's a new coach, mate. Like, I'm a new coach, it's a fresh start. So that decision to go, Teddy, you have or haven't make it, it's way easier than Freddie going to Teddy and going, thanks for winning me all those origins, or by the way, your form's dropped a tiny bit there for him. You know, it's, yeah. it's an easier conversation to have. Incumbency becomes less of a reasoning, doesn't it? Like, you can get away with it a It bit. should just be form. I think in that, in that position right now, unless, like, and look, Teddy's a champion. If he comes out and kills it, would not surprise me one little bit. But surely Scotty Drinkwater's sitting there going, this is my chance. This is my chance. As far as, like, favourite players to watch in the game, Ooh. Drinky is rocketing up my list. What about their stat, his stat of, it was like 40% of all tries <laughs> the Cowboys have scored he was involved yeah. in, or 50% or something like yeah. that. Absolutely wild. He's, I think it's a top five. He's been in the top five for three years in a row in Dally M's this year, uh, mm -hmm. since, for the last three years. The, the One of those years at 5'8". True, true. Um, the time is now for Scotty Drinkwater, I reckon. Like, this is the time. And I think that we know how good he is, but I think that this year is going to be the year where people go, oh, this is why he was supposed to be Billy Slater's heir apparent. The, this is why the Storm had so much um, faith in him that he could take over Billy Slater's throne. Tories Peck got signed by the Cowboys. The rest is history. Very excited for Scotty Drinkwater. Yeah, massive year incoming. Okay. Um, just also a quick shout-out to Tuolungi. I feel like... Uh, Tal Lungi, uh, I feel like I don't give him enough credit. You know what I mean? Like when you go and look at the stats for Origin in Queensland, he had the most meters for any outside back for Queensland, and he had the second most meters for any player just outside, just below Paddy Carrigan for Origin. But you know, we talk about the Xavier Coates, we talk about the the Selwyn Cobos when he makes his debut, or even the Holmes and the Gagais. But Tal Lungi. He's been bloody good for Queensland, and he's been solid and really consistent for the Cowboys for at least two or three years. Yeah, he's been fantastic, and he sort of came out of nowhere for me. Mm. I sort of, I, I didn't realize how good he was until he was that good. Mm. Just sort of out of the blue for me. I feel um, like Origin is probably where you, oh, me personally I was like, oh shit! Like, I had him as like a, a good winger, but he's like he's a top tier winger. Yeah, he, I remember him coming out that Origin series, going, "Fuck, they found another one here." <laughs> Great. This is another guy that just in these three games every year, no matter where his form's at, whatever, he's going to stand and deliver. And I think so far he's backed it up. Uh, Chatty Townsend, Tommy Dearden. Do you reckon we'll see Dearden controlling the game a little bit more or do you reckon they'll, they'll make sure to kick? Because that's Townsend's forte. I think that's what Chad's in there to do, isn't it? Yeah. And if he's not controlling the game and getting around the park, like is there a better option? Mm. I don't know if there is, but that's what he's there to do. Because let's say, let's say they get to a point where they're struggling for structure and Townsend's not playing that well. They do have really good young sixes in the squad, and I freaking can't believe I'm forgetting. You, you know his name. He's, um, there's Tommy Chester. There is... Um, there's Thomas Duffy as well. I'm Tommy sure. Duffy, who I like, yeah. He's he played, did Duffy way. play a game fullback, fullback last year? Played a trial at fullback. He also played yep. six, hey? Yeah. I, I, I think he's a seven, though, personally. Okay, he's a seven. Tommy Chester played fullback last year. Um, you got Jake Clifford as well. 
Just come back to oh, the park. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Geez. So, I mean, they're prob- you probably have to say there is a bit of pressure on Townsend Definitely. this year to keep his spot. Yeah. Well, has losing the captaincy, is that – you read into that in at all in that regard or not really? Or do you think it's just looking to the future? Oh, I don't think you read into it. I think regardless, it's just his form last year, It just he didn't have the best year, Tad Townsend. Yeah. Um, so whether he ta- had the captaincy or didn't have the captaincy, I would still ha- think there was pressure on his position just because of his form last yep. year. Now, Chaddy Townsend absolutely is still the best seven at the club. It's just a quiet year for him yeah. last year. It really yep. wasn't his best year. Um, Tamalolo, being a bit of whispers about, you know, his, his time up at the Cowboys and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Do you think that there's any truth to that or... Or what? Uh, I, from what I've read, it doesn't sound like any of that noise is coming from the Cowboys. Sounds external, but I, uh, I don't think it'd be a terrible play, to be honest with you. And that if they would be able to free up a million up. bucks, if they could free up that money and move it on somewhere else. They've got gun forwards falling out of their ass at the moment, and I reckon there would be a club out there that would pay. If I'm the Canterbury Bulldogs, oh, yeah, I would be what more a, than happy pay to pay good money. Yeah. I'd pay a million for him now if I was a Bulldog. Still. 100%. He's like, what is he, 29, 30? 30, 31 in May. Oh, I wouldn't pay No, no, so, yeah, sorry, 31 in May. Yeah, I probably wouldn't pay a million for him if I was Canterbury. But in saying that, who else is Canterbury getting? Maybe. I, I'd As you always say, you've got to spend that money, so. New salary cap. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats if you back the overs on the uh, new salary cap. It's just gone off. So. <laughs> um, he hasn't. Look like a million dollar forward for two years now, though, and, and maybe I think a, I think a fresh start. I, look, what I'm looking at when I look at the Cowboys, I think he's being told to play that way. Like the rhetoric coming out was initially like, you know, we all need to team and buy in, and we can't all rely on Tamalolo. That was the initial rhetoric with Peyton, and so I think that the way he's playing right now with the numbers he's putting up, he's being directed like, you just play your role. We don't need you to do the big mm. meters. Whereas he goes to Bulldogs, it will be mate, we need big meters. We need big meters in the middle. Yeah. Or, you know, anywhere else. Yeah, but, but like, even in that, he's, let's have a look. His minutes per game, the last five years, so from 2019 to 2023, starting in 2019, 64 per game to 61 to 59 to 55 to 49. So, like, naturally, he's getting older. He's still not that old. His minutes have dropped significantly. So I thought the output would have increased. I don't, I don't well, know if it has. What I'm saying is I think that, so we've talked about his ball playing getting much better. Yeah. I think that... He's being told, like, you don't get to have 20 runs this game. Mm. You're only supposed to have 12 runs. And those other touches that you have are to connect to our wide running forwards or, you know, the, the yeah. seven or the six or something like that. The one thing I will say is I also feel like he's struggled with a lot of niggling injuries yep. the last two seasons. And I, I feel as though he's had that knee strapped up for two years now. Mm. So I don't know what his body's doing or what his injury injuries are looking like. But I don't think... I'm not saying it's certainly at his age that he can't get back to somewhat near his best if he's fully fit. I just haven't seen it in two years now. Yeah, no, it's fair. fair. I, I just think that, look, obviously you'd have to look at the medical, what's his body like, yeah. but let's let's assume he's fit and healthy and you know, he's looking okay. If I if I was the Bulldogs, I, I'd pay a million dollars for him. It wouldn't be a long-term deal. It'd be, you know, two years yeah. and pay a million bucks. And I, I think for the Cowboys, it would be a smart move. Mm. Be a, you know somewhat harsh and a sad move but um as you said before i would love to see leilua play third eh? mm. if you're tamalolo though he's got four years left on his contract a million dollars a year like why would he move yeah that's a good the, point. the dogs would have to take it up like the four years to make it worthwhile for tamalolo yeah, you have to be a longer term deal i think yeah but you pay four million for tamalolo four million a year yeah i'll do it um <laughs> <laughs> new cap new salary cap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> probably not four years on a million dollars each yeah, year. Yeah, makes no, it no. tough. Yeah. Um, who, who knows? Like, they might be happy with, like, you know what I mean? They, like, they might be happy with the ways. Like, we've got to remember it was, it was his play, like, his big moments against the Sharkies that got him into the prelim against the Eels. Mm. So it wasn't that long ago he was making big plays for the club to get him into a, a prelim final. Um, and also, he played. I think pretty sure he played really well in that prelim. It's only really been. He's, I, I just. I personally think he's just been told to play a different role. I really I, do. I thought he was outstanding in 2022. Yeah. But 2021 and 2023, he had kind of. 2021, he kept getting injured. Yeah. 2023, he had a down year. So he's, yeah. he's only had one he, down year. Honestly, 
niggling injuries could be the genuine excuse as to why. It could just be 21 and 23 he's had some yeah, injuries. Yeah. It really could be that. Because yeah. I'm pretty sure 2022 he's bloody good. Um, okay. Uh, where have we got the Cowboys finishing, boys? Um, it's time for the rubber to meet the road. Um, you had a screech sound effect before you say that every time. <laughs> Hammy, I'm not doing any more work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, um, what do you got, Hammy? They're my last Elton Flatley. Yep. I've got him in the 5 of 8 role. Uh, knocking on the top four, like you said as well, mm. Timmy. Um, a couple of quick markets around him. 3.30 to make the top four if you think they can go that well. The market I don't mind is the biggest improvers one. We spoke about that before. They finished 11th last season, but the season before that they were third. So they've got the they've got the talent there to be, you know, right up the pointy end of the competition. $9.50 you're getting for them to be the, the biggest improver this year. What are the Rabbitohs' biggest improver? Uh, Faves? I'll, I'll take that one on notice. I'll come back in the in the next, uh, right. when we get to the next Julie Julie noted kind of stuff. Julie noted. Um... And you actually mentioned at the top of the segment they could win the comp in 2024, 15 bucks to win the comp. So. Look, it's, it's, they're, they're a bit of a swing side as well because – so I have them probably – I have them fifth to – probably fifth to ninth, fifth to eighth to ninth, maybe even go six. I'll go six to nine, six to nine. But if everything clicks and they're all playing extremely well, I absolutely believe they can win the comp. I have got them seven, eight, nine, ten, seven to ten around that mark. I've got them finishing six, so I'll go fifth to eighth. Hammy, you took the words right out of my mouth. They are easily my biggest improvers this for this year. I thought they were the most underwhelming team last year. Even more underwhelming than Para. I think they're better than Para and more underwhelming than South. At least South had half the good year. Um, I think I, I was so high on them last year. I, I think they have such a good squad. I've got them four to six. Okay. Ooh, four to six. All right. So none of us have in the top four then. No, no. I, I had it highest. I think fifth. Okay. Well, I got him maybe fourth. Oh. So fourth to sixth. Okay. Okay. Uh, and for, for Timmy's benefit there, the Rabbitohs, eight bucks in that biggest improver market as well. Load. <laughs> All right. Safely. Responsibly. Responsibly. <laughs> Time for the Penny Panthers. The Penny Panthers. One in attacking stat, uh, rankings. rankings. Number two. In defence stats uh, rankings, uh, which is again, uh, like we said at the start and midway through, points conceded they're probably they're number one, but when you type it like penalties, missed tackles, yeah, there was like a bees in it, a it bees stick between yeah. them and the Broncos. Um, so pretty stock standard, best defensive and attack team in the comp essentially. Heading into this season, uh, look. Like, what more is there to say, this incredible club? I, okay, Spencer Lino, I do think that they can fill that gap. I, it's going to be a little bit of a loss, but I think they can fill that gap. I do think that Stephen Crider is going to be a bigger loss than people are giving it credit for. Uh, I think that a lot of people, when you look at centres, the normal centres, the chances for them to have these big moments in impact games isn't usually that high. Whereas Critter, out of all the centres in the game right now, has the most big moments in big games and the amount of times that he's, you know, clawed them back into victory or made a big play, even in games that don't have that much bearing on the competition, like that much bearing, he still managed to have big plays. Uh, sometimes, like, okay, um, the Roosters lost Luttrell and Cooper Cronk and everyone was talking about Cooper Cronk and rightly so, like the loss of Cooper Cronk is, is, is the biggest loss. But I also do believe that the loss of Latrell Mitchell in big moments, the Roosters have, have missed that um, at times over the last few years. And I think it's a similar situation with Critter. I think that Taylor May is an is, you know, absolute gun. He's going to deliver high quality footy, but we're yet to see the big moments from Taylor May. He may be that guy, but we're yet to see it. And I think Critter is going to be, um, he's a locker room guy, he's a local junior, and he's a big moment player. And they come literally once every once every 200 NRL players, you might get a big game, big game player, and Crit is one of them. Yep, and to some clubs, they just never come. Mm. That's the reality yeah. of it. Um, I think he will be one of the biggest losses they've had in quite some time, uh, but I do think they're going to be able to overcome it. I think that Taylor May returning this year, I am huge on him this year. You can play him at centre. Um, you could play Taruva at centre if you wanted to. I think they'll go with Taylor May and Isaac Tungo in the centres, though. Um, the young fellas that you were talking about? Um, what's does, his name? Um, uh, Where is he? Jesse McLean? 
Yeah, Jason McLean's in the system still too. You'll see his brother come in very soon too. Um, yeah. I know it's a different position, but Isaiah Iongi has been killing it at fullback in New South Wales Cup. Yep, he's very talented. Uh, Jack Cole, he's a 5'8 coming through, who I think could be a proper star as well. Uh, there are so many... Maverick Guy, Liam Henry, two guys that I think could fill that spot left by Spencer Lenu very, very quickly. I mean, what do you say? Yeah. I think they're the all-stars last year. Yeah. I, I think they are the best team of the NRL era and I probably won't listen to any arguments about it. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah, they're just like, they're just a well-oiled machine. Everything is working in sync. They lose a big player. They get one of the best young gun players coming through. It's just all plug and play from at the moment. Yeah, I, I think that they are the best team of the you know era of playing limited tackles mm. rugby league. And you consider, you know, people put up the Paramount Eels of the eighties didn't have a salary cap. Mm. You know, get their halves together the entire time. Jerome Lewis now going to have to leave. Like you think about the guns that they've lost throughout these three years. You can make a team out of the guys they've lost and that shit into the top four. It's seriously <laughs> crazy. And then they bring in like guys like Brad Schneider. Yeah. Like what's to say he doesn't come in to be the best bloody player, you know, one of the best young rookies coming through. Mm -hmm. um, interesting to see how they use uh, Dale uh, Laurie. Um, I wonder whether, like, is it going to be almost a, a battle between him and Schneider as to who gets that jersey next year off Lua? Don't rule out this Jack Cole, I'm telling you. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if he comes from the clouds to grab it. But, uh, yeah, I'd say those two are the front runners at the moment. Signed for three years too. Jeez, okay. He can play Jack That's Cole. big raps. That's big raps. Yeah. Well, he's actually signed longer than both Laurie and Schneider. Yeah. Well, Schneider, a seven or a six? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure either way because he's a big body him, was it? De decent ball runner yeah he's got the physique of probably more of a six yeah. I, I think uh again he's early on in his career so i haven't seen him get a team around the park well enough yet to say a seven so i would lean towards a six i think jack cole is the most obvious six out of the three of them out and out six yeah. are we talking like trent barrett style six are we talking you know um, fitler what are we talking from here? from the little i've seen of him he just he's the one guy that i just don't think is a seven i think okay. he is a six i think he's got a lot of attacking upside and i mean could there potentially ever be an easier six jersey to slide into as well like <laughs> that's the thing as well like you, you're looking at this team and if we were talking about the greatest teams of the modern era you'd go geez they must have an experienced halfback it's mm. 25. you know what's crazy so random stats guy they're the second most inexperienced side in the competition. I, I messaged him and said, are you sure? And he's yeah. like, mate, have, have a think about it. Like, It's actually insane. It's wild. Um, you know, Nathan Cleary, in my opinion, has just come up with the best 20 minutes of rugby league by an individual that has ever existed. And what do we always say about Harles? Jeez, when they get to 27 and 30, they're going to be great. He's got two years up his sleeve before he's even in that arena. He's got 10 more years in the game, pretty much. It's insane. Yeah, without getting yeah, too far ahead of ourselves, but I saw enough from... I know I have seen enough in recent years of Dane Laurie in, at the Tigers. I mentioned Buller last year in a wooden spoon side, how good he was. I saw enough of Dane Laurie the back end of last year at 5'8", to think he will seamlessly slot in at 5'8", and mm. will kill it. As mm -hmm. you said, not a tough spot to fit into at the Penrith Panthers with Nathan Cleary running the show. And oh. I think he's the one with the most upside, Dane Laurie. Mm. But I haven't, I haven't seen Cole. That's just yeah. I think Laurie is just going to slot in. And I think people forget as well. Like Laurie was their Player of the Year two, three years ago, two years ago yeah. at the Tigers. Like yep. in a in a side that won the spoon essentially, yep. he was ripping and tearing. Oh. Yeah. So and then they moved into six, and he killed it. Yeah. Uh. Then I let him go. Um, yeah. <laughs> another guy uh, I am actually really excited to see is Alamotti. Uh, I, I really just want to see how he responds to the Panthers system. Because, Guru, you can attest to it. This guy coming out of school was the he was the best outside back. He was the center of all centers. Yeah, he was uh, he was you know the best center in SG ball when he probably should have been playing Harold Mounts. Like he was just unbelievable coming through. Um, I'll be honest, when I watched him at Canterbury, he came into first grade, he probably looked a uh, yard slower than I thought he would in first grade. Uh, but once again, you walk into this Penrith system. He's I think it's, it's a little bit there. like it was, it's much clearer. He's closer to a centre than Haworth, but I think he's fallen into that category of Haworth where it's like he's a bit, just a bit too big and a yard too slow for NRL centre. 
Whereas he might make a really, really good edge back rower, um, just because of his 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 speed compared to other edge back rowers is actually quite good. But compared to you know centers that are absolutely lightning, I I think he might land find himself either as an impact bench player that comes in the middle and plays 20 minutes of just going hard, nuggety build, strong, almost like a cheese, or an edge back roll with just a just a tough edge back roll. And that's the plan this year, isn't it? But I, I think, think so. I don't know if they've officially said it, but from what I've heard, yeah. Whispers I've heard is he has actually genuinely been signed as a forward. Yeah. Mm. Very intriguing. So you get that, like, sometimes, like, you see it quite often, actually. Like, they come through the grades in a specific position. They get into NRL and they just don't suit that position. Mm. Um and with, with his natural, like, he's a big, big boy. His explosiveness, maybe he just needs to get on the field for 20 to 30 minutes and just go crazy and then get him Imagine off. Imagine if they lose Spencer Lenny to the Roosters on big money, then they sign Alamotti on probably peanuts for an NRL player based off getting, the dollars getting rid of him. And he, like, repl- not saying he's going to be as good as Lenny, but if he can replace him and just be that man off the bench in 30 minutes, just, as you said, come on, rip and tear. Well, it, he, he does, like... He plays very differently, but I do think he could play a similar role to Sorensen played uh, mm. when he was coming off the bench, where he, sometimes you played him in the middle, sometimes on the edge, because he's an, he is an explosive, powerful athlete. Like he boy, really lean, is. footwork, yep. very Sorensen. Um, so, yeah, I'm really keen to see how he responds to the Penrith. And it, it'll be a real test as well of, you know, we know their juniors can thrive in that system, but how do they go when they take other people's juniors that are super gun, plug them into their system. You know, the Storm, for example, we know they can develop players and they know they can take other guns from other teams, turn them into superstars. This will be a really good test for the Panthers. Can they do that as well? Yeah, I think Ivan would be excited about this one. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> yeah. It's a, yeah, it would be a really personal challenge for Ivan, I reckon. Look at that, their squad and you talk about the, the ins and outs of their lose from grand final, like, and how they've managed to keep this team together. So from their starting 13, they lose Critter and replace with Taylor May, who's a potential star in his own right. It was terrific two years ago in his debut NRL season. Then they lose a bench forward who averaged 33, 34 minutes a game. The Broncos that they beat lost a starting front rower and a starting centre. The year before, Parramatta lost Papali'i, Reid Marnie, Nikoi, a bunch of players. Murata. And, yeah, Murata. And then the Panthers lose a starting centre. Yeah, it's, they're just so good. So good. Um, I want to give a massive rap to Luke Garner. You know, before he came, we were pretty high on, imagine what he's going to do when he comes from the Tigers. Probably didn't fulfil what we thought he would. But to, 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 think, to think that a guy like Hosking, he'd move on before Garner, it just shows you Garner, his dedication to the cause, his dedication to stay in the squad. He's got a premiership ring now. He went from the Tigers to a premiership ring and halfway through the year, it looked like there was no chance he'd make the 17. Like, I love seeing that stuff. That's just hanging in there, gritting it out. You'll get your opportunity when you get it again, and he took it. Yeah, for sure. I think he did really well. I'll be honest, I was very high on him to start the season. We got about six weeks in, and I thought, I don't know how this is going to play out. But you're right. He was very resilient throughout the season. You know, obviously, uh, Zachy Hosking had his time in the sun, mm. earning that spot, and Garner was on the outside, forced his way back into that team, which was full credit to him. Um I think he needs to have a big season here, though, because I think you've got... Oh, it's getting harder and harder to get in that squad. Well, he's only signed to the end of 2024. Uh, they've got Maverick Guy coming through the system. They've got Harrison Hassett. Um, you know, you've got a guy like uh, Isaac Tunga who could shift into the back row at some Alamotti. point. Alamotti. Alamotti, uh, you know, Peach. You can shove him there if you need to. There's a lot of guys there, and God knows Preston what other Ricky is young, young guys. On the edge, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Lugano, even regardless of form, potentially gets moved on at the mm. end of the season. But, I mean, what what a great story. Like, great story, Whatever though, happens, yes. like, he went and won a comp. He won yeah. a competition at the Panthers. Like, I think that's incredible. Um, uh, look, if I'm going to be, like, super nitpicky, um, Tungle's injuries, I know it's only been a year. He's still a very young player, but it, it didn't seem to get back to his best throughout the season. I'm going to be really keen to see him on the field for a long period of time this year uh, because, it, yeah, it was a bit stop-start this year for him. I mean, he, don't get me wrong, he still had amazing games, yeah. but he was a little bit stop-start this year. And I think the reality of his situation is that, you know, I think it got revealed at the end of last year, he's not doing, like, medical assistance. Yeah, look, might be. reportedly, yeah. um, maybe there's a half-truth in it, yeah. but 
even if there is a half truth in it, is it is a it is something to keep uh, an eye on, kind of thing. Oh, for sure. What yeah. I'm saying is though that you know when he as soon as he gets injured, it's going to be the top. That's, of the yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's a great point. That's, that's going to be point. the. The angle it all yeah, comes that's from. That's your second so. great point the whole time. Thank you. <laughs> I'm looking for a hat trick. Watch out. <laughs> Big finish <Yeah>. also. <laughs> <laughs> You're a nut trucker of night, mate. <laughs> Doing your best work. Um, uh, I mean, what else is there to say? T- Taylor and May, I can't wait to see this kid. Mm. I cannot wait. Like, comes in the first year, kills it. Rookie of the year? Close to at least? I, think he, I feel like he was. I feel like he won it. Anyway, if he didn't, he got close. Obviously gets injured. And he is actually yet to win a premiership, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he's Mr. Moore. So, like, when you talk about a guy being motivated with his talent, um, also going to be a, a space to watch because there are whispers. He is actually only signed this year. A player of his talent, currently not re-signed, is scary as anything. Uh, Sammy Walker won it that year. Sammy Walker. Oh, okay. Fair Name enough. Name another 22-year-old winger that you are shocked he hasn't won a premiership. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's number three for you. There you go. Boom. Oh. Coming. That's what a treble. What happened there? He got, why did he miss the grand final? Injured. Oh, injured. Eh? injured. He's, he's and and they even, he even got given a delayed suspension from some <laughs> field stuff and then he got injured, the poor bloke. Oh. Far out. Um, again, to be super nitpicky, they're my favourites to win the comp again. But it is interesting that both Taruva and Taylor May haven't re-signed yet. Yeah. It, it, that is because both of them could demand substantial money at nearly most clubs. Most clubs would take a Taruva and most clubs would take a Taylor May. Um, I'm probably going to get this one. Taruva won Rookie of the Year this year, didn't he? Yeah. So there you go. There you go. So basically like two Rookies of the Year. I know Sam yeah. Walker won it. but So that that is going to be – I will say that – Regardless of how good, and like this, you know, I might eat my words. You might have the best juniors in in the, you know, in the business. But if you lose Critter, Taruva, and May, surely there's a year where you you take a bit to fill that up. At least okay. one year. <laughs> Three years Mate, ago, I would have agreed with you. Yeah. I don't know with this mob. Surely, like. It'd be, remember when Appy was going to be a huge loss? So. But I, what I'm saying is Critter, Taruva, and May. Like, so you're not just losing one Appy, in a two-year period. But they're all outside backs. So you, you've got basically, you've got to have three essentially like Dally M standard players ready to go. I'm not saying they can't do it, but it's a big, big... It's like the, one of the biggest mm. tests you can have in a position. Yeah, but in saying that, like <laughs> Brian Toto gets Dally M winger of the year and Isaac Tungo gets Dally M centre of the year. I won't be overly shocked. Like it's still a damn good squad. Oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying it's not going to be a good squad. What I'm saying is, is they've shown in recent years they just plug and play. The next player comes in and they're just as good as the year before. If they were to lose both those boys, a whole edge. Yeah. It, for them to lose Critter, May and Taruva in 2025, like by 2025, for them to be able to just go, oh, here's three more players or two more players – that are of Dally M standard, it'll be one of the great tests, like great mm. tests. Now, I, they, if any club can do it right now, it's the, the Panthers, but like that is a massive test on their chance. I reckon they will lose one of Mayo Taruva. I think so too. I think so too. And I think that's actually what's holding things up is because they're, pro- they're both probably demanding X amount. Yeah. And the club's going, come on, boys. Like, you know. Which is the beauty of both of them though. Whichever one you lose, the other one can play centre or wing. Yeah. So it's not like you're going to the market just looking for a winger. Mm. You can look for a centre or a winger. Uh, uh, this isn't relevant to the conversation. I just know someone's going to correct me. I got my years wrong. He still didn't win. It was Nenai that won in 2022. Nenai? Rookie of the year. 2022? Yeah. For Taylor May? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yep, fair, fair. Um, but again, that is like super nitpicking. Like literally, the fact that they could lose Kikau, Burton, um, they're losing Critter, they lost, uh, you know, Capewell, and there's an argument to be made that their last year's squad was the best squad they've had. Like, as in they played the best footy. Yeah, I think there's a very fair argument. Which is yeah. craziness. And there's every chance in three years we're talking about two more centres that we don't know their names right now. Yeah. And Maybe it's McLean. they don't go into the market. Yeah. And say, hey, do you want to come play unders in the greatest team of all time? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, all right, boys. Time for the rubber to meet the road. <laughs> Crash zoom on Denon and... <laughs> <laughs> top four Top four for me um, Panthers yeah. <laughs> Top four for me uh, And 
be surprised if they're not in the grand final. Yeah, uh, one to two for me. Yeah, I've got them top top of the pops and yeah, top two. Yeah, minor premiers. Yep, I've got them top four, winning the comp, and uh, they're the favourites for a four peat, three dollars seventy five. Not many teams you'd say have a look at the Clive Churchill market for. Penrith Panthers probably one of them. Nathan Cleary eight bucks. Um, and it's actually value. Like it's, it's actually, great. It's, it's actually value. And Jerome Luai in his It'll last three dollars the week of. Yeah, well. Yeah, uh, not far off. And then Jerome Luai in his last season for the club, they do love a storyline for those kind of things. Last ride, baby. 34 bucks. So Nice. There, there you go. There you go. All right, time now uh, for the Brizzy Broncos. Um, incredible year last year. Uh, it's a line in the sand for them. This is the standard. This is what the Broncos are. Um, and I think that heading into this season, I, I, I do think they're going to miss guys like Capewell. Obviously, Herbie and um, Flegler are going to be missed, but I do think the experience of Capewell in that lo- locker room is going to be something that they've got the talent to replace a guy like Capewell coming through, yeah. but it's just the experience in the locker room, the right things to say, the big moments that Capewell has in defence, effort plays. Uh, so I do think he's been missed, but it's an, been an incredible year and... In my opinion, for this year for the Broncos, obviously the goal is to win a comp. They absolutely should win a, should be you know pushing to win a comp, but it, it's just it's the line in the sand for me. There's no more up and down. There's no more yo-yoing of like, oh yeah, we're 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 in a grand final and then we're coming sixth and then we're coming third and then we're coming seventh. Um, I think that from ne- from with this current roster, for the next few years they should be finishing top four in every single year. Um, I'm extremely excited. As long as Adam Reynolds stays injury free, I'm extremely excited for the Brisbane Broncos heading into this year. Yes, Flegler is a massive loss. Farmworth, Palacia, massive loss. But they do have some really good young fellas coming through. Depth is sickening in this <laughs> squad. It is ridiculous. Um, Flegler is going to be a big loss, no doubt about it. But you've got two of the other best middle forwards in the game there. And you've got a heap of other guys in this squad that. <laughs> like your Corey Jensen's, Marty. Um, there's a couple of young guys there that I really like. Jaden Hunt, Takura, the big fella. Willison. Willison, who just, just needs his body to hold together and he'll be a gun. Um, so, yeah, I, I think you'll be able to – you might not get to the level, but you'll cover the losses of Palacia and Flegler. Um, I think Herbie's probably going to be the bigger loss. I think he's harder to replace. Okay. Just because he does so much work coming out of his own end. Uh, on top of that, you lose – him, you lose Kurt Catewell, so you're going to need to put in a new second row, which we assume will be Pekura. Mm-hmm. You're also going to need a new centre, which from what we gather from Kevy is going to be Selwyn Cobbo. Uh, they're going to be paired with Ezra Mam. Might have a new winger out there, hopefully Corey Oates. Mm-hmm. Might be Jesse Arthurs, I don't know. That edge, if I'm playing Brisbane, that's the edge that I would be going at, though, 100%. Yeah, like is, I believe they'll finish top four, but there's absolutely a world where they – and the bottom end of the eight. Like, there absolutely could happen. A young side gets ahead of themselves. And I know we've been saying that for a couple of years, but in reality, most of these players have barely played finals footy. Yep. You know? And so they could get ahead of themselves. They could think, oh, you know, we're the, the big dogs on the block now. We're not. And so they could start the season slow or go through a mid-year bit of a rut during origin. Um, and that's, that's where, like, at the, when you've got guys like Herbie Farmworth and Flegler... They're the kind of players that like pull you through that stuff with their tough carries and their. Uh, so going to be seriously missed. I, I think actually Flegler's a bigger loss than Herbie, only by a tiny bit, just because we do have outside backs that can get through a lot of work. Not not the same work as Herbie, um, whereas Flegler, very hard to find a like for like front mm-hmm. role with Flegler. Um, but I'm extremely excited for the Broncos this year. Timmy, thoughts? Yeah, incredible roster. Every chance to go one better than last season. And uh, I think you're right, Kempion, that they, you know, I don't, I'm not saying they'll be complacent coming out of it. I'm sure Kevy Walsh will have them ready to go and being aware of that. And he'll use clubs like the Sharks and more so than the Sharks, the, the Cowboys an example because the Cows fell out of the eight last season. But they could finish sixth, seventh, potentially eight but then make a run come finals time because the talent's there Mm. they can go and run and win four on the trot which not a lot of clubs can from outside the four that being said with the roster they've got there's no reason why they should be falling outside the top four Mm. 
Um, some guys, obviously, we've spoken about him, but Brendan Piacora, jeez, I am so excited to see this kid play. Like the moments, the moments of brilliance he had last year, like even even ones where you know he'd make a line break and he might make the wrong choice in passing or something, but it was just the line breaks that he was making. You're just going, very rarely do you see a young edge back rower do this kind of damage yeah. in he's, big games. He's very Britain Nicker. Yes. Reminds me so much. And the lines he runs, you know, same edge, mm. very similar physiques. Yeah. He's exciting. I cannot wait for him to get, you know, I'm just excited for him to be in game 16 this year, confident that he's a first grader, got his match fitness going, got his pairing with Renault good. I think he'd be on Renault's side or even Reese Walsh. Um, very, very excited for Pierre Cora. Yeah, I think uh, attacking wise, he is sensational. Defensively, I haven't watched a heap of him, but as I said, I think that with that left edge, just be patient with them, though. Mm. It's it's a completely new set of combinations. It's going to take a bit of time. They will find their way. Um, but, my God, the attacking upside you'll get out of an edge of Pekka and Selwyn. Oh, <laughs> it's going to be so oh, interesting. Geez. And Ezra. Oh, my God. And, and Reese coming back the, around the back. And if you get Corey Oates on that wing, Corey Oates looks better right now than he ever has throughout mm. at any point in his career, I reckon. The pitch looking good. With all, sorry, man. So, with all that attack, and, you know, they've got offloading forwards, Payne House, the others there, but, like, a scheming Reese Walsh. Ezra Mann, we spoke about on last week's set about, about how good his support plays off the back of Payne House when Tommy Flegg was there. Are they just going to... Obviously, they'll be structured. They'll be, they'll be composed. There'll be all these sorts of things. But do they just say, boys, let's play footy. Let's get this second phase play and nobody will be able to stop us. How do you see it? Or, or, or could that... Yeah, what do you reckon? I, I think it'd be a bit of both. I, I think we saw that last year when the Broncos just got in this mood where there was no structure... It was just like, boys, we're going to spin it and you try and keep up. And it was seriously some of the most exciting footy we've watched in years. I genuinely believe that Broncos, some of the stuff they put together last year, it's some of the most exciting footy we've seen in a very long time. It reminds me of the late 90s, early... Um, what's that fridge you were having a dream about last night? <laughs> 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 oh, we are not providing context. On yeah, that. <laughs> he had some weird dreams about a fridge last night making noises in in the studio, and it's now happening. It's now happening. Um, and so yeah, I think it'll be a bit of a mixture of both. Renault will build. That's crazy. Is that someone? Oh, it's someone putting something against the wall. I think it's my fourth best call of the day. Is that head noise for me, or is that actually happening? No, that's happening. Oh, okay. That's happening. Okay. okay. It's Guru's fault. Get out. I'm not going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anyway, so yeah, really excited to see how they come together. Especially what's exciting about that young group, like Reese Walsh and Pia Cora, I think they all went to school together as well. So they're really tight mates. And you can, you can always oh. like, when you're that close to mates on the field, you can always see it in the way they play their footy. Um, interesting, Billy Walters is only signed until 2024. Meanwhile, Smoothie got re-signed. Um, I don't yeah. think that's, that shows anything, but it is a bit strange. It, Smoothie would get re-signed before Billy Walters when Billy Walters had such a good year last year. Yeah, I uh, thought, thought about that previously. That is interesting. You've also got, obviously, Blake Moser, 24, 25. I hope we see him at some point. But, yeah, I thought Billy would have been definitely locked up by now. Jeez, it stings me to see Ezra Mam not re-signed yet. Please happen. Please happen. Um, another, th like, when you talk about depth, depth, the fact they've got Tristan Salas sitting in a reserve grade <sighs> is craziness. Like, he comes in and he's not on Reese Walsh's level, but... They don't miss much of a beat. They really don't. What would you do for a sailor? Oh. So much for a sailor. <laughs> so he, saw, he signed with a super... I don't get it. A super league oh. sign. I don't understand. No idea. There's so many clubs that could use Tristan Sailor. Yeah. Like, so many. Um, Fletcher Baker, going to be really interesting. Big shoes to fill. Um, you know, like for like in body shape. He does <coughs> similar-ish to Flegler. Uh, what an opportunity for him, though. Yeah, I'll be honest with you, this one surprised me a little bit uh, from what I'd seen of him at the Sydney Roosters. But, um, you know, Kevin knows a thing or two about a good footballer, so we'll see how he goes. Um, but, the, you know, even if the beauty of this side is if he doesn't work and it goes terribly wrong, you've got so many other guys here mm. that can play that role. But uh, hopefully Fletcher can make the best of it. I would really like to see Corey Jensen get rewarded with a spot in this team. Mm. Okay, so starting pack, what's your Brisbane Broncos starting pack? What's Timmy got here? Corey, I got Corey Jensen. Good gear. Jensen, Walters, Haas, Ricky, Picker, Paddy Carrigan. I agree with that. I would have Carrigan at 13. Smoothie, Fletcher Baker, Hetherington, Xavier Wilson. Yeah. There's, um, yeah, I'd probably go pretty similar to that, to be honest with you. Who are we missing then? It's a Q 
Kira, I reckon he'll go very close to getting a start. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised if he does become a mainstay in this team by the end of the season. Jeez, um, he's got some wraps on him. Holy. Mm. Massive I think the wraps. other one. He's a, for people listening, they, you know, compared to Payne Haas, kind of. He's an Adonis, boss. isn't he? Massive, yeah. massive. Yeah, he's a big bit of gear. Uh, the other one is, that I like is Jaden Hunt. He's come up from the St. George Illawarra Dragons. I won't put him in the same sort of category as Jackson Ford, but I've always felt like he has been wildly underutilised at the Dragons. Mm. So a little one to keep an eye on there. Xavier Willison's a big one for me, though. <laughs> if he can just Mate, stay on the field. I love watching him play. Yeah. Just his attitude that he brings. Like, you very rarely see a big bopper like that with just doing all the little things right. And, you know, mate, if everything goes terribly wrong and you have to pick Marty Tapao, did the job for you for so long last year. I, so I actually good. thought it was a bit strange when he got dropped. Mm. I thought he was doing a really well, good job. It's because he, he need That's Cameron right, Graham yes. and, then he got, and then people were playing too good for him yeah. to get back in. But he's – look – when he got signed, I was a bit like, oh, I don't know about that signing. Yep. I thought he was absolutely outstanding for the Broncos right. last year. Played yep. such a good role. And it just shows you how important the environment is. I'm not saying that manly environment was bad, but clearly it wasn't clicking with Tapao. Like, it wasn't clicking. He goes up to the Broncos, puts the offload away, just gets through his work, and he was, he was great. He was really, really good for us. Um, I'm keen to see Dean Mariner. Like, I know you haven't got him, Timmy. Okay, we'll read out Timmy's uh, top 17 or... Starting 17, Walsh, Arthurs, Cobbo, Staggs, Oates, Mam, Reynolds, Jensen, Walters, Haas, Ricky, Piacora, uh, Carrigan, Smoothie, Baker, Hetherington, Willison. I, man, I want Dean Marin in that side. I get it, and I probably agree with it. I, I would probably have Selwyn Cobbo on a wing with Jesse Arthurs in at centre. But I cannot wait to see more of Dean Mariner. I would be happy to have Cobbo wing and Dean Mariner at centre. Would be my... And, and Arthur's five. on the other wing? Yep. With, for Oates? Yep. Arthur's was so good in that grand final. Seriously. I love Arthur's. Like, I'm such a fan of Arthur's. I genuinely thought he was going to win a Clive at halftime. Mate, he was freaking... He was killing it. Like, the amount of tough carries he had with Fish and Leota absolutely foaming at the mouth to get to him was crazy. The whole game plan was kick it to Arthur's, <laughs> belt the shit out of him, then go after Herbie. They both ran through Penrith all night. Mate, he was... Phenomenal, and what I love about Jesse Arthur's career is like he was almost on the outer. He went to the Warriors like like he wasn't wanted. Now, I wouldn't say he's a lock in their back line, but if I'm selecting the team, there's no way he's not in my starting starting seventeen. He's a gun, and then Dean Mariner, 2023 for the Broncos, four games, five tries, three try assists, four line breaks, 134 meters per game. Mate, Dean Marin's a gun. <laughs> gun. For those listening, we just uh, got a head swivel from Timmy. Head swivel. My neck nearly snapped. <laughs> um, so yeah, like I will say, if you're going to get, Steve. if you're getting nitpicky, if you're getting nitpicky, um, let's say everyone stays injury free. Am a little bit worried about the edge defences with Selwyn and Katoni in this each centre. There are times where. I'd say like seven out of ten times, Tony makes great, dominant, good reads. But there's three out of the ten where they're just way wrong. They're way wrong. So and that might be really harsh on Tony because it's like, well, if you want me to make the big plays, I've got to risk something. Yep. Um, but if you've got both centers that make huge risks, Selwyn does big risks, Tony big risks, that's where I go, oh, on both sides. Whereas if you have them on the right side, you can almost go, okay, if we leak a bit of points there – on the right that's fine whereas on both sides it could make both sides a little bit leaky that's my only real nitpick at the moment with I, the Broncos I don't know if this is a big call or not you can be the judge but I think Selwyn Cobbo will, will be back on the wing by around 8 to 10 okay oh, I look I would start him at, at wing yep. I really would I, I actually we've spoken about it a lot but winger is a more important role than centre at, at times these days and I just I want to see Selwyn taking that first hit up after a, a kick return. All his attributes, the the kick return, the speed he's got when he gets an inch on the wing, the combination on the wing with Reese Walsh playing at the back, and then he has his defensive issues at times on the wing. They're not going to get any easier at centre. Yeah. I, and what's so tough to say that about Selwyn, though, is that if he has a Dallium centre you know, next to his name by the end of the year, not a single one of us are going to be surprised. No, God, no. Like, we're going to be sitting there, well, of course he's a Dalian winger. He's so on Cobo. Um, 
it's yeah, it's just that defensive stuff that I I'm really keen to see how they sort that out. It's going to be a baptism of fire too on that left edge. Mm. They go to Las Vegas. They play the Roosters. That'll be I think they'll be marking up against Wong and Joey Marno. <laughs> they come back. South Sydney come to town. Campbell Graham, whoever's on that right edge, Keon Coleman Tungy. They then have to go to Penrith the week after. Cop that. Cop Nathan Cleary's right edge. Come home the week after against the Cowboys, and then they have to go to Melbourne the week after. So Mate, they're doing a lot of travelling. Every bloody year the NRL does this. <laughs> oh, every bloody year, we can't get a single favour. It's ridiculous. You have to leave Queensland occasionally. <laughs> Any rules you want to change? Uh, <laughs> um, I want the game to be seventy minutes instead of <laughs> eighty. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I, I, I'm just another year with Reese Walsh. Like, another year of Reese Walsh and Ezra Mam learning to play with each other. Just stop the fight. It is so exciting. So exciting. Uh, anyone else standing out for you, boys? Excited? Let's hit some rubber. <laughs> Give us that rubber. Hit the rubber, right? Just right. Look, I'm just trying to look at some development players here. <laughs> So there's a there's actually a 14 year old guy on a development deal <laughs> going to their most promising camp at the end of the year that I've got some big raps on. I'd like to go through his life story through. I've got to play. I was taking 45 minutes and this hamstring's going to tear itself. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, boys, it's time for the rubber to meet the road. <laughs> Crash in and go. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! It's been a shift, boys. It has been a shift. Um, and unfortunately, there's actually still more after this. Well, actually, you boys. Oh, actually, there is still more after this. Just quickly, we'll, we'll get through it in fucking a minute. It's more, uh, bounce back. <laughs> <laughs> it's much bounce back. <laughs> you know, it's going to bounce back my head off this wall when I fucking fall asleep. That's the first. That's the first nomination for bounce back. My head on this wall. Um, I've got them top four. There is a world where they finish four to eight, but I got them top four, and I think that anything less than, I think that they'll be expecting a grand final. Mm. Yeah, top four for me. I've got them in fourth, and yeah, top four. One to four. Yeah, top four for me too. Top four for me. Sports at punters really like them, Kempi. They're actually best back to win the comp at $4.25. Really? The Brisbane Broncos. Yep. They get uh, it. Punters get it. Payne, Payne Haas, uh, best back in the Clive at $18 as well. Yeah, he's got Clive written all over him. Uh, and I don't mind the look at the grand final Quinella Broncos to play the Panthers again, $7. Could you imagine that? A rerun? Yes. Yes, I can. Yeah, it, it might be the <laughs> no, but like it's just the the narrative and the yarn. Right. Yeah. Mm. I mean, when would be the last time that happened? Two teams play each other again. Um, have you guys got your seventeen origin yet sorted or not? <laughs> all right, New South Wales. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, guys. That is the season preview done and dusted. I think it is actually our longest ever podcast. Yep, it is. Congratulations. So, to, like, if you enjoy this content, it's been a big shift. Subscribe, give Guru a follow, give SC Playbook a follow, give Hammy a follow, uh, subscribe on YouTube, even give us a rating on podcast. That'd be cool. We actually never asked that. So, that, that'd be awesome. Give us a rating. I think my kangaroo hat sold out about three days ago. But if there are <laughs> any still there, please come and grab them. Please come and grab them. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. We really uh, appreciate all your support over the years. Um, and hopefully, this is a way to give back to you guys. As usual, we will go and fuck ourselves. Thank you. Crash Zoom and out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Uh, Roosters were actually the first team we spoke about, and we actually spoke about them for way too long because for two reasons, two towie, two arouse, but also Matty forgot to tell us the 20-minute mark, so we just kept going. Uh, so it ended up being 45 minutes worth of Roosters content. Uh, so like Lord of the Rings, this is the extended edition. This is the rest of the Roosters chat that we cut out of the initial 20 minutes that you saw at the start of this podcast. Um, and it's free. Not even going to charge you for it. Extended edition comes with the normal edition. There you go. I think another thing to watch heading into this season surrounding Sam Walker is, you know, I was having a look back at some stuff the other day from them in 18, 19, and just, you know, obviously they had Cooper Cronk. And they were very structured and everything. And Sam Walker is a completely different footballer. And I sort of I look back to those years, and I know he's had suspensions and he's, he's had a couple of bad decisions, but I find it really interesting to watch how Radley's still trying to gel with Sam Walker. As you said, you've got to let him play both sides of the rock all over the place. Radley's at his best when he's playing a very strategic sort of game, and I think he, I think Cooper Cronk brought the absolute best out of him. That's now four or five years ago. Mm. I feel like Radley's still trying to find his feet. So that's, that's one thing that I'm really interested to watch, how... How Trent Robinson makes it all work this year. See, I, I just think, sorry, it can be yeah. at their best. Radley's that 
you know, the ball playing 13 that we know he is and, and he's so brilliant at, he's the first point of contact for Brandon Smith. Good service off the deck, finds Radley. And Radley then finds Keary. And then when they're flying, Sammy Walker is the outside Keary. And their link, that's their link up. That's their chain. Because he is a great 13, but like, in my opinion, he hasn't been anywhere near where he was yeah. since they won those back-to-back -back comps. Yeah, see, I'm actually going more towards Radley. I actually want him ball playing less. I mm, feel like yep. he, he went a little bit too far in that direction. And towards the back end of the season, he turned more into a traditional 13 where he was still ball playing to a degree, but he was just taking tough carries. Uh, so it's a, it's a hard balance to, to kind of to land. I will say, and this is going to sound insane, but Cooper Cronk's their attacking coach, correct? Yep. You, you have to look at, I guess, maybe changing certain things up with Cooper Cronk in the way their attack is being um, directed with the fact that they finished 15th. Um, and look, I know, it's Cooper Cronk. I'm not sitting here saying, like, <laughs> like, I know more than Cooper Cronk or whatever. But clearly, whatever the tacking system's being used, that has to be tweaked with heading into next season. I, I don't, and I don't know what it is, but 15th is like, that's insane with the side they have. I, I think it's a really good point, because you look at Cooper Cronk and the way that he played, robotic throughout his mm. whole career. If I had to find a player that was on the opposite end of the scale, it's Sam Walker. Yeah, totally different yeah. players. Just completely different. Like, Cronk with a... a, a a Cleary yep. is like a match made in heaven, even though Cleary's kind of opened his game up a bit. Imagine, imagine Kronk and Sam Walker together. That's a match made That's in heaven. A, yeah, you put mm. Walker at six. Um, so I do think that from Kronk's perspective, maybe he needs to tinker with, you know, what his uh, – the way he just approaches attack with a different style of Walker. And, look, I'm sure they've already done that. But at the end of the day, like <coughs> – you know, it's 15th in attack. And maybe that's a Robbo decision more. Maybe Robbo's the one that's controlling the final say on the tacking kind of flair. But it looked to me more like when Walker came back and they became less structured, whether that's a Robbo or Cronk thing, they kind of opened up a little bit. And I would, you know, as good as Cooper Cronk is, like I would, I would imagine that would probably be pretty difficult for him. Because he's... Oh, it's, he's fucking one of the best sevens of all time. Every team he ever played in was built around him and his structure yeah, and it was sure. successful. Why would you ever change it? Why would you ever go away Absolutely. from it? Absolutely. And also, his style would work at probably 15 of the 17 clubs. There's only one Sam Walker. Exactly. Yeah. He just happens to have a seven that is like so different to him it couldn't be. So I think actually it's going to be really interesting to see that dynamic and how Robbo kind of um, works with that. Uh, so... And look, guys, <laughs> Kubrick Krog knows, he's forgotten more than I know about rugby league. It's just a, a, an opinion outside looking in with the way their attack was playing last year. Can, you know, comparing the start of the year to the end of the year when Walker came back and looked a bit more free. And look, maybe that was Kronk saying, mate, don't worry about the start of the season. Just play a bit of eyes up footy. And that's what made their attack totally, like, you know, night and day difference. Uh, anything on the Sam Walker boys? I just wondered if they might miss a little bit the Roosters. Drew Hutchison, there's a bit of cover there. Uh, oh, obviously, he has gone. He was great last year when he when he played when Walker got dropped. You mentioned he has had a few injury problems. So is Luke Keary. Mm. So very handy player to have waiting in the wings. Don't have him this year. Um, might just be an interesting one. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I, it's going to be interesting where they play Sandon Smith. Well, mate, if you, I was about to say, if you are the, you know, if you're anywhere in this team and you get injured and you give Sandon Smith an opportunity, yeah. You, it's going to be a nervous wait for you. Well, I mean, there was a couple of games there where you're going, well, Sanders Smith, you know, he could – maybe Sam Walker's out of favour. Sanders Smith could be the guy that's partnering Kiri. Then he goes into nine, did a bloody good job. He was actually – was it the Sharks game or the Storm game where he turned the game on his head? They do not win that Sharks game without him, and he killed it in the Storms game too. And that yeah. was at nine. Twice in the space of about ten minutes, wasn't it? Just yeah. cut him to pieces. Yeah. And then threw out the most incredible left-right <laughs> cutout balls yeah. we've seen. And on Sand and Smith and this team, like in terms of predicted teams, we've started with probably the toughest one to predict in the game, give or take maybe the Bulldogs, because their depth is a joke. So for round one, or at least with full strength, if we put Jarrah Bawira Hargreaves in there, Billy Smith, Satili Tupanua, Sand and Smith, potentially Egan Butcher could all be playing New South Wales Cup. Crazy. A lot of that will come down to Angus Crichton and how he comes back because... If he comes back to his best football, he's he starter. is starting mm. on the edge for them and playing 80 minutes. If he's not at his best that we've seen in the past, maybe he's a bench middle forward. Mm. Uh, I don't know how he's looking through pre-season. Trials will be a good take, but what how Crichton returns will determine a lot of how this four-pack lines up. 
It's, you know, but we're talking preview. You don't want to sort of look too, too far into the future. But, you know, we spoke a lot last year about Robbo being under pressure in a few underwhelming years. If he can't take this side towards the top four and at least two to three weeks into the finals footy, there's got to be big questions. Well, that's, that's what I wanted to speak about next. I think Robbo, and he's, he's, he's already said it. He said, I need to look at what I've done. I need to look at the slow starts and that. But if, if they don't fire another shot this year, I think that there will be a little bit of talk about pressure. I wouldn't say that you need to you know, get rid of him or whatever, but I think that he really needs to look at his systems and the way he approaches footy in this current era uh, and make some changes and make some changes. Because unfortunately, since 2019, I think they've like, I think they made one prelim. Pretty sure. I don't think they've made one since 2020. So 2019, since the grand final, no, they, haven't. That, they haven't made a prelim. Okay, so they haven't made a prelim with the yeah. squad that they've had. That's crazy. Of crazy. those results, if they don't make the top eight this year, which sounds ridiculous, but it last always year happened sounded, last yeah. year. Yeah. It's not that different a squad. Like, he'll be very close to going. He has to. That is a long time with who unbelievable do replace, squads. Who do you replace him with, though? A uh, lot changes in rugby league in the space of 12 months. Yeah, true. They'll find someone. Wayne Bennett will be up for grabs, so... <laughs> well, him and Nick Politis uh, bury the hatchet? Yeah, they, oh. might, they might have to. Far out. Could you imagine he coaches the Rabbitohs and then coaches the Roosters? <laughs> um, but I, I, th- I think that Robbo's aware of it. I really do. And also, in their defence, like they've lost a couple of um, assistant coaches. They obviously lost um, Fitz, Fitzy. They lost Riles. Uh, I think that their setup this heading into this year is much more stable. Uh, but you, you have to start asking the question. You know, it's the, since back-to-back... The roster they've had, they should have been going deeper, you know. Won't be asking questions, they'll be making decisions because yeah, they're okay. past asking the question if they don't make the eight this year. Yeah, all right. So you reckon you reckon they don't make the eight this year, there's pressure of I think there's maybe huge gone. pressure. Yeah, okay. The squad they've had the last four or five years and what haven't played prelim. Yeah. Yeah, I can see where you're coming from. I'd probably this, go another year. This is the Roosters who have been one of the most dominant teams with the highest standards of, you know, it's premiership or bust for them mm. for uh, two decades. If they don't make like the eight and no prelims, and how can they not be? Yeah, yeah, fair. Yeah. Another little underrated signing by the Roosters, which no one will talk about, but uh, they brought Justin Holbrook onto the coaching staff. Mm. Who, um, you know, you have a look at the Gold Coast Titans and the way that they've attacked over the last years on him. Like attacks never been their issue. They've been able to score plenty of points. You, you know, he was the guy that orchestrated. You know, completely unlocking David Fafita last year and whatnot. Um, so I'm interested to see the impact he has on their attack because I, I think he's a good little signing, Holbrook. I think that the Titans found themselves in a situation where they could get a guy like Des Hazler. They had to make a tough call, uh, but I, I think he can add something to their attack. Be exciting for him too because he's working with you know the Titans squad is solid. But it's not as good as the Rooster squad at the moment. So he's working with different uh, batch of boys. Um, yeah, Rooster's huge year ahead. Huge year ahead. And it's if, if they don't make the eight, you do have to start asking the question of, does the roster need a little bit of a refresh, even though that they've got such young guns? But it just it is what it is. Like, that question has to be asked. Does the roster need a refresh? Mm. Um, and, yeah, man, I can't wait. Um, I think it's a huge year. I really do. I think that Robbo is going to really identify what he needs to fix and he's going to fix it. This squad should absolutely be their minimum prelim. Minimum prelim. Anything less than a prelim with this squad, if it's injury-free, I think it's a disappointing year. Not, not like it's not the end of the world, but I think that anything less than a prelim is a disappointing year. Without a doubt. Uh, a couple of young guys, obviously Wong, you're all well truly aware of him. Tyler Moriarty's a hooker, so you probably won't see much of him, but he's coming through their system. Uh, and some guys in their development list that might be a little bit further down, but Blake Steep and Ethan Roberts is a back rower that I really like as well. And you've also got Dom Young's older brother, Alex Young, mm. who's in this squad too, who is an absolute giant. So it'll be interesting to see if Has he... Has Spencer Lino changed anything for him? I... I'd be using Spencer Lenny off the bench, and I know people are talking about him starting and going to a new level and everything. I, I personally think you got the best bench forward in rugby league there. I wouldn't be changing his role at all. Okay. Maybe after JWH and if Terrell May departs, then you start to talk about that, but I'd be keeping his role very similar, and I think he'll, he'll be massive for the Chooks this year. There's a reason that Ivan Cleary, when not they missed many games, when Moses Leoda 
uh, or James Fisher Harris were missing games that Spencer Lenny stayed on the bench and they would promote a player like Matt Eisenhuth every day of the week to start because of how good a role Spencer Lenny plays off the bench and the, how explosive he is coming and turning games off the bench. And I don't see why Rob I'll be thinking any differently with him. And we thought Ivan had that same role for Scotty Sorensen and he changed that, but he never folded with Spencer yep. Lenny. He always kept him yeah. there. When you, man, when you look at this top 30 squad, it is unbelievable. It yep. is unbelievable. Another guy like Junior Ponga. Yep. He is, he's probably one of the best, um, best backup wingers in the comp. Yep. Like one of the best there. depth wingers. Robert Toyer, if his ACL can just do him a favour for a couple of months, he's another superstar. Yeah, he, did he, he killed it in the trials last year, didn't he's he? Gun. Yeah. Absolute gun. Yeah, coming uh, in from Queensland, very talented. So, yeah, look. Another guy, uh, White as well. Yep. Interested to see how he goes. Because he, he went pretty good when he had his few games last year, didn't he? Yeah, and they just re-signed him on a three-year deal. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Is he more of a middle than an edge, though? From what I've seen, I think yeah. so, yeah. Okay. I mean, look, when you look at it on paper, I know we've been saying that, like, if they don't make the eight, it's, you know, pressure on everyone. But, like, on paper, it is such a well-balanced squad with, yeah. like, age and youth and experience and all that. Well, there's stuff. also on their development list, there's another kid there, Xavier Var, who's a front row forward. Um, there's not many guys on development lists that are signed until 2026. Oh, so really? Wow. Yeah. wow. Um, okay. That is the Roosters. Anything else on the Roosters done? Oh, well, I mean, Teddy, just quickly. Big year for Teddy or not? I hope so. Fuck, I hope so. Uh, we were talking about him from a super coach perspective yesterday, and that's almost, I almost feel like Teddy needs to do less to do more mm. in this side. Yeah. Um, he's the most mature he's ever been right now, Teddy. It's, yeah. So it's a big year as far as how James Tedesco gets remembered. Which is unfair because he had Heaps like, unfair, yeah. but it's very similar to Darius Boyd. Yeah. So many people have a sour taste in, Darius, in their mouth about Darius forgetting how much of a weapon he yeah. was for the first 10 years. Teddy's interesting. Mm. I just think that he just needs to just make some tweaks to his game that suits where he's at right now in his career. He's still a gun top tier fullback, but just taking a little bit of a step back uh, with the physicality of his game and just working a little bit on the, the ball playing and positioning. Um, and I, I've got no doubt if he, if he does do that, he could be very like, if he ends the year with a bunch of tries, assists, I think that's a good year for Teddy. If he ends the year with like, you know, maybe five, six, seven tackle breaks and, 200 metres a game, it might be a good year, but the concern I have with that is like he's just gone back to what we know he can do rather than we're seeing today that the full, the modern fullback, it's more really about triasis than it is about, yeah. you know, line breaks and everything. Yeah, Teddy's ball playing fell off a cliff last season. It was a pretty like rapid demise in terms of that aspect of his game. He knows that, he's addressed that. He's a champion and he'll work on that. He would have been working on that since the last game they played last season. He'll bounce back. Yeah, Which is, I think will. you know, the big thing for me with Teddy, it's not like he has to find his ball playing. He's got it. He's got it. We yeah. know he's yeah, got it. It's, there. it's not like he's saying he's got to develop from scratch. He's got it. He just needs to, yeah. I think it's just more about for so long, his focus has killed it, like dominated, like the tackle breaks, the the line breaks, the, the running meters. He just needs to shift his focus a little bit, just just a tiny bit, like keep that part of his game, but just go, but actually my main focus is more, I need to put other people in space. Um, not even main focus, just more focus on that. Isn't it funny that, you know, most people would agree with that take, I think, and sort of what Latrell does. Oh yeah, for sure. It, like it's, you know, it's like the flip. It's the exact You flip. want Latrell to run more. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, 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 most footballs, particularly like powerful ball runners, it's always, mate, go back to basics, think run first, pass second. As you said, Teddy's on my shell around. It's like, mate, you're allowed to pass the ball. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I can't wait to see Teddy bounce back. We have to remember, at the moment for me, he's the second or third greatest fullback of all time. I think that's already, that's already cemented for me personally. Um, I'd probably have, it's going to be controversial, but I actually think Lockie's greatest fullback of all time. Slater second, <laughs> Teddy third. There's not enough hours in a day to get into that. But. <laughs> Just said it. Now, obviously, I'm biased to play with him, but I think that Lockie... Like, I think Slater based a lot of his game on Lockie. Um, I said it. I've got a game involves tag tomorrow night, mate. I'd like to get to <laughs> <laughs> uh, But you have, if you have Slater as, as the GOAT, I'm, 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 here, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Brad Hodgson says hello. <laughs> <laughs> One of the all-time great uh, debuts for New South Wales, Hodgson. Yeah, a lot of people don't talk about that. They, <laughs> they just talk about yeah. other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, that's the Roosters done and doosted. Uh Brought to you by Bloke Beer. Grab a case of Bloke Beer from your local. 
the best beer in all the land, Aussie Spirit in a can. It's beer for blokes to turn up for their family, mates, and good times. If you like this in-depth analysis, this long, long podcast, support it by grabbing a case of bloke beer. We'd really appreciate it. Imagine what you could be buying instead. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.